Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! sewing street or yarn lane customer no matter how many times you check out in one day you will only pay one postage and packaging so don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out you will only pay one pmp even if you check out multiple times in one day hi i'm wendy orlando and i'm a craft blogger you can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sewing Street. It's Wednesday. I'm Stuart Hillard. How are you? It's National Sandwich Day. More, more importantly than anything else. What's your favourite sandwich? Do email in and tell us, won't you? I'll be revealing my favourite sandwich later and my wonderful guest this morning, Wendy Orlando, is also going to be revealing her very favourite sandwich too. We'll find out what the gallery love in there uh, between their two slices of bread a little later. Uh, any questions of course do or comments do email us in won't you. Now let's start with our early bird special uh, because we've got a great early bird that you know how important bag making is to me and so this is a tool which is so useful for bag makers. And it's our early bird special. It is our prim turning tools. Now I've got mine right here. Uh, you're getting your set of three turning tools here from prim. Uh, they're 7 99 and you get three different sizes so you can turn a really really fine almost like a rouleau loop. Yeah would work for rouleau loops for sure for doing little tiny uh, straps or little ties on clothing and also on home deck. And then you've got these larger turning tools. These would be perfect for things like maybe ties for cushions and also um, little spaghetti straps and also uh, for turning bag handles, most importantly, I think, for me. Now, we have sold hundreds and hundreds of these in the past. We've never taken money off them. Uh, but today, there are early bird special. 20% is coming off the price. Uh, and that price is coming down. There it goes. Our new price for today, and only today, is £6.39. Brilliant, brilliant price, that. Uh, this is only valid, of course, until midnight tonight or while stocks last. We may run out. We often do um, before the end of the hour. Uh, now, we've got a lovely comment from uh, Mrs. in Kent. Hi, Mrs. Uh, 
Uh, yay, seeing your smiling faces made my day. It's going to be a great day. Karen, Mrs. Karen, thank you. Good morning, Karen. How are you? And what's your favourite kind of sandwich? <laughs> I'm a bit of a traditionist. I like cheese and pickle, but I do prefer the cheese to be grated. I don't know if that makes it weird. Make it weird. Eh, I like grated. It feels a bit more refined. Um, and I also like things like ham and mustard, but it must be English mustard and it must be freshly made. That's my weirdness. Anyway, back to turning tools. Let me show you how they work. Um, loads of you have already checked out. Uh, brilliant, well done you. Remember when you pay your 3 dollars postage and packing, uh, that's it for the rest of the day, whether you're shopping with us here at Sewing Street or whether you hop on over to our sister channel, Yarn Lane, um, you're still using the same postage and packing for the entire day. Whether you're buying the turning tools, whether you're buying yourself a brand new sewing machine, whether you're going to buy one of the wonderful kits that we've got in this morning's lineup, whatever you choose. Now then, let me just show you how our early bird works. Um, the turning tool comes with three different sizes. I've just got two of them out here and three different sizes of um, stick as well. So essentially what you're going to do when you're making your strap or your rouleau loop or whatever you're trying to make, your spaghetti straps, your waist ties, you're going to sew the long seams, okay? Uh, you also need to close one end. Now this is a folded strip of fabric, but you would also close one of the short ends. Now if your pattern requires you to create an open tube or an open strap with, with both ends open, then just add an extra half inch or so to the end, sew across the end and you can trim it once you've turned it. Okay, so then what you're going to do to turn your strap Choose your, tube, choose your tube, <laughs> so you, you would use this one for the largest size, but I'm going to use it for now. And then you're going to push that inside your fabric tube that you've made. And then you're just going to use one of the sticks and you're going to push against that closed end. This is why you need a closed end. And so you're just going to push like that and then pull the tube back. And that's it. It's turned. <laughs> it's a turning tool. I love how it looked carefully labelled. Turning tools. And also, actually, but what a great idea because this is how we keep everything. We keep everything nice and safe and snug by popping them all inside there. Now, Hannah, our producer, will not allow me to move on to anything else before I tell you that she also recommends the metal... Uh, <laughs> turning stick for jacket potatoes. Personally, I wouldn't because I don't know if this is food grade or not. But um, Hannah is obsessed with mentioning that you could use that for jacket potatoes. I don't think I agree. <laughs> but anyway, they're from Prim. Now, Prim is a great name, isn't it, in, in uh, sewing and notions. A lot of tools in my toolbox are from Prim, uh, including these turning tools. They're £6.39 until midnight tonight or when our stocks run out, whichever is sooner. Um, great price that, it's 20% off the usual price. Uh, brilliant little extra bit of kit to have in your sewing box. As I say, really useful for things like spaghetti straps, rouleau loops, bag handles, ties, anything like that. Lovely message from Dawn who's in Greater London is joining us this morning. Morning lovely, thank you for a super calm start to the day. Well, you're very welcome. It won't stay calm, I can assure you of that, but at least we'll have a nice calm start. That little sandwich update from Mrs. Karen. Oh, Mrs. Karen says, it has to be a Christmas feast sandwich. Can't wait for them to arrive on the shelves. Karen, Karen, is this something only available in Kent? The Christmas feast sandwich sounds delicious. I remember when a certain bakery chain um, brought in turkey with stuffing and cranberry sauce. And I think maybe there's some mayo in there as well. That is delicious. I do like that. Yeah, so maybe something similar. Somebody on the radio this morning had mentioned that their favourite kind of sandwich was, wait for it, a sherry trifle sandwich. <laughs> a sherry trifle sandwich. Just think about that for a moment. Think about how you would make it. Think about how you would eat it. Yeah? Do you eat your sandwich with a knife and fork? I think you'd want to eat that one with a spoon, wouldn't you? Hmm. 
in a cupboard so that no one could see you. But listen, back to our wonderful early bird today. It's the Prim Turning Tool Set. You've got uh, three different sizes there, which is going to be fantastic for whatever size tube you're trying to make through from rouleau loops right through to nice wide bag handles. Uh, many, many of you with this in your basket. Do remember to check out, won't you? Remember, it's not yours until you have. Um, Joanne? has messaged in from Essex Morning Stuart and team. I've had my turning tools for several years now and would be lost without them. Totally agree with you there, Joanne. They are so useful. Uh, definitely take uh, our advice here at Sewing Street and make yourself a little bag for these or a little kind of, uh, just a tube, isn't it really? Easy peasy, keep them safe. Now we've got a special show this morning. Let's go through the menu so you know what we've got coming up. At 8 a.m. right now, it's Jelly Roll Basket Book Launch with Wendy Orlando. We've been having a really fun time with her already this morning. Just a few of the projects in a wonderful book that Wendy's going to be going through. It's brand new. Lots of you have already checked that one out. Well done you if you got ahead. And some great jelly rolls. Then at 9 a.m. is the CAFE Floating Garden Quilt and Fabrics. This is a stunner. Look at that. Brand new to Sewing Street today. It's a wonderful kit containing everything you need to create the quilt top and the binding. Uh, really beautiful. Uh, CAFE's absolute trademark style and beautiful colours. Really inspiring that. Love that deep cranberry red that's been used for the background. How does he do that? Cave. How do you do it? Brilliant. Love that. Um, then at 10 a.m., Wendy Orlando's back with her Moda Stay Humble quilt. At 11, oh, there it is. That is lovely. It's a big old quilt, that. It is really, really beautiful. Uh, very, very lovely fabric, this. Um, it's got a lovely, warm, cosy vibe. But I think also, actually, quite a modern look as well to that quilt. Um, it would go with my shirt beautifully. I'm just saying, Wendy, if you don't want it, you can pop it in the boot of my car. So that's the Stay Humble Quilt Kit with Wendy Orlando at 10. Then at 11 a.m. we've got quilt kits and backing bundles. Now, really good one that we've got some brand new backing fabrics, extra wide backing fabric, including a William Morris version. And just a sneak peek, next week I'm going to be bringing you the most beautiful brand new William Morris quilt. So you might want to get ahead. Um, I'll give you the details later of, of that quilt and the size that you'd need for it. And then at 12 o'clock, I'm super excited to be welcoming my old friends, Liz and Pete Holpin from Pinhole Quilting with a two hour special from Handy Quilter. Now that 12 p.m. show will be live here on Sewing Street and on digital channel 72 for 12 till 1. And then at 1 o'clock, we will go over to Sky 670. Uh, and also you can carry on watching on Facebook or online or on your tablet, but we won't be on the digital channel 72 from one till two, but we will have that extra hour. So really worth sticking around for if you possibly can. So a packed morning, uh, really packed morning. So do stay with us. Uh, go make yourself a quick sandwich or two as it is National Sandwich Day. Uh, keep them by your side and you won't have to leave the screen. <laughs> now then. Let's have a look at how we shop. Let's go to the website. There we are, sewingstreet.com. Uh, click on watch live and there we are. Uh, and then of course on the right hand side you can write us a little message. Do write in a message, won't you? You can say just hello if you want to, but if you want to say something more than that, I'd like it. Hello, my favourite sandwich. I love you, thank you. And cheese. Sandwich, it. sandwich. <laughs> right, hello, I love you, and cheese sandwich. Thank you, thank you. No, I love you too. <laughs> and then you can see our early bird special, our today's bestseller so far. It's the Prim Turning Tool. Grab yours quick, won't you? They won't last very long at all. And then underneath, everything that you can pre order. So it'll go into two columns show deals and pre-order. 
Now the pre-order is really worth having a look at because you can shop ahead there, you can see all the things that are coming up over the entire morning, including those wonderful jelly rolls, the K-Facet floating garden kit, uh, some other bundles of K-Fabrics and individual ones too. Then also, look, there's the Moda Stay Humble quilt. You can have a closer look at that. And then also things like important notions. I know Wendy's going to be using H630. Uh, ooh, ooh. I just spotted, is that Elements Blue here? Is that um, Tim Holtz Elements? It looks Tim Holtz to me. I want, I want. Oh yeah, wow, look at those. Also perfect for dressmaking, of course, don't forget. There's that William Morris I was telling you about. It's 274 centimetres wide. So absolutely mahusive, I think is the word that springs to mind. Loads of lovely extra wide backings there and so useful for your stash. And then waddings, of course, which are a wonderful segue to our last two hours, which is Handy Quilter. And there it is, the brand new Moxie long arm quilter. Um, the best thing I can tell you about this is it is absolutely perfect for home use. So if you have a spare bedroom or a bedroom that you're not really using, get a long arm in there. That's what you're getting with the package today from Pinhole. Uh, we'll go through it, of course, in detail later, but really worth having a little look ahead. If you've ever wanted your very own long arm quilting machine, I promise you uh, this is a, a product that's going to get you into long arming. It's very, very accessible um, if you've got a little extra space in your home that needs filling. Now, I must just tell you about a brand new section on our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It's our clearance area. So it's a brand new. Can you see there on the right hand side? Ooh, the John Scott Orophil Collection box. Reduce. Amazing, look at that. So, oh, lovely, Tula Pink line work. Everything that you see there, all those prices are discounted. That's terrific, Dan Morris Chip Shop Golf. Oh, Dan Morris Fresh Watermelon. Oh, I like the look of that. Oh, they're lovely. Making me, I like the lemon and lime. Mystery pack of 10 fat quarters for 17 pounds 97. Less than 180 a fat quarter. It's not bad, is it? Lots of lovely cats. That's very cute. Meow. Mm. Love it. Uh, Gnome for Christmas. Charm pack of 42 pieces. They're 10 inch squares. That's brilliant. So this is all clearance. So really, really worth jumping on to the clearance section. Yeah, maybe in between shows. Don't do it. Don't do it now. Put, put that down and carry on watching, please. I saw what you were about to do then. We've got a much more exciting hour coming up <laughs> with Wendy Orlando, of course. So let's have a look and see what we've got coming up in the show and what we're going to be making with Wendy. Now, um, we've got a wonderful book which is called Jelly Roll Baskets and Bags. And Wendy's brought in a selection. Uh, Wendy's going to be making the bag that's on the right hand side, this gorgeous kind of chevron bag. Um, really beautiful. We've also we've got some bundles using the book and the jelly roll. Um, half a metre of solid would be to line it, yeah? So um, do jump on the website and add an extra half metre. Okay, let's have a look and see what we've got. Here's our first bundle. Let's start by having a look at this wonderful book. Let me show you what you're getting. Um, so the book, first of all, it's from Annie's Quilting, who we love here at Sewing Street. Uh, you're getting all sorts of wonderful projects in here using jelly rolls or strip rolls and they're all bags or baskets. How smart is that? Um, now in this kit you're getting the book, you're getting the ocean uh, strip roll which has got 42 and a half inch strips of K-facet fabrics in these wonderful greens and blues and some lilac in there too. And then you're also getting a metre and a half of uh, chambray. Uh, the photograph makes it look grey but it's actually a light blue um, which is going to go really really well. 
it's going to go really well with your strip roll. Um, so you're getting all of those for $59.96. Brilliant price that. Um, strip rolls on their own, price-wise, are... We'll find out. We'll find out. Um, but it's a brilliant price. Uh, the Nantucket Casserole Carrier. That's a fun one. Uh, little fabric baskets. Wendy's brought some of those that she's made. An expandable lunch bag. A forty-four ninety-five for a strip roll. Forty-four ninety-nine. So, does that mean for less than ten pounds, we're getting the book and a meter and a half of chambray? That's fantastic value. That's phenomenal value. Um, expandable lunch bag there. Love that. I love anything that implies that I could get more lunch in it than I might normally reasonably expect. <laughs> How much does this thing expand? Can we double the size? This is the Savannah tote. Isn't that beautiful? This is what Wendy's going to be demonstrating today, how to make this. So we'll crack on with that pretty quickly, don't worry. The Cape Cod basket had a lovely holiday that included a trip to Cape Cod. It was beautiful. And I found a cranberry winery. Wendy, don't pull, don't pull that face. Honestly, you can't see, but she just went. Uh, let me tell you, cranberry wine was delicious. It was beautiful. I don't drink. Oh, oh, so now it's my turn. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not drinking. I love cranberry. Yeah. I just oh, don't drink. Yeah. So. They might do a de-alcoholised version. Could do. Yeah. If they, well, if they didn't, they should. Uh, the London basket, that's lovely. Made in a similar technique to um, jelly roll rugs, if you've ever done those. Um, the South Beach rope bag, that is delish. Love that. Um, hanging pods, some really, really useful projects there. And I think to get this, 49.99 strip, sorry, 44.99, I beg your pardon. Ah, so you're paying about 15 pound, aren't you? 15 pound for the, um, the book and the meter and a half of fabric. Still amazing value though. Um, and then you get that meter and a half of light blue chambray as well. So that's our um, ocean uh, collection. And that would be enough to make the rope bag kit inside. Um, so we've kind of bundled that for, for that. But also you could also make the bag that Wendy's going to demonstrate. So that's our ocean version. We've got two others. Now we've got another cave one. This one. What's this one called? This is cool. No, it really is. It's called cool. Oh, that's lovely. Now you get a metre and a half of coral. Coral uh, cotton. There it is. Lovely. So it's kind of peachy orange, isn't it? Really lovely. So you're getting your Jelly Roll Baskets and Bags book uh, by Carolyn S. Vagts. I pronounce that right? From Annie's Quilting. We love Annie's Quilting here. You're getting your strip roll of 40 pieces. You're getting a metre and a half of that coral uh, cotton. And you're also getting the book. So again, you could make that rope bag. I'm just going to show you um, how that looks. It is really lovely. Look at that. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and it's made in, as I say, in a, in a very similar way to a jelly roll rug. So um, it's really, really robust. Very hard wearing. Such a useful bag that whether you're going to the beach, probably wouldn't go to the beach right now. Not in this country anyway, maybe Malibu um, or indeed South Beach. But also a great shopper, great for going to the gym maybe. If you started going back to the gym and you want to go in style. <laughs> Hannah says she keeps on paying her gym membership every month. Is that the same as going? Not really, is it? I'm doing exactly the same at the moment, I'm afraid. I've rather got out of the habit. All your instructions there, that's a really super bag. And, and this bundle, you know, your strip roll and also your metre and a half of solid fabric would be plenty to make this bag. Um, you're going to use 32 of your strips uh, of fabric at one and a quarter yards of solid so you'll even have a little bit of fabric left over so you'd have a little bit of this and a little bit of your solid left over you could make yourself a nice little matching purse or zippy bag to go inside that would be lovely so that's the cool version it's not just me saying it, it says it on screen 
And then our third option um, is really lovely. And this is the version, actually, that um, you used, isn't it, Wendy? Yeah. Um, so this one, you're getting a light grey metre and a half of light grey to go with. And this is called Words to Live By, and it's a Moda strip roll. You've got some lovely kind of orangey shades, some black and white, nice sort of federal blue there, and a bit of pumpkin orange. Very, very nice. A little bit of pink as well. Um, Wendy's version is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous bag that, that she's made with that. I love that. And of course, you could mix and match your strips any way you want. Um, what I think is really clever, Wendy's also made some of the storage baskets from the book um, using the same, would you believe that black and white uh, pouch there or a bag there is made using the same strip roll. Those strip rolls come in the same strip roll, don't they? Jelly roll. Amazing. Amazing. Really lovely. Now, if you wanted to buy that book on its own, then you absolutely can. If you want to put your own fabrics with this, then you can. Uh, so the book on its own, details are coming right up. You've got 11 different projects here, including that wonderful bag that Wendy's going to demonstrate, the casserole carrier, these lovely little baskets, hanging pods. You've also got that uh, wonderful, almost like a, it's like a rope basket, isn't it? But made using jelly roll strips. And then you're also getting your expandable lunch bag. You're getting these little storage baskets, this wonderful beach bag. Uh, lots of you collect Annie's books. They are terrific. Really nice for a different kind of project, this. And at $7.99, bit of a steal. Yeah, absolutely fab that. So you might have a strip roll at home that's just it's crying out, screaming to be used. I know I have. So um, you could get that book on its own. Okay. I think it's about time we went to Wendy. Wendy Orlando. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> Very well. Well, we know how we you. are because we've been having a long chat. We've been up, you and me, since four this morning. We haven't have, we? but we were both yeah. very excited to we be working together excited. and being here today. <laughs> Wendy, yes. I've got to ask before we go on what's your favourite sandwich? I'm weird. You know that. Do it. Daddy's sauce and tomato sauce together. Mm hmm. Or. Salad cream. I love a salad cream sandwich. So you like your sauce sandwiches? I do. I do. Can't beat them. Yes. So is it daddy's sauce on one slice, tomato ketchup no, just on the other? No, them all up in together. Oh, no, no, I used to no. get so excited when I would open my lunchbox at school and I'd got my daddy's and tomato sauce sandwich. Oh. Yes, just made my day. <laughs> I love and it. And occasionally I do, like, you know, go back. It's a long, long way back sure. for me now, but I do sometimes just... A little taste of childhood. Yeah, lovely. Smashing. But you know I'm weird, so that's fine. You white couldn't bread, brown bread? What? Well, it, back, back, in the day, back in the day, it was white bread, wasn't it? Do you remember? It's not the same on brown bread, Shops sorry. had one loaf of brown bread, didn't they? <laughs> it was and tough. it was so expensive, and everyone yeah. just went, mm, what's yeah, that? Quite. But nowadays, I mean, nowadays I don't really eat white bread, so mm. um, I like all the seeded breads and I like yeah, the yeah, chibattas yeah. and all that. But back then, it was daddy's and brown sauce. Yeah, I don't think um, daddy's and brown sauce. sauce on chia batter has got quite the same <laughs> ring, has it? Especially not olive chia batter. No. Uh, no. But this gorgeous, gorgeous book, Wendy, I what did you think when you got book. sent this? I love this book. And um, I just, you have to read it through because that's how you learn. Yep. And because I make bags, it's a different way of making them. And I thought, that is a fantastic way. Because the one I'm making now, you don't, you cut the, we, we design it. This is, I'm just showing you a little bit ahead because I have pre-made it. But you actually make the jelly rolls the size, you've, you've got your box corners already cut out. How oh, clever is that? That is really that clever. That is so clever, but yeah. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But Gorgeous yes, fabric as well. Now, which one did you use? That's the ocean, right? It is. That's the it's ocean strip roll fabric. there um, that Wendy's used. Gorgeous. That is a really beautiful combination of fabrics. And I just wanted to show with the ones, the one that I um, used, because when I said to you when I came in, they're both from the same jelly roll and you just... Incredible. Um, but so like with this one, there is always method in my madness. I'm normally just mad, but there is method. So each one that went, there was a little bit of an element of the colours. So we've gone to blue, to blue and white, and then that's got blue in it and that's got orange. So I fed all the colours through mm. um, and, and broke them up with the white. And this is the grey that you get 
with this with that pack that's lovely, so you get it? a color now the reason that there is a meter and a half in there is that you are quite rightly said that the the big rope bag yeah that was the one that probably took the most lining material yes so that's why they've done that brilliant so you've got enough fabric really to make the largest project in the book so you could choose whatever you want to make <laughs> i do like how on that bag you've used the lining fabric for the sides of the outer bag mm -hmm. um, and then on the version that you're making but for I us today also, you've changed it up. exactly because i do I, I do i do as i'm told rebel I, I, no, I, no, I do as I'm told, <laughs> and then I don't. So, you know, I always have to mix it up because there are going to be some people that want to use the lining material for other projects. Of course. And that's okay. So I just wanted to show that if you sewed two of them together... Perfect. But you will need to trim them to size because two together is a little bit too wide. So you will trim them to size. But yep. I, as again, I'll show you that. And I love that but you've pulled <sighs> out the spots for the for the edges of the bag. I, yeah. Stunning. Brilliant, isn't it? I just thought, again, there was a little bit of method. I, I followed the colours through. And you do have to be mindful where you put these because as you turn the bag over, these ones disappear at the bottom. Sure. So in hindsight, I would have liked that one on the side. But... Lovely. Now, can you just show us the lining colour um, there? Because that's right. the chambray, yes. isn't it? Yes. So the the, the grey one came with that one. That's now, the motor, look, I mean, yeah. I have made the lining with this. Let me get a nicer piece of material for yeah. you. Because I've just already... our picture for that bundle looks really grey. How it gorgeous is that? That's it's the beautiful. chambray. That is really nice, isn't it's, it? It's kind of a bluey lilac-y. It's just yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, and you get a metre and a half of that. It tones really well, mm. doesn't it? I think it, it does. particularly picks out Absolutely. the colour in the cabbage. The cabbage. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The cabbage print. <gasps> They're my favourite flower at the moment, the cabbage flower. Mm. Amazing. Gorgeous. Them. Gorgeous. But yes, it is. So where do we start then, Wendy? Right, the first thing, as I say, the first thing that you need to do is read the instructions all the way through because even if you are a bag maker and you know what you're doing, there may be different elements that, you're, that you don't do yeah. and think, oh, yeah, that works. Yeah. Um, so that's the first thing. And then the most, the, the most difficult part in all of this is choosing what fabrics to use because they're all amazing. Yeah. So I just went for this one. I just went with it and just chose a selection. A selection of them because so I wanted. Did you go from dark to lighter, or no. what was your method? Just <laughs> I just thought I like all those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I used them, and I with this one, yes, I did have a little bit more of a method with this one. So I went. Um, so I started like dark, and then I went to blues, and then blues, and then greens. Yeah. So with that one, I did because that way, then one side of the bag is going to be predominantly green, yep. and the other side is going to be blue. That's stunning. Because I like to get my money's worth. Yeah, so yeah. I'll go out in the morning, meet my friends, and I'll have a nice blue bag. And then when yep. I come home in the afternoon, I'll have a green one, and they think I'm very posh. Fabulous. So, so the Fabulous. first thing to do, I'm just going to move him off for a moment. Mm -hmm. It does take up rather a lot of room. I do think with cave fabrics, you could literally throw them on the ground, roll in them, whatever <laughs> sticks to you, use those, and they'd look fabulous. Honestly. I'm, I'm being facetious, but literally, no, that's actually how I design oh. quilts. But, you know, you could literally just put any together and they will look terrific. But play with them. Take photographs mm. on your phone if you have a phone on, uh, a camera on your phone. Take some pictures, look at them from a distance, walk away, come back in. It just That's what I do. I lay them all out on the floor. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I have my own room. So I'm able to put things down and shut the door yep. and they'll stay there. Right. Um, and then I'll take a photo, first of all, so that if the dog does come running through, I know where I've put them if I like it. Good tip. But it will stand out. Out. If that one is not quite right, you go, whoa, that, you that doesn't work. You see it in a photograph, don't you? You do, but you don't see it with your naked eye, which I is know, really weird. weird. So it the first weird. thing that you need to do is choose your fabrics, and then you need to sew them together. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I know that some people sew them together in pairs. I just sew them, because there's only five of them, yep. I just sew them one after the other. But I do sew down one way, and then I sew back up the other way, and then I sew down Pourquoi? one way. Oh, that's, that's a bit of Spanish there, isn't it? Um, I did take Spanish. That was French. At, French. Oh, yes, of course it was. I did take French at school. Yes, good. Oh, you're God. obviously a very diligent people <laughs> no, there. Do you know, well I said. failed both of mine because in my... <laughs> no. Yes. Wendy, no. Because in my I, French exam... Somebody get the exam board on the phone. I want to speak with them. <laughs> in my French exam, I was answering in Spanish, and in my Spanish exam... They shouldn't have taught me both at the same time. They really they shouldn't, shouldn't. Wendy. Well, That's proved it, hasn't it? They probably <laughs> wish they hadn't. <laughs> um, 
to stop getting a banana shape. Right. <laughs> because you don't want them to bow. Yeah. So if you keep sewing down the same way, they have a tendency to sort of like go around the corner. Yes. Whereas if you go down one way and back up the other, and then... Sort of equalises. Good. <laughs> Excellent. I'm so glad I asked. <laughs> you asked. <laughs> I did warn you before we came on air, didn't Who you? wants a banana? <laughs> not, but not I. you won't forget that now, no, will I you, won't. you see? You're absolutely right. If you always teach someone in a silly way, then they yeah. won't forget it. No, now, what we're going to do, and this is really, really important, is that we're going to cut two pieces but we're going to cut them from this end yep. and this end. Right. And that is really important that you do that. Okay. So you do need to have the whole of the fabric, otherwise mm -hmm. you won't have enough. And we're going to cut these. So we're going to cut this shape here. That's yep. what we're going to cut. It doesn't look quite like that yet, but it no. will be obvious when I've cut it. Okay. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take your ruler and we're going to, on here, it's going to be a little bit hard to show this, but you have got degrees on here. So mm -hmm. we have a 45 degree, which is half of a right angle. Yep. And then we're going to cut a 45 degree angle down here. Right. So we need to line this 45 degree at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And what you're looking to do is to have it as close to the edge as you possibly can without, um, if there's any salvage on them, you don't want to have a salvage. Sure, got you. So, but you want to go as close as you can, line up the bottom, and that is now giving us a 45 degree angle. That's our cutting so, edge, brilliant. So we trim that off. Oh, don't you just love that sound? Are you and a left-hander? Yeah. Ah, yeah. useful. I'm, a, I'm quite hard to play against when I'm playing like racket sports because it's hard, I've won most of the games before they realise they're going to my ah. strong hand. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I crochet right-handed because there was no Nothing to show us years ago when I learned. No, so. sure. Um, don't throw these pieces away. No, of course You can not. use them and you will need one of these pieces, but you're a centrepiece that we'll get in the minute. Mm. Don't throw it away. Right, no, absolutely. Right. Now, so we're going to cut the end off at a 45 degree angle. We've got, so we've got the 45. Now, because I'm not on the floor um, and I don't want to cut towards me, I am actually just going to turn this around mm -hmm. because what you're now going to cut is a six and a half inch strip. Um, I'm sure it's six and a half, was it six and a half? Because I use my bigger ruler. Yep, that's fine. Six and a half Six inches. and a half. Measure six and a half inches from the cut oh, line could, and you? cut out the first rhomboid shape. Exactly, that's a lovely word. That ruler, by the way, we do have, of course, it's a creative grids. I've lost mine. Ruler. I've lost mine. Um, sorry, I'm just behind you there, producer. <laughs> producer Hannah. <laughs> do apologise. I was behind you, my love. I was behind you. Okay. So we measure six and a half inches. Right. Now, rather handily, that ruler is six and a yes. half inches. Yes. Now, isn't I, it? I've lost mine at home. It's gone into that place where. I, so I had to use an eight and a half, which is not an issue. If you've got the bigger one, it doesn't matter. Sure. Just go to your six and a half, but this is perfect. The thing that you do need to make uh, sure is that you've got your ruler peeping out that end and a little bit peeping out this end. Yes. Because otherwise, you won't be able to cut. And then we're just going to trim that off. Oh, lovely. And so now. How gorgeous is that? How yeah. easy was that, though? I well, mean, that, that looks yeah. very, very complicated, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it can be off-putting, can't it? Mm -hmm. Sort of cutting up at weird angles. It can. It can be a little bit confusing, but that looks very straightforward. So we've got that. So what is really, really important is that we do the opposite on the other side. So we've, we've cut off this end. So now we need to cut off this end so you do exactly the same we get your 45 degree angle and then you're going to cut that way so we cut that way and then there oh and i see okay yes so yeah and then because you're you want it to face the other way that's why you can't just cut from you, the same end exactly because if i just kept cutting them as i turned it round, the fabrics are going to be the different way so we need to create that arrow shape Understood. which that's why you need to cut from each end and it's really important you do that yeah and it's really important that you do use the whole length because i thought i'd be clever and didn't and then i couldn't cut it out. I was going to say, I'd be thinking, oh, what if I used half of the no, strip? Would it, that, no, no, it doesn't work. work. You need to do the whole strip because I, I used to say I was one step ahead. That was my own fault. I should have read it. I um, should just let you all know at home the kit that Wendy's using, which is the ocean version, um, we have only got that many left, 10. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, can I just, we've got that many left. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> yeah, definitely. 
10 left. So be quick. But the don't forget to check instructions are, are very, very comprehensive. There's beautiful picture guides for you mm -hmm. to, and it shows you in here how to do the two together. And then you will sew two together to create, what, to create one long strip like we have so you're making here. another strip set do you using yes. different fabrics so you do need two yep. um, so the, the first one will create that half and then the second one will create that half Understood. you sew them together but because they're square you need to add as it's as it shows in the diagram you need to add your waist on the bottom ah. and it's very very clever I like so that. clever I love that the fact because I don't like waist. I don't like waist but you will have the center bit that's quite that's not waist. but it isn't because I, I mean I don't know how you feel about jelly rolls I don't see them as two and a half inch strips because people think I can't make I see them as being able to create the most wonderful fabrics oh yeah by sewing them all together absolutely and then you've got a different piece of fabric so you've got a absolutely. meter of fabric or two meter have of fabric one of the bits that left in the middle you know when you've cut it off oh I think I you just go downstairs bit. okay the she's off I just go downstairs <laughs> down uh, in, the, in the basement down in and she's back good it's quite sweet isn't it thank you darling <laughs> and I was you're just welcome gonna, just gonna Oh okay. oh, okay. What are you oh, doing? Oh, some of you are clever. No, that's my. That, oh, what are you doing? Because some that's my clever. lining. I know. I'm not going to. Don't, oh, don't worry. Okay. I'm not going to cut it. <laughs> okay. uh, some of you are very clever. You've all, you've been emailing in saying your favourite kind of sandwich is a quilt sandwich. Oh, that's Brum. good. I was a bit slow then, wasn't I? No, oh, look, I was just going to say, how about this for, a, for a, a way to use? This is the piece that you're left with when you've cut the ends. If you sewed um, a piece of your, because you, you've got a bit of extra lining fabric, of course, sew a piece here, sew a piece here, oh, and maybe wow. a strip yeah. across the bottom, and yeah. then make that up into a tote bag. That would be delish. Wouldn't it? I mean, it depends you how you've cut it. You might have to use a bit of that for the end, but mm. you should be able to get away with this with this bit that I've cut off here. Yep. So this was my endy bit. It's not. I haven't cut the middle yet, so this no. is just my end. And then what you do is you put that one up against so this is your end yeah you place that one up against that yeah so then they'll be right sides together yeah and sew them and then yep. you trim it off and Got trim yeah. it down so you should have that bit to what you were saying that yep. bit in the middle you should you shouldn't need to shouldn't use need it for to your ends that. but if you, you might did, do. you might yeah, do yes. absolutely yeah. you could also you know square it up create pockets for inside your bag oh. couldn't you there's all sorts of things but make zippy bags out of the the leftovers but of course all those gorgeous bits and bobs we keep we use so is it just 10 10 i think it's just 10 jelly rolls that you use for this project isn't it you use 10 so you've got 30 left strips. yeah or, or uh, two and a half inch strips 30 left absolutely um amazing. i did use some for my of handles course, though, so it wouldn't be quite many so I'm just thinking you could at least make two bags easily right. make two because as well you've got a meter the and lining, a half of yes. lining fabric and we both worked out you need about half a meter in mm -hmm. fact it says in the um, half a yard of magenta um, whatever lining fabric perfect okay well great. you'll definitely get away with it if you do what I've done and use the so this is to my point about using the jelly rolls I've actually used them down the side here mm. now they tell you to use your fabric yeah they tell you to cut um, and the direct the dimensions are all in there they tell you to cut a piece of fabric and then add it on and the great thing about this is that's what now creates our box corners that is uh, Brilliant. I've never that done it that clever. way before. It's very, very clever. Yeah, no, I like that. Um, um, oh, uh, Violet has messaged in on um, Facebook to say that the leftover fabrics would make a very nice dog bandana. <gasps> Love that idea. Yeah, you could back it and Love it. that would be gorgeous. Um, loads of you get, getting in touch. Um, and Morning Stuart, Wendy and the team. Uh, oh, love a bacon butty. Oh, that's from Anne. Loves a bacon butty. Um, I'm absolutely with you there. But brown sauce, red sauce, <laughs> butter, no butter. butter. I mean, these are the big questions today. Butter. Butter or butter. not butter? Butter. Personally, I just can't imagine a bacon sandwich with butter. But are you serious? No, Kirsty oh. said, I love a daddy's sauce sandwich, mm. but my favourite is cheese, tomato and cheese. <laughs> she explains, <laughs> grated cheese, yes. sliced tomatoes, then more grated cheese on top. So you're already creating a sandwich with your fillings. Yeah. Uh, 
in white bread so it squishes down over the fillings. Kirsty, you're a legend. I love oh. it. Um, Helen, good morning. So lovely to have sewing back. I couldn't cope with all the selling. Love your demonstrations. Well, you're very welcome. Uh, morning, Stuart and all from Claire. Uh, Susan says, I love my prim turning tools. I just used mine to make narrow straps for my mum's apron. I would have been struggling to turn them without my tools. Absolutely right. That's our early bird special, don't forget. Um, lots of love from Patricia in Blackpool. Hilda says, good morning, Stuart. What a lovely start to my day. We're here till two. It's most of the day. Um, good morning, Stuart and the team. Great to see you back. Uh, Bacon Butty is my favourite. That's from Carol. Well, no disagreements from me. Now. But definitely with butter. Sorry. With butter. Definitely with okay. butter. Right. Yes, yes. Right. Um, so I just wanted to get, because I never quite finished the bag. So I just wanted to show how to, to put the of bag course. together. Um, when you have um, made this, then you put it onto your I like fusible wadding purely because it stays where I put it, yeah. but it doesn't matter because if you're using the craft wadding or other kinds of wadding, you can always use 505 just to adhere it to or pin it. Absolutely. It doesn't matter. Absolutely. Um, We've got H630. Mm -hmm. 40. Oh. <gasps> Hannah, you legend. Yes. Hannah's found H640. Wow. Which seemed to go missing for a while. Which... We couldn't find it. It was out of stock. Oh, it was out of stock. 30 is just a bit thinner though, isn't it? Yeah. So, yes. But 9.99 for a metre piece of Vlisseline H640, which is exactly mm. what you used, Wendy, what right? I've in used. your bag. Yes. So that's perfect. Yeah. Now for the project, it says a craft size batting. So yeah, a metre is going to be absolutely plenty mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. Fab. Um, right. And we sell the, the craft as well. We sell the craft wadding, don't we? Um, yeah. And that's really good. But um, you... I like to use 505 with that as well because yeah. it just adheres it. It's not fusible. Well, with the fusible, you can yeah, get a jolly good press. It just takes. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's not always my go-to. But also, what I did do was I quilted. I was just about so to I ask did, you yes. some quilting. I How quilted. did you quilt it? Right. So this one, because oh, I've got you know my little baby here, it's mm. got the most incredible stitches. And I always say to people, use your stitches. You you buy a machine with like hundreds of stitches on and you never use them. Use them. Mm -hmm. So this is one of my favourite stitches. I don't know if you can come in close on this one, Em. I love this stitch because it's got a, a central line and then it does, it's almost like um, a blanket stitch, but on both sides. Oh, Which is lovely. amazing. Yeah, it's that's gorgeous, a really isn't nice it? way of stitching. It's absolutely beautiful, this stitch. I don't Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can see that. That, that is better, beautiful. Yeah. So it's on both sides, which is fantastic. However, yeah. on this one... You could use a contrast colour as well, yes. couldn't you, if you really wanted to pick it out. If, if you're confident, absolutely do that. If you're not confident, absolutely yeah. do it anyway. Use some of um, the blends. And then with this one, I've, I've just sewn a straight stitch. Yep. So you can do whatever you like. I mean, you can even do a little bit of hand. Hand yeah, quilting you could, if you, you like. Could do some big stitch quilting That'd be amazing, with wasn't it? Oh my goodness. Nice. Absolutely bit of free amazing. motion quilting oh. if that's your bag too. I'm trying, mm. I'm trying. May I'm well, trying. when we've already talked, what you need is a moxie. Don't forget, handy quilter. Uh, Liz is here from Pinhole <laughs> Quilting at 12 o'clock if you fancy a bit of one arm action. But also, Lo we'll be giving loads of tips and tricks as well to make your free motion quilting better. So, plenty for everyone in that. To show. So once right. we've done our so quilting, once you've done it, you've added your sides as well. So mm -hmm. that's what's given you your box corners. You will need to cut your um, your lining out, which, as I say, I have already made because I just wanted to do it for time. And then it tells you how to cut what size to cut the corners out yeah. so that they equal these. And now this is the brilliant part because you just put right sides together. Now I did didn't do something that they did tell me to. Um, because they tell you to sew along the bottom as well. Now it's already folded, right. so I didn't, and it's come out perfect. Right. But if you follow the book, it yep. tells you to sew a line of stitching along the okay. bottom. Um, and I did use my, it's not a walking foot on here, is it? It's a dual feed foot. So yeah, I, did, yeah. I did use my dual feed foot because you're working through several layers. Quite useful, isn't it, when oh, you're making a bag? It's brilliant. Um, we've got some great clips. Um, these ones, I think these are brilliant for bag making. They would be better than I've got for this because yeah, they're big. Yeah, these are a really big size. Mm -hmm. are absolutely ideal for bag making. If you've struggled using your little Clover Wonder Clips, the very small ones for bag making, these are much more suitable. Um, of course I have to go in. Let me at <laughs> it. There's something about a plastic packet that just requires ripping open oh, as far as I'm concerned. These are great. You get a 16. No, you don't. You get 20. I beg your pardon. 
Where did I get 16? I'm just making things up, basically. Um, but these are whoppers. Look at those. They're almost like pegs. Um, you could still use these for things like quilt binding, but absolutely ideal when you're holding together your... Um, it's like I'm having my pulse taken, isn't it? Um, for holding handles onto bags while you sew them on or sewing those bags together. Really recommend these. Really recommend them. Twelve ninety nine for 20 and um, just a tip as well um, often uh, we miss the fact that there are increments marked on the flat side so when you actually put your bag together it's flat side uppermost okay rather than the colored curved side flat side uppermost and then you can use these marks to mark where your seam allowance is, and then you can just sew down. Obviously take them off as you get to them, but that will help you to measure a nice even seam allowance. Uh, absolutely super those. Great if you're making a jelly roll rug too, or any of the projects in the book actually. A uh, message from Anne-Marie. Morning Anne-Marie. My favorite sandwich is a strong cheddar and mango chutney. Ooh, Anne-Marie. That's talking to me. Me too. Yummy. Me too. And an absolutely mature cheddar every Ooh. time. Good, strong, mature cheddar. Um, so many of you joining in this morning. Anna says, my husband, Bar, loves a Christmas dinner sandwich. Turkey, roast potatoes, pigs in blankets, a, a pigs in blankets, <laughs> a bit of turkey gravy. Love the demos. That's from Anna. Wow. Uh, I think, Wendy, you and I might need a little trip to visit Anna for a... Absolutely, I'm there. Pigs in blankets and roast potatoes Ooh. in a sandwich with Lovely. gravy. Uh, and, yes, a ham and cheese toasty absolutely counts as a sandwich. I love them. Mm. I love a hot sandwich. Mm. Oh, chicken, chicken and bacon club. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a huge sandwich lover, but I do like... I think I'm traumatised from my daddy's sauce and tomato sauce when I was no, younger. it sounds lovely. Um, so you box the corners, and this is one of the reasons why you do do that line down the bottom, because then you've got something to line up against. But if you're careful and you just centralise yep. the, the join, the side join, you'll be yep. fine. But absolutely, if you want to follow it by the book, then go down that bottom line. So I'm just going to box the corners. Well, this is a rebel, but you know I am, that I home. am. <laughs> That jewel feeds rather lovely, it's isn't it? Isn't Even it? feed foot. Mm. And the beauty of it is you can just pull it and it's And gone. you can still use your quarter inch foot. That, that is now off. Yeah. And then it's just incredible. Lovely. So, yes. It's very hard getting me out of my room because I don't come out. <laughs> um, and then this one, you don't bag out, interestingly. So you turn it right sides yep. out, and then you've got your box corners. Smashing. And now, that looks a nice wide base to that gorgeous, bag as isn't well. It's it gorgeous, is mm. It's one of those bags that you're going to put down, and it's not going to fall over. Oh, that's lovely. And it of is. course, you could make a um, base for that, couldn't you? You, you could, could put a base in the bottom of the bag, and you, you could. could put some bag feet Definitely. on the bottom. You could measure the bottom of the, of the bag, and then put a, a more solid base in, and then that definitely is not going in. We're just freestyling here with Annie's patterns. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. <laughs> they are beautiful, Chaka, but Chaka. but do you not think that's what it's all about? Is that just putting your take on it? You yeah, are yeah, teasing yeah. me now. Totally. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so now, because we're not bagging it out, we need to put wrong sides together. Yes. So we need both of the right sides to show because we're not going to do anything with it. It's just going to stand as it is. And then what we do is we're going to line up both sides. And this is a tip. If you line up Ooh. both side edges yeah. first... Mm -hmm. Well, you know this, don't you? I don't know. Yes, you do. do I? Yes, you do. You line you up. You know this. You you do know. You this. know what you did you wrong. <laughs> you do know. Ooh. You line up the both the side yes. seams because mm -hmm. then you can make these fit. Oh gosh, if you, yeah. Yes, you do know. I, I knew know you that. knew. That's what I mean. But some people out there um, may not. Maybe their first bag, and this will be an amazing yeah. first project. It would Absolutely because it doesn't amazing. look like a first project. It but doesn't. The sewing is very straightforward. Very isn't basic. It? Yes. Oh, are you feeling inspired at home? I hope you are. Um, we've got some great bundles to make this bag mm. or actually uh, you could use the strip roll and the um, uh, lining fabric to make actually the largest project in this book, which means all the others are open to you as well. Mm. We've got three different options. Now, the ocean version is very, very limited stock now. 
But if you miss out on that, I think that the cool. Me too. Uh, that's version, similar, isn't is, it? Yeah, it yeah, is pretty similar. similar. This has the coral lining fabric with it. This is lovely. Am I allowed to take this wrapper off? Because I feel like I can't really see all the lovely fabrics that are inside, and I want to. I no, want no, to do I it. Just, <laughs> you know, I mean, this is what I want to do in a shop. I want oh, to get too. the fabric out and I want to have a proper look. Um, that's why I'm banned from so many shops. <laughs> but just lovely. And of course, we know with Kaif that a green fabric isn't just green. There's blues, there's oranges, there's rusts in there. Absolutely, look at that. A bit of purple. Uh, really, really lovely, this. And you're getting two of each uh, fabric, I think, mostly. Yeah, uh, yes, on the one that I was using, there's two of each. Really gorgeous. And of course, you saw Wendy earlier on demonstrating uh, how to sew the strips together. And you're only actually going to use 10 of these strips per bag, which means that out of your strip roll, you could actually get four of those bags if you follow the instructions and use 10 of the strips and then use an alternative fabric for the sides of the bag and also for the handle and then the lining. Now I think if you're going to do that then you would need a yeah. extra. Yeah, would. So, But the great thing with the case strip roll I would be choosing you've got your coral of course which you can use to line a couple two or three bags but you could also maybe throw in something like a nice deep purple would yes, be gorgeous absolutely beautiful. Um, you could use a, a taupe would still work you could use this kind of nice light pink like a bubblegum pink would look yummy or a cranberry would look nice you could use I wouldn't go for plain black but it's simply because a lining for a bag, um, if it's plain black, you can lose things, can't you? Yeah. It becomes just this kind of black hole. <laughs> so that is the cool version. <laughs> Let me see if there's a... Oh, oh. Uh, Shyla. Shyla? Sheila? Shyla. Uh, hi, Stuart and Wendy. My favourite sandwich is carrot chutney oh. sandwich which is a speciality of Marks and Spencer's. Shyla, I thought you were going to say it was a speciality of yours. <laughs> um, we can all enjoy a carrot chutney sandwich. That sounds yummy. I like cheese, grated cheese, grated carrot, mayonnaise, oh, maybe a lovely. little bit of finely chopped spring onion, all combined together and smushed between two slices of like a nice granary bread. That's delicious. Hilda says, I worked with a lovely young man who had crisp sandwiches oh, every yes. day. Oh, yes. He had a different flavour each time, but cheese and onion was his favourite. How lovely. Right, I've already, doing now? Yes, I've already added one of the handles on yep. um, and they're again super, super easy. They're the kind of measurements I like because you measure from the centre outwards, which is brilliant. Great. Um, and then we just place that handle. You've made your handles using more of the strip rolls. I have. Rolls. So to, to your point when you said that you could make four, yes you could, but you would have to use extra fabric. the extra fabric, yeah. yes. Um, and then we're just going to place the handle on but here. But if you're a fan of Kaif, you might have mm -hmm. some extra bits of fabric or another strip roll that you could mix and match, couldn't you? So you're, you're adding those in so with I, the lining as well. Did you so base what I've the done, I've based it, yes, while, mm. while you were chatting, I've basted the <laughs> lining and that simply means that you hold the pieces together. We used to, in olden days, take them out. It used to be a basting stitch that you would remove. Nowadays, if you sew with, someone's realised if you sew within the seam allowance, yeah. you don't have to take them out. Absolutely. So that's all I've done. I've just basted the two layers, the lining and the outer layer together, and then sandwiched that in between. And then I'm adding... Nice use of the word sandwich there. Oh, Thank you. Oh, did you like that? I didn't, yes, that, that was. I didn't realise that, actually. Oh, you... I didn't, honestly. I didn't. You're a true professional, Wendy. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, See, um, machine, again, machine base the handles and in again, place. Within the, within the quarter yeah. of an inch seam allowance. Um, I'm not a fan of having lots of bits doing their own thing. I like to make them behave. So if I can stitch them down yep. before I move on to the next, I will. And, and you get rid of any pins, any clips, don't you? So that you don't end up sewing everything together yes. and then walking down the high street with your bag <laughs> on your shoulder and you think, what's digging in my shoulder? And there's oh, a yes, pin inside absolutely. your bag. I mean, I, t I tend to use the clips. These clips are amazing when you're working with wadding and especially 
the size that you have there yeah. with the big ones. Um, so that's the actual <gasps> bag completed. That's gorgeous. But all you need to do now, and this is what I think makes it, yep. is we've got the uh, binding around the edge. Kay. And because we didn't bag it out, we don't have to do any hand sewing on the inside Lovely. either. Lovely, enjoy that. Um, have I got time to do that or? Do it. <laughs> Can we? Yeah, we're doing it. Yeah, oh, yeah, go on, yeah, do go. it. We're going to do it. Yeah, of course. So, have I got enough to go we all We promised a full demonstration, Wendy, and it's oh, no one's fault right. that I've spent 10 minutes talking oh, about sandwiches, <laughs> is it? <laughs> now, we all do this different. You'll probably go take a, do a big <laughs> when I do this. Well, but I, 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 well, I don't care. <laughs> 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 Good. <laughs> so I, but this is how I, I'm, I put would put the binding on. I choose a bit that's a little bit inconspicuous, and I'm going to go just a little bit off centre to the side, um, and then I have my end there. So that's where I want my it to end. Okay. But then I come quite a little bit away from there because I need a little bit of a flappy bit to yep. do my end. Yeah. And then all I'm going to do. Do you tuck it inside? I don't. No. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, sorry. do you? No, no, do no. You? Sorry. Yeah, I do. Oh, oh, oh. Don't judge so me. you can show me how to tuck, and I'll show you how to whatever I'm doing. I don't even know what <laughs> what I would call mine. <laughs> I do a quarter an inch. <laughs> I do. a Right, so I'm going all the way round. <laughs> Cute. Right. Oh. Again, this is when you need those clips. Absolutely. They're and an absolute boon. I, um, they are. The, the bigger ones, um, I'd left mine at home, but the bigger ones are perfect. So I'm leaving a little bit of a flappy bit at the other end because okay. what I want to be able to do is join these together okay. in a moment. Yep. So I don't start sewing from here. Nope. I start sewing a little bit away. Mm -hmm. Now this time I sew a quarter of an inch yep. and then because all my basting stitches are within that quarter of an inch, then um, you won't see them. Perfect. So I had rather a large, you want a really big stitch for your basting. So I'm going to take it down to a 2.4 or 2.6 with this one. Mm -hmm. And then I haven't got my walking foot on, but this can cope with it perfectly. Because H640 is brilliant to work with, because it's not super thick, is it? No, you get a nice structure, but without the bulk, don't you? Do, you do, yes. Sue Patterson, Piccalilli sandwich or mint sauce sandwich Ooh. are two of my favourite. Mint sauce sandwich, you legend. But you can't beat a prawn salad baguette. Ooh, mm -hmm. But yeah. not the same. it's not the same on a sandwich. Totally agree with you. No, it isn't. You can't. It's not the same. You need that in Lulu baguette. says, morning all favourite sandwiches, peanut butter and pickled <gasps> onion. Oh, oh. Get oh. out. <laughs> Get out! I'm kidding. Sounds lovely. Oh my goodness. Oh, I say cheese and marmite. <laughs> Nikki, you've divided a nation. Oh no, I love cheese and marmite. I love all of that. I just yeah. love food, Stuart. I just yeah. love food. Put anything in front of me and I'll eat it. Apart from what's the oh, aubergine? Not a king. Oh really? No, Charlie won't eat aubergine. Chip butty, you can eat it. <laughs> Eileen in the Scottish borders. Absolutely, I'm totally with you there. I love a chip butty. Oh, yes. Oh, yum. Yes. Can we have those for mid-morning break, please? I say mid-morning break like we have a mid-morning break. You don't have a mid-morning. And it's like no. tea time for you and I, isn't it? We've been up already five hours. Really. Yeah. Right, so I'm just coming back I'm round. I'm almost ready for bed. <laughs> I, um... Just come back round. The heating so, was broken in my hotel that's last good. night. Yeah, I'm not So very I woke up this morning and I was like Elsa, <laughs> frozen. <laughs> See what you did there? It wasn't as good as my sandwich though, was it? Not really. No, it wasn't as good. So, so now you you've got your two then. flappy bits. So you want to put one over the other. So the shorter one, it'll be easier to work with. So I place that there and then I place the other one over the top. Yeah. And then I'm going to mark I'm going to mark on both of them. And what are you marking? Just a mark, so they're both in exactly the same place. Oh, right, okay. So I'm marking that anywhere, one. Really, anywhere, really, just where they overlap. As long as you've got fabric. Yeah, okay. the, the fabric has to overlap. Yeah. And then, and it's very important, it's the end and not this side. If you cut a quarter of an inch past that mark mm -hmm. and a quarter of an inch past that mark, yeah. when you put the two together, you're just going to have a continuous... Fantastic. Have you never done a that straight before? Straight seam or diagonal? Straight. Straight seam. Yes. 
Yes, you can. There's also the diagonal <coughs> method as yeah. well, which is really good. Yeah. So you can yeah. do that. Yeah. That's a little bit harder, but yeah. I'm all for. Genius. Yeah. I'm all for getting the people that are sitting on that fence that maybe think I can't do it. Yes, you can. You yeah. absolutely can do no, it. No, normally when so. I, I and, and again this will divide a nation. When Ooh. I join binding, well, I don't join binding. I when I start binding, mm. I fold about half an inch over on the lead end. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then I leave about two inches like you did yeah. before I start sewing. And then when I get around to the other side, I tuck the last at the end into the beginning yes. and overlap them yes. by about. That's another way. There's, there's, there's loads of, of way. And there's no right or wrong way. There's your way, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so then what you would do is you just put right sides together. Do you open it out? You, yes, so you open it out. This yeah. this is a little bit confusing, and that's why you need quite a lot of fabric yeah. to be able to do that. Because if you've left a little bit, you're kind of doing this. Sure. But you can see, I probably haven't... Oh, yes, I have, so I've cut that. Um, so we'll open them out, and then put right sides together. And then because we've um, marked... Because uh, we've added a quarter of an inch on, now when you put these two together and sew a quarter of an inch, you should be back where your marks were. Yeah, absolutely. You should be back. Now, this is a um, little bit... It is a little bit tricky to, to get it to behave. Well, it looks inelegant, but it's actually quite straightforward <laughs> to sew those bits together. Are you saying it? I'm not elegant? You are, aren't you? You are saying that. Right, so I'm just going to sew that down here. I'm so glad we got to see the whole bag. Yes, me too. It's a gorgeous book, it's, isn't it? There's so many lovely projects in there. And then when you... When you fold it back, because I, I, I did pre-iron these, so when you fold it back again, How all you then clever. need, you do, need to do that. is put it back in the machine. Really neat. Really neat. Are you going to use that? <sighs> Are you going to use that idea? I am going to use that. I'm, to I'm totally stealing that, I am. You, well, it's not totally mine, so you can it. have it. You can have it. It's not mine. I'm totally stealing that. <laughs> uh, and then... Jan's message, another favourite sandwich. The dogs have just reminded me. <laughs> love it we're out playing in the garden and i've got red leaning on one side and scarlet on the other they're like mummy in the middle <laughs> that's a favorite sandwich that's a good I love sandwich it. isn't it uh that, morning all mine's good. an orange chip butty with lashings of salty butter so it melts that's kate orange chips let me just oh what? let me i was gonna say orange chips orange okay this is a midland thing in fact i think it's quite a black country thing really is Battered chips. I'm not kidding. If you've never tried them, I had them last night. They are absolutely gorgeous. So you sew all the way around. Yes. So I sewn inch. all the way round, and because now I've done that join, yep. it's just one long continuous. Yeah. And then we will just push it over and over the other side, and then you hand sew it down. Or you could even sew from the front. You could sew in the ditch, stitch yep. in the ditch if you wanted to. Yeah. I. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie, I'm useless at that. Every time I turn it over, I go, well, that's not very neat. Kay. But I love hand sewing. Fine. So I just sit there watching the yep. telly or listening to music and I'll sit and hand sew it, which is what I've done on yep. that one. And so I just, I just think, to me, that looks neater than me trying to stitch in the ditch. It's know? a beautiful bag, beautifully gorgeous, made. Isn't it? Wendy, gorgeous. you're a superstar. What a brilliant demo. Thank you thank so you. much no, for showing thank us you. that whole bag start to finish. What a star. Get it all here on Sewing Street. I love it. Full demos. And lovely chit chat about sandwiches. I really don't think you could better it. Uh, thanks for that, Wendy. I can't wait to see you at yes. 10. Uh, yes. Don't go away, girl. Um, if you love that quilt, by the way, that's hanging behind Wendy, that's the um, K Facet Floating Garden. Um, a few of you have already checked out that quilt. It is very lovely. We've got a full kit for it, which I'll be going through with you um, very, very shortly. Um, we'll just, are we taking a little break? Taking a little break? Are we taking a little break? Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. I'm really sorry. Let's recap the bundles. Now, the bundle that Wendy's been working with is about to sell out. Remember, that's the ocean, which has got those beautiful, really deep blues and aquas. And then also there's beautiful, fresh greens there. It's absolutely lovely. It's sort of pretty tropical waters, isn't it? Gorgeous ocean colours. Uh, remember, it's not a grey. It looks grey in the picture. It is a grey in the picture. But it's that lovely light blue, what we call chambre cotton so that's the ocean version the other cave option that we've got is called 
cool and that refers to the colours in um, uh, the greens and the blues. These are much kind of zestier, more of a kind of chartreuse okay. colour palette. It's my favourite too, I love it. <laughs> Some nice blues there as well. But of course, Cave's trademark, putting other colours in, a bit of hot pink, a bit of bubble gum in there, a little bit of rust as well. And that we've mixed with a metre and a half of coral uh, solid cotton there. Plus you're getting that brilliant book from Annie's Quilting, Baskets and Bags Made from Jelly Rolls. So that's our cool. And then our third bundle is a Moda Jelly Roll. So you're getting 42. You're getting two extra strips in this uh, strip roll. It's called Words to Live By and it's got some lovely soft pinks and oranges, a bit of federal blue, black and white. You saw how different the looks you could get um, from this strip roll. Um, absolutely brilliant stuff. You're getting that. There's the lovely bag that uh, Wendy's made using the words to live by and the grey. And uh, you're getting all of those fabrics, 42 mode two and a half inch strips. You're getting a metre and a half of light grey solid. And you're also getting the book Jelly Roll Baskets and Bags uh, from Annie's Quilting. Now then, must just tell you about a couple of other design rolls. If you manage to get the book on its own, I think it hasn't sold out, but it almost has sold out. Um, you might be in the market for a strip roll. This is called Rainbow Fruit. Now, this strip roll actually has got £10 off it. Uh, we've got these in the clearance section, uh, that brand new clearance section that we've got on the website. Uh, we didn't have enough of these to make bundles. Uh, it should be £49.99, but £10 off, £39.99 for that strip roll. Um, really gorgeous, lovely, bright and summery. Um, it's got featuring things like some fruit, there's some sushi in there. Uh, there's also some really nice geometrics. Could you have a sushi sandwich? I don't think so. Oh yes, tea with B, that's lovely. There's a handful of these left as well, again with £10 off. Should be £49.99, this is tea with B from Riley Blake. 40 strips, two and a half inch wide, and you've got a lovely sort of selection of corals. There's some kind of dusky teal in there, a little bit of black and white and some lovely mustard and soft sage green. These are in the clearance section. Uh, Wendy's nodding her head enthusiastically at that strip roll. I love it too. Lovely. Uh, some really, really nice options there. Those are both in the clearance section. It's a brand new section on our website that I know a lot of you have been checking out. Don't blame you. Now we'll go to break, uh, just enough time to make yourself a sandwich um, and then I'll see you after that. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. You can either shop on our websites sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. 
head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favorite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Hello, I'm Adele Rowland. You may have seen me on shows already. My passion is in dress making. I've been sewing now for about four years, completely self-taught. I've actually learnt a lot from the mistakes that I've made. In my normal day job, I'm actually a secondary school science teacher. And one of the things that dressmaking has brought is the conversation starter with my students about the dresses, the tops, everything that I've made. I have two young daughters and a wonderful husband as well. One secret or surprising fact about me is that I actually have a silver world medal for Irish dancing. My dressmaking tip, top tip is always remember your notches. Don't skip that part with dressmaking because those notches are very important to line up all of your seams. I can't wait to bring more dressmaking projects to you and get more people sewing. In need of a crafting fix, there are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Hi there, good morning, how are you? Uh, welcome back to Sewing Street, I'm Stuart Hillard. Thanks for your company this morning. It's been wonderful to hear from so many of you in the last hour. Please do keep sending in your messages. What are you up to today? Apart from making sandwiches on National Sandwich Day. Are you having fun? Are you sewing? Are you doing some knitting? Messages please at uh, sewingstreet.com. It is National Sandwich Day today, so we're talking about our favourite kind of sandwich, which of course is the quilt sandwich. Um, but if you prefer Doritos and mint sauce, uh, crammed between two slices of farmhouse white, uh, we respect that. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> But do message us in and tell us what you like to have in your sandwich. But also what you're working on, what you're making, what you're sewing, knitting, crocheting at the moment. Um, and generally speaking, whatever you want to message is good. Ask us a question. We love them. Uh, we've been having a great morning and it's not going to stop here. We've got the most wonderful CAIF facet hour uh, now, uh, including a brand new quilt. It's called the Floating Garden Quilt. Now I can tell you that a quarter of the stock has already gone on pre-order this morning. Uh, you jumped ahead, well done you if you did. I'm going to be going through the whole kit and showing you how it's constructed and made um, in, the, in this hour. Now it's $149.99 and for that I think it's a cracking price because for that you're getting everything you need to make the top uh, and the binding of this beautiful quilt. You haven't got to go uh, rummaging around, you haven't got to try and find the different fabrics, you know exactly how your quilt's going to finish looking and it is exactly how Kay Facet designed it. Uh, you're getting all of your fabrics, there are 14 different fabrics. Uh, they're all of course 100% cotton from Free Spirit, which is a, a company I know really, really well. Um, I love how these kits are packaged because whether you're buying it for yourself or whether you're buying it as a gift, um, it's wonderful, isn't it, to have something really beautiful uh, to keep all of your stuff inside. 
Now, Hannah, our producer, just said, and I totally agree with you, that these remind her of lily pads um, that, that she saw at Kew Gardens that were so big you could have stood on them. They didn't let Hannah stand on them, although I suspect she tried. Uh, just to give you the dimensions, by the way, of the quilt, which are not on the outside of the box, but they will be inside. There we go, 145 centimetres by 203 centimetres. Could we have that in inches as well, please, for those of us who are still <laughs> clinging on? <laughs> uh, you get a wonderful, you get this wonderful kind of legend here that explains all the different fabrics that you've got inside your kit. Um, their code names as well. So if there were any of these that popped out that you thought, gosh, I'd love to use that for the lining, for the, for the backing rather, um, you can. Tells you how much you've got. Say again, love. 57 inches by 80 inches. Brilliant. So that's going to be a great twin quilt or it would also work as a topper for a double bed. Um, it would be great on a sofa as well. That would be divine in my living room actually. Hmm. 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 I'm thinking. So you get that and then inside, I have, I deliberately left this unopened. Let me just pop that there because I wanted to do the full reveal. <laughs> I was reading the other day that the richest YouTuber, or the youngest like rich YouTuber does unboxing videos. He's been doing them since he was about three, he's about seven now. And he unboxes toys. And he's a multi-millionaire now doing that. So, I thought I'm going to unbox a quilt kit. Oh, yum. Look at that. <gasps> oh, see, that makes me very, very happy. Very happy. Look at all this wonderful, gorgeous. <gasps> oh, oh, gosh, there is something, isn't there? <laughs> I know at home you can you understand this. There's something really like heart of flutter kind of I don't know if it's dry mouth or kind of moist mouth, but you know when you get lovely fabrics all together and you just think, oh, oh, I just want to stroke these. They're just lovely. Uh, you get all these amazing fabrics. I absolutely love this red. <gasps> oh look at that. <gasps> It's absolutely yummy, just everything about it. Oh, wow, look at that. I bet that boy on YouTube doesn't do an unboxing like me. I don't, I bet he doesn't do it as well as I do. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm just going to lay all these out and I'm trying really hard to remember how they go. <laughs> I won't remember how they go. Oh, look, 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 look. All these wonderful, wonderful fabrics that you're getting. That red is divine. Look at that. It's just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Really beautiful fabric. <gasps> That's amazing. Now then, I'm going to I'm going to show you the pattern just so you understand how this how this quilt is made. I'm not putting this together right, am I? But there's a little part of me that sort of doesn't care. <laughs> there we go. Oh, oh no, look the red. <gasps> oh, I knew I'd do it wrong. Anyway, and then the ribbon goes round. I think I've just established that I won't get a job working in the factory which is a terrible shame isn't it there we go and then it's all tied up with a bow right let me grab should just let you know as well half of the stock now has gone on Kate's brand new floating garden kit 
I'm just going to leave that there. It is a stunning quilt, isn't it? Beautiful size as well. So great for, for a twin bed, a double bed topper, uh, perfect for over the back of a, of a sofa or folded over an armchair. Lovely to snuggle under. It's just a stunning, stunning quilt, isn't it? So much about that that appeals. Now then, let's have a little look. Re-instructions. Re-instructions. Here they are. Um, again, you're starting off with that, that legend that shows you exactly which fabrics you're getting, the codes for them, and each of them is allocated a letter A through to N, so that when in the uh, requirements it says fabric A, cut this, fabric B, cut that. Now you know, I'm going to say before you start, please, please do not cut out your whole quilt in one go right at the start. First things first, and Wendy mentioned this earlier on in the first hour, first things first is always read the instructions start to finish um, because, because, you know, there's always something later on, I think, that makes the earlier part make more sense. You understand where you're going to. I certainly do that anyway for all of the patterns that I follow. Read the whole thing first. And then I also like to make one block in its entirety before I cut the fabric for everything else. Um, for all sorts of reasons, um, occasionally there'll be an error, uh, you know, in, in a pattern, um, which is always better to spot. Um, but also sometimes it's just a kind of, OK, so they've used that method, but I could use this method and that might use less fabric. So, you know, but you're going to paper piece, paper foundation piece the block. So here within the pattern, you've got your template. You've got your um, foundation there to create. More than 20 of these kits have, have sold out now, yeah? Amazing, brilliant. You're loving it. It is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful kit, isn't it? Um, and so you're going to foundation piece. So if you've never done foundation piecing before, you're going to photocopy that or you could trace it. If you don't like removing paper, um, you could trace this onto very lightweight violin. OK, um, I would use a non-fusible, a sew-in, ultralight violin. You then have to trace it using a ruler and a pencil. But, you know, um, rainy day. <laughs> job to do and then you can actually leave the violin in when you piece your quilt together but you must use a really really light sew-in um, violin for doing that. Uh, you could also just uh, copy this onto normal copy paper but we also have, uh, I don't know if we've still got it on the website, Hannah help me out here, um, do we have the Carol Doak foundation paper? We'll have a look and see if it's in stock. Um, if it is, then you could use Carol Doak's foundation paper, which is really, really lightweight and it goes through a printer. So what you would do then is scan the design uh, into your computer and then print it out. Just do one first of all and check it. Pop it over the top, make sure it fits exactly. There's also right here um, a little one inch square printed. So if you scan or you photocopy the whole page and measure this, if this measures a perfect inch, then nothing's been distorted, which is good news all round. Um, and then you're going to foundation piece. If you've never done it before, you're going to sew the fabric to the paper. You're going to use this side with the printed lines uppermost and you're going to sew on these lines. You'll put your fabrics on the underside and um, I've actually done a YouTube video. Um, if you search um, Stuart Hillard Foundation Piecing on YouTube, I've done a whole, it's about a 15 minute video on how to foundation piece. Um, very easy to follow, I think. Uh, there's a guest appearance at the end from one of my cats, um, which is worth staying to the end for, if nothing else. Uh, and then you've got a couple of other templates that you're going to use for the pattern as well. But the vast majority is very, very simple to piece. It is a beautiful, beautiful kit. I love that. Uh, now, you will need, in addition, um, 65 by 88 inches of batting. So, uh, I would get that while you're buying the kit. We have batting on the next show. 
so pre-order. You might even find a, an extra wide backing fabric there um, as well. So have a look for that. We've had a message from Christine, who's in Suffolk. She says, morning, Stuart. Great show, as always. Loving the cave quilt. Love from Chris on a frosty Suffolk. Chris, I know. So cold today. Uh, if ever there was a day when we need a quilt, it's this one. Um, it is a lovely uh, kit, isn't it, from CAFE? Another beautiful kit. This is called the Floating Garden. And we've got split pays, three of them, 49.99. Remember, you'll get the kit sent to you just for paying one of those split pays, the very first one, you'll get sent the kit. You can crack on, you don't have to wait until you've paid all three before you start cutting. Um, just jump in and enjoy yourself. Have a great time making that beautiful quilt. It is absolutely lovely. Um, comes boxed, of course, which I think is a real boon because if you're gifting this, uh, it's lovely to have it already in a lovely box. But also, I would keep all my bits and pieces in the box uh, so that I can go back to it um, and keep everything in one place. See, I haven't rewrapped that terribly well, but... There. Happy Christmas. <laughs> this is why I have to put everything in a gift box. Oh, gosh, 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 gosh. I must just tell you, single figures left. Oh, what is it about Cave that just, oh. Well, it's that, isn't it? It's that. It's the fact that when you look at Cave's quilts and fabrics, you instantly get that. It's just so juicy, I think. It's my word of the year for describing fabrics and quilts. Juicy. They're just absolutely unctuous and edible looking. Don't eat them. Don't eat the quilts. I want that to be a sign that they have a festival of quilts next year. Please do not eat the quilts. Because some of them do just look so lovely. But they are. They're vibrant. They're rich. I mean, they're put together by a master of colour. And they're just exciting, aren't they? Absolutely lovely. Something very, very special about his work. Let's move on. Oh, quick message before we do. From Sheila in Hertfordshire. Hi, Sheila. Morning, Stuart. I've just purchased this stunning quilt to add to my huge to-do list. Uh, I just love Caif from Sheila in Chorley Wood. Oh, Sheila, it, there is nothing nicer. You know, I was having this conversation with my mum. Morning, mum, by the way. Mwah. Love you. Uh, mum watches every time I'm on. And my parents-in-law, too. Morning, Diane. Morning, Ron. Hope you're both well. Give the goats and the sheep a little wave for me. Um, and we were talking about having a to-do list for over the winter um, because, you know, when the weather is miserable and you don't really feel like going out or you can't get out, mum loves to garden but obviously isn't going to be doing much gardening during the winter, having those things to do at home, that to-do list, actually is wonderful. Uh, it's, it's terrific to have your K facet floating garden kit waiting for you so that during the winter, you know, I mean, if you can bear it, wait until the bleakest day <laughs> before you get it out and start. And I guarantee <laughs> that would cheer me up whatever was going on out in the world. It's really lovely and it's $149.99. Uh, you can choose three split pays if you'd like them, a $49.99 each. Remember, you'll get the kit sent to you after you make just the first purchase plus your PMP. And if you already bought something today, like our early bird special, the Prim Turning Tool, um, you don't even have postage and packing to pay. Terrific. Oh, wait till I see Kaif, I'm going to say. Well done, you. Well done, you. Oh, yes, chunky design roll. 
Uh, we're limited stock on these, so I'm not going to spend very long on them, but chunky design rolls, you're getting 20 different fabrics, but they're six inch wide strips. Let me just show you what you're getting. You're getting all these wonderful, now this is fab. Um, it's always good to have a bit extra, isn't it? And especially with something like cave fabrics, because some of them have such large designs on them that depending on where you cut, I mean, if you were to cut a narrow strip off this, you'd have that. But if you cut it somewhere else, you'd have that. I mean, lovely. You're getting um, width of fabric, six inches wide times that width of fabric. And these are in gorgeous green shades. <gasps> Look at that. Look at that. They're so different, aren't they? Absolutely beautiful. Um, you could make a really, really simple quilt out of these by simply sewing lots of these strips together. Personally, I would put a little narrow strip of something in between, maybe this purple, like in sort of emperor purple, something like that in between, or even a, a, a dark grey or um, a black would look amazing. Or something like a really deep rust or deep orange in between would also look lovely. Um, and then create what, what we call a strippy quilt. Uh, these are absolutely lovely, aren't they? You're getting 20 different designs. You get a six inch strip of each and they're $44.99. You're getting a lot of fabric for your money there. And again, you're not having to search through and trying to find all these fabrics. These have been put together by Free Spirit who have um, created Cape's fabric ranges with him for many, many years. Interestingly, I'll tell you a little interesting fact here. Um, you, you, I'm sure you, lots of you already know that Cape originally started doing yarn and knitting designs with Rowan um, and originally and for many many years his fabrics were sold under the Rowan brand um, even though the vast majority of fabrics um, from the same stable if you like were were free spirit fabrics um, his and also Amy Butler um, was the other designer whose fabrics were always put out under the Rowan label there you go, a little bit of trivia for you there. A little bit of trivia. Amy Butler didn't do knitting, no, she's not a knitter, but I think it was because um, obviously Rowan started as a fabric mill and they, it, it was Rowan that uh, Kafe was originally associated with and was working with. Just have a look at those. I mean, I took a little bit of time to lay them out, but what a stunning collection of six inch strips just absolutely gorgeous. You could have so much fun working with those. Now, if I was to tell you that there are three times as many of you with this in your basket than we have stock, could I just possibly use that as a means of geeing you up? <laughs> geeing you up, gee up there. Um, just check out, because I don't want you to miss out. And obviously, um, three into one, don't go. So, um, well, I know it does technically with a decimal point, but we can't let you have a decimal point of a chunky design roll. So be quick on that. Those are absolutely lovely. There's one left. I G'd you up. Ah, <laughs> oh, bless you all. Now, exactly the same collection of colours there, same collection of fabrics. Look at that, I'm just, see I was trying to put that back into a nice bundle, but no. Here we go. Uh, we do a 10 inch stack of fabrics. I'm going to take the plastic off. Now, in here, you're getting 42 pieces. Oh, it's not easy. Bear with. I 
I'm secretly hoping that my scissors are going to slip and go through the top fabric so I can say, oh, oh, should we throw that away then? <laughs> so you're getting a 10 inch stack here, 42 of these. So if this was Moda, of course, we'd call this a layer cake, but it's not Moda, it's free spirit. Um, but if you've got a pattern for a layer cake quilt or you're a fan of layer cakes, this is doing essentially the same job. You're getting 42. Oh, I say, you know, Cave's fabrics lend themselves so well to 10 inch squares because they're large designs, a lot of them. And um, the more of the fabric you can see, really the better, I think, um, in a cave quilt. So, you know, even if you sewed them together side by side, uh, they'd look amazing. You could create something like a disappearing nine patch. You could do puss in the corner blocks using these with a bit of sashing and again they're working through from really deep blues through teals forest greens lime chartreuse but you're also getting that mixture of other colors rusts purples oranges magentas that is stunning isn't it just look at that i mean a 10 inch square you could use for a bag flap one of these squares you could use for a messenger bag flap and then just the rest of the bag in a solid colour. Um, amazing. You could make 42 of those using this one pack for $44.99. Again, absolutely stunning fabrics. Such a wonderful collection. And if you're a, a, a K Facet lover and you, you really enjoy making his quilts, but sometimes the idea of trying to find all those different fabrics because Kaif, you know, always says kind of, I'm paraphrasing here, but why use one red when you could use 25? And I totally endorse that. I love that. Um, but you might have found in the past the, just the thought of trying to get together 30 different greens and 30 different blues, just kind of eye-wateringly expensive and daunting. And buying a 10 inch stack like this gives you access to so many different prints to then have that in your stash to be able to dip into when you just need a little bit of that, a little bit of something else. A uh, really, really good way. And of course, we've got some other stackers that are going to help you to do exactly that across the rainbow. So that one there is our cool. Now, Emperor, Emperor, I'm going to, oh, I've got to show you this one quickly because it's always popular, which you know and I know means it sells out really quickly. Emperor is all purples, of course. Uh, amazing. Just beautiful. I'm going to flick through these really quickly. Again, you know, when you just need a bit, and actually it's not just a bit, is it? It's a 10 inch square, which is actually quite a lot. Uh, mulberries, lilacs and purples, a good splash of greens and teals in there as well. Cave has some colour palettes that he uses throughout and for years. You know, there's always a purple um, section of any new range. So he's always adding to love the Aboriginal spots. It is beautiful, beautiful range. Love all the stuff that he does with kind of, you know, Mire Fiori glass is kind of uh, like paperweights. Stunning fans. The chrysanthemums, of course, one of uh, the K Facet Collective absolute sort of archetype uh, prints there. And again, you're getting 42 10 inch squares. These are all the different purples. We've called this one Emperor. This is lovely, the Guinea flower print. Uh, so good, you've got two of those. That is stunning, um, really beautiful. Of course, that would work very, very nicely with the cool as well. If you imagine all those lovely purples with all those lovely greens as well. I mean, just absolutely stunning combination there um, if you wanted to get them both. So that's Emperor. Lovely that. $44.99. Remember, you're getting 42 pieces of your 10 inch charm pack from Free Spirit. All of those fabrics in there, Kaif Facet Collective. 
Now then, we've got two more. We've got parakeet. Mm. This is parakeet. I love, love, love these colours. Oh, I mean, if you look at my quilts, there's orange in almost all of them, so no arguments from me. Uh, this is lovely. Uh, so you've got this lovely sort of almost like a lily pad print on the top. <gasps> oh, this is really stunning. Wow. Wow. So you've got a lovely collection here of kind of gold, peach, pink really beautiful these these would work so well with a nice soft gray or a soft lilac that would look really pretty combined there lovely croissants there's those aboriginal dots but of course you know cave always brings some other colors in so we've got some lovely greens and blues in there as well this is really pretty oh i love it i love it they really are stunning. And it's such a great way of building your stash. Because, I mean, really, most of us, I think it's it would just be impossible. Oh, yummy. It would just be impossible to go out and try and find all of these fabrics. And then if you did find them all in a shop, then, I mean, the minimum you're going to have to buy is a fat quarter of each, isn't it? And if you just need a little bit, I mean, the way I think of Cave's fabrics, or Cave's quilts rather, is, is much the same way as I approach my own quilt design, which is they are... They are scrap quilts that are not made out of scraps, but they have that look of a scrap quilt because I agree with Kaif. Why use one red fabric when you could use 25? And it means then that each fabric um, kind of matters less. So if the oranges are all a bit different, uh, that just adds to your design. It doesn't take anything away. Um, you know, it would be like having a, a paint palette of 12 colours and literally only using them as pure colour um, would give a very flat finish to the painting, wouldn't it? Whereas the reds were going to mix the different reds together. So we've got everything from really deep carmine right through to a sort of hawthorn berry, almost like an orange. Uh, that is exactly the approach I take. And these stacks of 10 inch squares really give you that opportunity so you can mix and match, put them all together and create something that's absolutely stunning. So this is the range we've put together called Parakeet or Free Spirit have put together. It's called Parakeet and you're getting 42 10 inch squares. Really lovely. There's one more. Ooh. This has been called Prism. This is this is Rainbow. <laughs> this is Rainbow, but it's called Prism. Which I guess is kind of the same, isn't it? Because when you shine white light through a prism, it breaks up into the rainbow. So that is amazing. Whoa. Actually, I used this colorway but it was a strip roll to make my rainbow hearts quilt which you might have seen which was when i just joined sewing street um so here you're getting a rainbow essentially you're getting reds whoa look at that <gasps> absolutely come on through into your oranges and then we're going gold into yellow Hello. <gasps> Through into limey greens and green. Oh, it's too much, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Juicy. Juicy, juicy, juicy. <laughs> oh. No, I remembered I was on telly when I said that. Maya, if Maxine, if you're watching, we've got there's a group of friends in Birmingham, and um, one of them is called Lucy, and um, for many many years we've called her Juicy, Juicy Lucy, and so of course when you know when we go out for dinner and we all meet up and Lucy walks in, inevitably we all go Juicy, Juicy, Juicy. 
there you are. There you are. If you're out in Birmingham or not, we tend to go to um, uh, uh, Small Heath. No, not Small Heath at all. Um, can't remember now. Where the Super Bowl is. Where's the Super Bowl? America. <laughs> yeah, we generally we go to America. Yes, anyway, anyway, we do. We go there. You don't really want to bump into us when we're out. But that is really beautiful. Uh, we've also got the prism. Oh, it's just more lovely. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm. Okay, right. So we have got prism as a fat quarter bundle. I'm going to pop it on its side because, oh, come on. I defy anybody to not love it. Beautiful. You're getting 20 fat quarters, so you're getting ones of each. A fat, I say that, is that a different one or the same one? That's just folded. Oh, I'm going from the wrong side. No. Oh, anyway, it's how it's folded. Right. So, yes. Oh, wowza. So you're getting 20 fat quarters. Again, all those juicy colours. Now, um, we have got less than eight, which is a funny way of saying seven, <laughs> isn't it? Very straight. We've got less than eight. That would be seven then. Uh, these are just yummy, aren't they? Absolutely beautiful. Through the greens, into the aquas and the blues, and then through into the purples and violets. Uh, absolutely lovely. You know that rainbow is my favourite colour. So these appeal to me on so many levels, just as something gorgeous to touch in one sewing room. I know it doesn't sound weird saying that here. I know anywhere else <laughs> it would sound weird. Yeah, but I know amongst other sewers, it's absolutely understandable when we say, I just want that just to look at and to touch and to hold and just to admire. And at some point I may well give it a home in a quilt, but for now it's absolutely fine just sitting on my shelf, thank you very much. It's 79.99. It's got Christmas present to myself written all over it. Well, it hasn't actually, it's got free spirit written all over it. But it is just gorgeous, isn't it? So inspiring. That's a lovely fabric there. Oh, all right, I'll have that then. It's all my wages gone. Again. Now remember, we launched this brand new quilt kit. Um, and I think it's really worth having a really good look at that quilt, isn't it? Because it's stunning. Uh, the blocks themselves are foundation paper pieced. If, you're a, if you prefer traditional templates, there's nothing stopping you using your paper foundation template to cut out individual pieces. You could cut um, template plastic to size, cut out templates, you could hand piece this, you could machine piece this. Um, but it's designed to be foundation paper pieced. If you've never done foundation paper piecing before, have a look on my YouTube um, channel. Uh, there's a video there on foundation paper piecing that I hope demystifies the process. Once you've got it, it's easy. And this is actually a really straightforward block to foundation piece. Um, there's nothing awkward about it at all. And you get stunning results. And then the alternate blocks that the foundation pieced unit is sewn to, really, really simply pieced, um, it just square and rectangle sewn together, so nothing hard there. And then double border, some little cornerstones out in the corner as well, just for a little pop of colour, which I think is really pretty. Remember, in, the, in your kit, you're getting 14 different fabrics, all of them from K Facet, your solid, um, again, it's a free spirit solid. It's the most beautiful sort of deep cardinal red or cranberry red. It's absolutely stunning, um, really beautiful. And as Hannah, our producer, said, it really has a look of lily flowers, lily pad flowers. Water lilies, aren't they? 
beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So you're getting all of your fabrics in there, you're getting your full pattern, your full instructions, and it's beautifully boxed and presented for £149.99. We've made it easy for you by adding three split pays if you'd like them. £49.99 is all you need to pay, plus your PMP, to get that kit home. But it has absolutely flown. And we are down, are we down to single figures? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 single figures. So you've got to be really quick. Make sure you're checking out your baskets as well, please. Remember, it's not yours until you have. Uh, so do check out. Don't want you to be disappointed. It's brand new to Sewing Street today. Um, we get some wonderful K-Facet kilts, uh, kits, kilts. Oh, now then a K-Facet kilt, that would be yummy. Could you make a kilt out of a jelly roll? I think probably not, but it would be fun to try. Um, but we do get some wonderful K-Facet kits here on Sewing Street. This is brand new today, not been seen before. Now, I've got one other quilt kit, is it the Chilled? This is lovely. Now I think if you love your warm colours, this is a great one, or if you've never made a quilt before and you want to start with something that's really straightforward actually, what I would say was an easy beginner quilt but doesn't look like a beginner quilt and I think that's because of the way the colours are put together and the daring um, in this quilt is absolutely beautiful. I'm just going to shake it out. I think the website picture makes it look quite red and blue, but it's but it's actually much more pink. Um, it's very pink and uh, pink and with some purples in there, and also some lovely orangey shades and some magenta. There's just a little bit of blue and green in there as well, and those colours just serve to really kind of break up and add some extra kind of spice and flavour. A bit like you know when you're decorating a room. Um, you know, if you decorate the whole room in, in red, um, ev literally everything red, it would be really kind of overpowering. Just having a little bit of accent colour in there just makes the whole thing pop. Um, it's a lovely quilt. It's essentially a rail fence block. If you've never done that before, you're sewing strips of fabric together and pressing and then cutting down units and then twisting them this way and that. It's a diagonal set or an on-point set. Um, so you've got these setting triangles that you can see here just at the top that run around. You're getting all the fabric for those two, of course, and your binding, all included in your kit. It's £99, 99 pence. Really, really good price, that under £100 to get a full kit for a K-Facet uh, masterpiece. It's really fantastic. This has been quilted. Uh, which looks terrific, but I think this quilt would look amazing tied. If you've never tied a quilt before, you layer it in exactly the same way with your back. How's that for a backing? Hello, hello. You don't get that in the kit, remember, but um, you could add your own backing fabric, you choose. We've got backing fabrics later, so stick around. Um, but what you do, you layer it up with your batting and your backing, and then use something like cotton perle or um, embroidery floss. You could use cotton yarn. I wouldn't use wool yarn, but I'd use cotton yarn, like a DK weight and a knee needle. And then essentially what you do then is at strategic places. So for example, on a, like on a block like this, I might tie it here at the corners and then I'd probably tie it in one, two, three, four, five more places within the block. And what you do is you, you take a stitch through all your layers and up, leave a tail, and then back through again and up. So you've got like one big stitch in the middle and two tails. And then you tie and tie. So you create a knot and then trim your threads. I'm very visual, aren't I? I have to trim. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm such a visual person, you see. I feel like I have to act everything out. Um, and that's and you do that all over. So if you look at this and think, oh, wow, I'd enjoy making it, but I wouldn't want to 
quilt it, you can tie a quilt. Another thing you can do um, are called Mennonite tacks or crow footing, which are other ways that you can um, hold a quilt together. So Mennonite tacks and crow footing are a kind of stitch. Um, so like um, crow footing looks like a little V stitch into the into the quilt so it's like a little v stitch with a little stitch in the center that holds it down um, and you travel through the the quilt sandwich to another area and do another one and these little tacks all over the quilt again hold the layers together so there are different ways to put a quilt together it's not always about quilting if you wanted to hand quilt this again you could do big stitch quilting using cotton perlay so, um, and you might go through the center of every strip, you know, in a quilting hoop and just take your time, spend over the winter quilting, hand quilting a piece like this, lovely project to do. And I would use something like maybe a blue or purple or lilac, cotton pearl thread or a bright orange would look amazing. And you're aiming for about three to five stitches per inch, no more than five for a big stitch, probably three or four per inch. And you just get into a lovely rhythm. And of course your quilt's keeping you warm while you do it. Hurrah! <laughs> That's the chilled quilt kit. Now then, Jane's message in who's in Worcestershire. Wednesday is my day off. Hurrah! I love a day off. And I'm finishing a Roman blind today, then hopefully starting on some Christmas projects. Love Sewing Street. We love you too, Jane. Thank you. Well, that sounds like a great day. Enjoy your day off. I love a Roman blind and Christmas projects sounds like fun too. Um, love to see more of what you're making. Don't forget to send us pictures. Now, don't forget today, if you're able to watch us online, we're on for an extra hour. Um, at 12 o'clock, we'll be meeting Liz from Pinhole Quilting and we'll be spending a wonderful hour here on Channel 72 um, on the TV with, with uh, Pinhole Quilting, looking at the Moxie long arm quilting machine and frame. But then at one o'clock, when normally we'd come off air and we will be off TV air, but we'll be carrying on either on Facebook, on the computer, on Sky as well, uh, 670 on Sky, we'll be carrying on for an extra hour. Now the bundle that we're going to be showing you from Handy Quilter and from Pinhole Quilting is the Moxie, which is such an affordable way to get into long arm quilting. Uh, but there's also an exclusive bundle that you get with your moxie in your frame that includes a ruler base, a surefoot echo feet, a wave ruler, a wiggle wave ruler, ditch, matchstick, the handy quilter grip, the micro foot, uh, some glide thread. I always use glide for my quilts, a bobbin box, they're filled of course, selection of glide thread, some full line stencils. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say a full line stencil, prepare to be amazed. Stick around, 12 o'clock. So much today. We'll see you after the break. Don't go anywhere. We've got another wonderful, wonderful kit from Moda this time and our lovely Wendy Orlando is going to be demoing that in the next hour. So stick around, just enough time to make yourself a quick cuppa. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, Click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our website, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. 
You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. I've been part of the Sewing Street family now for over a year and it's been the most incredible journey so far. Some of you may already know that I like all things sewing, anything from quilting to toy making, needle felting and of course applique, which is my favourite. The best thing about being part of the show is being able to share with you my imagination and bringing you new ideas and new designs and patterns and seeing how you interpret those designs and make your own work and then sharing your images of those is the most rewarding part for me. I'm currently working on lots of new ideas and exciting projects that I cannot wait to bring to the show and share with you all. But in the meantime, take care everyone and happy sewing. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet. Then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere. Browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com alternatively you can message us on our official facebook page hi i'm wendy orlando and i'm a craft blogger you can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep you will see that i'm a tutorial blogger I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon.
I'm tittering here. I'm tittering. I was just having a little read in the break of some of the messages that have been sent in and I've got to mention Sue who is messaged in. We were talking about, you know, keeping our fabrics and just stroking them and loving them and that not being a weird thing to say amongst sewers because we all feel that way. And, and Sue said, oh Stuart, you're so right. I'm like Gollum with my stash. I open the storage and refer to it as my precious. <laughs> I love it, Sue. I love it. And you're so right. We've got a precious quilt kit in this hour that our wonderful uh, guest today is going to be showing us. It's so beautiful. Wendy Orlando is here for another hour. This is, now this is called the Stay Humble Quilt from Moda. This absolutely sends a shiver up my spine. I think this is so beautiful. It is warm it is cozy it is it's country but it's got a modern look to it too i think because of the the neutral quality to it it is cozy and warm it is country but it's also got that modern touch it's 80 inches square it's a really really good size um it is a beautiful beautiful use of fabric that i think absolutely stunning got a lovely mixture there of soft golds and black and like a tea dye and an ecru it is really beautiful it's an amazing price actually 124.99 so that's a really big quilt um and you're getting everything in your kit it's called stay humble it's brand new from uh, kathy schmitz um it's a great designer let me show you what's in here oh it's so lovely um, I just lovely the way it's been set out as well. Nice mix. So we've got two different blocks here. You've got your kind of star and geese and chain block here. Don't think that's its official name, but we'll get to that. Uh, and then you've got these frame blocks too. And I love the way that the blocks interact with each other and create this sort of secondary, like this sort of, you know, the framed block, that alternate block that's kind of pointing outwards. Uh, just lovely. It's got a bit of a kind of a winter wedding theme, I think. Bit of a winter wedding quilt there. Mm. Uh, it'd be beautiful any time of year, of course. And if you've got a neutral home, lots of creams and tans and, and that sort of, uh, you know, I'm just thinking it really look nice in my mum's house. It would look absolutely beautiful. Uh, mum, I'm sure you agree. I'd make it for you, love. Of course I would. Of course I would. Let me show you what is inside and I just love the way these kits now well done you if you got ahead and have already checked out lots of you have it is stunning isn't it absolutely beautiful and I think it's quite unusual as well um do you like the fact that I've toned with that theme toned with that theme kind of kind of working the shirt the reason why I say time with that theme, by the way, and I do sometimes say it, is Kath and Kim. I absolutely love Kath and Kim. If you've never watched Kath and Kim, it's an Australian comedy series. And there is one episode where she says, I'm going to time with that theme. It's going to time with that theme. And it's just a very useful phrase to pop out at all kinds of moments, I feel. <gasps> that is lovely. Again, imagine this was a Christmas present. Wendy Orlando, can you imagine? Oh, lovely. Uh, I'm just going to open up the ribbon. It is beautifully put together. These are stunning fabrics from Kathy Schmitz. Uh, brilliant. I love the fact that it's rather than black and white, which could be very stark, couldn't it? Lovely, but quite stark. This is a lovely kind of tea dye um, shade of gold. You get gorgeous detail there. And the black is a soft black. If there's such, there is such a thing, isn't there? Like a mottled soft black. So this isn't harsh. This is warm and cosy. And although I would, I would call these fabrics quite traditional in style, I think when you look at the quilt, if you were making this quilt for perhaps a young couple who were getting married or engaged or new home, or you just wanted to make a gift for, you know, grandchild or 
you know, someone in your family. I suppose what I'm trying to say is this would appeal to younger people as well as older people, I think. It's got that kind of, you know, it could quite easily fit into a cottage, but it could also quite easily fit into a modern house that was done out in neutrals. So, amazing fabrics. These are stunning. Look at that. Oh, just fabulous. I've never seen these fabrics before. They're absolutely beautiful. This is lovely. That is absolutely gorgeous. What a beautiful array of fabrics. I think I might have to buy this quilt kit. Seriously, I think it's lovely. I think it's absolutely lovely. Just lovely. You're getting so much fabric here for $124.99. Everything that you need, plus, of course, your full instructions to make the beautiful Stay Humble quilt. It is just stunning. Um, and I don't just say this because it matches my shirt. I think it's really gorgeous. Very on trend. Great for over winter, of course, but also that would work throughout the year, wouldn't it? That would work absolutely beautifully throughout the year. And my quilts stay out on the beds all year round. I don't just use them autumn and winter because in the summer, of course, I'll use um, a sheet over and then the quilt over the top of that. No duvet. I'll just use a patchwork quilt and a, and a sheet under it. Um, and that does me very nicely. Thank you very much. <laughs> so there are all your fabrics. Absolutely stunning. And then we get our instructions as well. So, full instructions. It's an, it's an easy quilt. I, I'm going to be honest with you. It's a nice, easy, straightforward quilt. You've got nice, easy alternate blocks, a square framed. Okay, nothing hard there. Just make sure, of course, with all your piecing, that you check your quarter of an inch seam allowance, first of all. I, you know, I know it's really simple advice. And I know for lots of us that have been sewing for a long time, go, yeah, I know, I know, quarter of an inch seam allowance. But checking that seam allowance regularly, because depending on the thickness of the fabric, the thickness of the thread and the needle that you're using can throw off your seam allowance ever so slightly. And those ever so slightly add up. So do check. Um, and then we're making flying geese, no waste method. We love the no waste method. Uh, we're putting together, we're making some little chain blocks as well, piecing them together. We've got our whole quilt uh, top assembly, nice and straightforward there, nothing scary. Um, this doesn't have a border around it, but if you wanted to add a border, you could absolutely do that, couldn't you? You could um, take one of the fabrics, maybe get some more of it, or a toning fabric, create a border. You could easily turn that into a 100-inch square quilt if you wanted. Um, and some nice opportunities for quilting in those big framed squares. Now the price is $124.99. There are two split pays available if you'd like to take that option. Each one's just $62.49. Um, and then we'll send your quilt kit out to you. You could have that made and on the bed, ready for Christmas Day. Lovely. Lots of you. Lots of you have taken advantage, and I totally get it. Please, can you leave one of them for me? Do you mean no? Honestly, it wasn't like this at the BBC. <laughs> it wasn't like this on Channel 4. I'm a terrible name dropper. You are. If Dame Sandra Rhodes has said that to me once, she said it to me a thousand times. What, you're a name dropper? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Wendy oh. Orlando. I can't stop saying your name. What a gorgeous name. It took me ages to find a guy with a surname I liked. Is that, <laughs> is that basically how you decided? You're the one? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, we've been together, gosh, nearly 40 years. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Orlando. Yeah. The amount of people that spell it wrong, you know, it's unbelievable. What? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. This, honestly, you know, like when it's you get a Christmas present, you think, I just want to play all totally. day with it. Don't talk to me. I want to play. Uh -huh. This is what this was like. Yeah. It's really hard to, to show the quality of the fabric through the screen but when you've got are you looking for a cup of tea no you? no not at all no no um it's trying to be discreet yeah well no no i'm, I'm, I'm going to call you out <laughs> just because you were name dropping <laughs> 
um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful quality fabric. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm not going to show you how to make one of the blocks. No. Because if you can see behind me, these ones here, mm -hmm. this one here, and that one there, and this one, are simply a block with, you don't have to do anything to it. You just no. cut it to size, and then you add your borders on yeah, it. Yeah, just and to frame square. Just frame it. So you do the two sides, and then the top and the bottom, or the two top and the bottom, and then the two sides, which is really easy, so you don't have to worry about any Y seams, because you're just doing, um, yeah. and, and it's all in the instructions. Uh, really, really simple. They're really, as you say, it's, it's very, Basic but effective quilt, isn't it's it? It's very it's gorgeous. effective, very Absolutely effective. Gorgeous. And I am thinking, Wendy, mm -hmm. that once I've finished making this, I've got a gorgeous stash of K facet fabrics, which those frame squares would mm. also look amazing Whoa, in. Oh, yes. But this is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely do that. Gorgeous. Um, and as with any pattern, you're always going to get a little bit of fabric left over because I, oh, because yummy. this, Good. I was like, this was already made, so I'm not sure how much of each, but you always get that because they, they have to allow enough fabric for you. Yeah. So I would make cushions. Yeah, yeah, totally. I would, I would have this. And um, you use your quilt for a different reason. I put quilts on the top of my bed so that if when the children used to have their friends round, they weren't climbing on the bed that they were then going to sleep in. I was a bit funny like that. I liked oh, to have okay. it, so I liked it protected. And also it looks amazing. Yeah, oh gosh, absolutely. This is one of the, fav the most favorite quilts because it's my color, it's just my colors. Yeah, I love it. really so lovely. These are the two squares, so you have two different combinations. And this fabric, is the, I don't know what they are. They look like oak leaves and yeah. they're, just, they're just beautiful, aren't they? they so are. we have these two here. And they're exactly the same. And I didn't realise, actually, Wendy, when I first looked at the quilt, that you've got that sort of dark background mm. and the light background, and they alternate, don't they, in different <laughs> rows. Really stunning. And I think that's what it draws your eye. And, and however many times you look at it, there's always something new to look at, isn't there? And yeah. that's what I love in a quilt. It's great for a quilt that uses just a few fabrics, you know, and this uses seven different fabrics. It's a great sort of lesson in how to use it is. a few fabrics. You're loving this, by the way. I oh, absolutely flying love Flying out this. the door. I'm not surprised. I love this. And as I say, it's just a shame that I can't show the quality because it is beautiful quality. Yeah, so we know our, we know our lovely fabrics, though. Beautiful. This is from Kathy Schmidt's. Gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now this is what we're actually going to make. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, this is the harder of the two blocks. They're not hard, but it's the harder of the two. So it's this one we're going to make. That Smashy. one there. So what I've done with this one, I've actually just um, quilted it just to give it a little bit of stiffness. Mm -hmm. But obviously you wouldn't. You'd put them all together first. You'd put all um, all the blocks together yeah. before you quilted it. But I just wanted to show you what it would look like um, one block. Well, also, if you had any leftovers, you could do that for a cushion. That's you? actually going to be it. turned into a cushion. Good. I always have, I d as I say, I don't <laughs> like waste. And, no. and when we do the demos here, I always like to finish them and I always like to have a finished item. Now, that's going to be on my setting, yeah. not yours, yeah. as a cushion. <laughs> All right, message received and understood. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not, not getting the cushion. I might even make it for you, <laughs> who knows. Um, but so that's what we're going to do. Now there's two elements to this. I'll show you the different elements. These are the two different elements. Mm -hmm. It's very, very simple. So these are the two that we're going to make and they're just repeated around the block to create this here. Gotcha. So we've got this one and all you would do is you just turn it around each yep. time and then you have this one that just goes there and then the centre one is simply a square. Yep. Now that looks more difficult than it is. That looks like you've done something really fancy there. It does actually, yeah. It's and one I of those it. blocks that you look at and think, how did that mm -hmm. go together? Yes, mm. it is. And that's what I like. I like to, to have something that looks really, really complicated. Yeah, but when you but break it down, it's actually quite simple. Yeah. So the first one that we're going to do is this little one here. And this is um, super, super easy. So it, in the instructions, um, so they tell you, they, sh they even show you, which is great. They mm. show you the different fabrics. So um, I always label, I don't know what you're like, I always label my fabrics. Yeah. But if I've got a visual, then I can go, oh yeah, that's G. Yeah. Oh, that's F. Yeah. Whereas sometimes I, in the past, I've got them a little bit muddled up because they look similar. But with sure. these, you've actually got the picture. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got the, the diagram on the back as well, how to put them all together. So you've got everything you need there. Now, with this one here, we're going to be creating 
we're going to be working on this section here and it tells you to sew um, a two and a half strip to a four and a half strip. Yep. And then when you've done that, you then subcut it okay. into these. So this is what you subcut it into. So I have my, my smaller strip at the top and then the longer strip at the bottom, but I did them the whole length mm -hmm. and then you just subcut them up. Now this is the other variation. This time you sew, the, and you do need to, um, just be careful of the instructions in this. Just make sure on this section yep. that you're sewing the right fabrics together. Um, you just need to make sure as yep. that you've got the block. We're looking for this one here. Yeah. Um, and you just need to select the right fabrics and just make sure you're doing that. But I think to your it's point... It's like a sandwich, isn't it? it With is. two slices of bread it on is. the outside and some filling in the middle. It is. But when you're putting... <laughs> All right, I'll give you that one. You can have that one. Um, it's National Sandwich Day. <laughs> Come on. But, well, just make sure that when you get yours home, you need a strip of that um, coordination and then this. Got it. So just make sure when you've got that at home, that's what you've got. And then all we're going to do, we're going to subcut these afterwards. And all subcut means is once you've cut some material, then you just subcut it again. Yep. So that's all it means. So if you're new to quilting, you've ever heard people talking about strip piecing. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. Long strips of fabric, not necessarily the same width, sewn together, pressed, and then subcut into sections. So rather than having to cut out loads of individual squares and sew them all together, which yeah. sometimes we do, you know, um, scrappy, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But here we can strip piece. And that's why it makes it so easy because the, the little square that we're going to make, the little block, that does look difficult and it's not. It's just no. that we've sewn some strips together, cut them and sewn them back together we've again. Sewn. So we're going to just um, subcut these and then stripologies are really good here. I love my stripology because it means you can, because being a lefty, you have to keep turning it around and going the other yeah. way. Um, but you can just sort of cut and cut and cut and cut. Yes. But then that's all that we're doing. We're just subcutting them down to They're the width that we need. They're very useful stripology if you're strip piecing. Uh, mm. Fab. And that's all you would do. You just cut them. And as you say, it's so much easier because to make these three here, mm -hmm. I would have had to have sewn that one to that one to that one. Yeah. To that one to Whereas if you sew them all in a long strip yeah. and then cut them, because that's what we try and do. We might try and make everything really simple and easy. And My little tip for you, by the way, ooh. at home, when you're strip piecing is to reduce your stitch length. For the simple reason, so if you normally sew at about 2.4, I would go down to 1.8, so quite a short stitch length. Sew your strips together for the simple reason that you are cutting through your seam. That's absolutely what I was going to say when we got onto this. Um, always reduce it because Sorry. you can't, no, no, so we're on the same wavelength, yeah. aren't you? you cannot work out where your back stitch needs to be. Right. And you wouldn't really want to back stitch because you're creating bulk and the whole point of when we're trying to create a really nice flat surface is yeah. we don't want all that bulk. Um, but this, reduce it right down mm. so that then that way when you separate them it's not going to all come undone. Exactly. Is it? Yeah. It's not going to come undone. We are on the same wavelength. We certainly are. Do you know what? I don't... I, I learned a great new binding tip yes. from Wendy earlier oh. on for joining binding so don't forget you can watch the shows again and again go to YouTube they get uploaded and uh, you can re-watch the show some great tips in the show but we on. all do things differently don't we and this there's, yeah. there's no right and there's no wrong there is your way yeah if well, it I works think that's why <laughs> buying a kit often is a great way because you know making someone else's pattern because you learn their techniques how they do things and so for example you might never have seen strip piecing before or never used it in a quilt uh, the stay humble quilt uses strip piecing it also uses the no waste flying geese method which again you might not be familiar with oh it's brilliant that is isn't it the, yeah. the no waste because you do get that little well i don't waste it because i make it into a little half square triangle sure. but yes you do get that waste and this one we don't um i would have i i should have pressed these before because you don't want to be pressing um when they're so vulnerable because they're small. You want to press them in the strip, but I failed to do my ironing today. See, I normally come in and do all the ironing and I didn't have to do that oh. today. So it was all done. <laughs> and then we're just going to piece them together and the diagram tells you how to do that. And you will see that this one at the top is exactly the same as the one at the bottom, 
just turn round. So we yeah. didn't even have to do anything special for that. Superb. And then they do tell you to iron one way on one strip and then the other way on the other because what we're looking for is we're looking for a nest. Oh. And a nest just means that you've ironed the fabric to one side and ironed it to the opposite side and then when we put them together they buck together to create a really neat join. Mm -hmm. Now I know we're only working in little pieces, but I would say absolutely pin or clip. Okay. Because you don't want them jumping out of no place. You don't. Some use pins, some use clips. I I because I have a dog. I use luck. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't do either. Well, something like that I probably wouldn't pin personally. Yeah. But pin's good. Pins yeah. are good. If you're new to yeah. get into the habit of doing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but of course I only need to do it for one here, which is brilliant because mm. the other one doesn't have that intersection, which is fine. And I've, I've used the, um, the butting up technique, the nesting, and I'm using a quarter of an inch seam. Mm -hmm. And you're absolutely right. The, another thing to make sure is that you don't change machines halfway through. I've done that before and it doesn't work. Quarter of an inch, um, it seems to come out differently, doesn't it, on different machines or different feet. It's always, I, I put a tip in, in all of my books, patchwork books, which is to cut three rectangles of fabric from scraps, two and a half inches by four and a half inches, three of them. And what you do then is, before you start every project, you sew two of the strips together, like an 11, right, together, sew them together, and press. Mm -hmm. And then your third strip goes on top mm -hmm. like a roof yes and it should mm -hmm. fit perfectly yeah and if it hangs over and it's too long then your seam allowance is too big and you need to decrease your the width of your seam allowance if that top rectangle is too short then your seam allowance is too small and you need to make it slightly bigger check your seam allowance every time especially if you've got scraps of the fabrics you're actually going to use with the needle that's in your machine and the thread that's in your machine if you want to increase the accuracy of your quarter inch seam allowance use a finer needle and a finer thread you wouldn't believe it i know but finer needle finer thread can actually improve your accuracy at sharper points on your flying geese yeah, it's these little things, isn't it? That's um, absolutely true, that is. And also, because I, I do have this machine at home, but I don't have the needle. No, So quite. I haven't got the same needle as this. And it's just little tiny things like tiny that can make so much difference, yeah. can't it? And so I've sewn them together, and now I'm just going to press them. And I'm just going to set those stitches and press back. What's your favourite fabric on this? I have a definite favourite. Oh, mm -hmm. I think it's got to be one of the ones that's used for the framed square blocks. And I can't decide whether it's the light background or the black background. I'm inclined to say the black background that one. with, yeah, the black mm. background with the floral, I think, really? is stunning. I just love the overall effect. That's my favourite. That one, I yeah. love that one. Beautiful. Absolutely. But they're all, they're all amazing. They really are yummy. It's they such are. a lovely, warm and cosy looking quilt. It is, Without isn't it? being sort of um, wildly coloured. Absolutely. I love the fact that it's a neutral quilt, but it still looks warm and cosy mm -hmm. and would fit as beautifully in my country home as it would in you know a smart townhouse or an apartment or you know whether your style is modern or traditional I could see that quilt working either way half the stock now has oh, gone wow. wow half the stock has gone wow and um, if I have anything to do with it one of those will be going home that with is me amazing as well that's really amazing. yeah I think it's stunning I, it think it's lovely. I don't often buy a quilt kit um, yeah. But I love the fabrics in that. I love the way it's put together. I just think the whole thing is mm -hmm. stunning. Now, um, you wouldn't normally trim these down, but I've used a different machine, as I say, at home. So I'm just making sure that both mine are the same size um, because it's the key to putting them together. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't normally because you'd be using the same machine. But mm. um, I think I probably would have had the needle slightly different to mine. Um, so that's that. And you make four of those per block. Yep. And... They're, they're not different, it's just the way you turn them around to position them. So we have them going inwards Got and then you. you just turn them around. So that is really easy, that one, isn't it? That's a very easy one. Now this one is nothing to be scared of. 
these look, again, much more complicated than they actually are. Mm -hmm. So we start off with, in this instance, we start off with a five and a quarter square. And I purposely not cut it because I wanted to show you how to cut on the quarter, which is, again, it's not um, difficult. So what I'm going to do is just, just um, neaten the edge up. I'm just going to come away from the salvage because you don't really want to be cutting uh, you want to cut all the selvage off. Yeah, for sure. You do. You don't really want to be sewing in that. I must admit, sometimes when I haven't got the right glasses on, I've done it and I've just thought, oh, but you really don't want to be. No, I've done the same thing and yeah. it's not, it's, it's never a good It is isn't, it, it no. isn't. Um, so we're going to get our ruler. Now this is a six and a half. You can do the eight and a half. It doesn't matter. But what I like to do, I need five and a quarter. So I offer it up to the five. And then each of these little white oh, lines... Oh, Wendy, here, I adore you. I offer it up to the five. I talk like that too. We're twins. <laughs> You're like my spirit animal. Well, you, you offer it, don't you? you because do. at this moment in time, I'm just teasing it. I'm not going to cut there. I'm just yeah. offering it to it. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's just how my brain works. And I know that to go straight in at five and a quarter, it's not going to be right with me. Yeah. So I can see here I've got my five and a half mark and my five. So that little one in the middle yep. is my five and a quarter. Yep. So I move the ruler along that line and what I'm looking for here what I do do is I like to line it up along the bottom and that as well and yes, then I know I've got yes. oh do you do that as well yes, yes. oh my goodness absolutely. me <laughs> absolutely. and then so I had pre-cut the width of fabrics to five and a quarter already uh -huh. and all width of fabric means is you just literally cut along the width yeah um, and again in the instructions it tells you exactly what that's to do. where you need that 24 inch long ruler because on a folded <laughs> piece of fabric you yes. can cut straight across <laughs> and then you can go in perhaps with a smaller ruler to sub cut if you've got them but yeah, yeah no absolutely yeah. I do that and also mm -hmm. it's that you know as as experienced a quilter as I am as you are we still do that thing where we go one two three four five count the squares when I'm cutting and I do that so often because I'm not I'm not you obviously don't know who I am wrongly. do you you've obviously not watched this before have go you? on you've why not watched me because you I'd, do that no I no. didn't quilt before I came here. Did you not? Do, do, I, do I hold it well? You do it well. You do it well. <laughs> but I fell in love with it. It's one of those things that I was always a bit scared of. I thought, oh, I can't do that. And now I absolutely love it. Donna has messaged in, Wendy. Oh, oh gosh. I'm a bag and bunting make, maker. Oh, yeah. Love it. I don't understand setting the seam. Why is it done? Is it something I should do before? turning out the bunting i usually just iron them after i've turned them out thanks donna that is such mm, a brilliant good. question donna wendy do you want to answer or shall i no you can't i'm sorry i'm concentrating yeah, setting on the scene. Yes. okay setting the scene so what we mean by setting the seam is when you've uh, when you've sewn the seam say you're sewing two strips of fabric together so the right sides together you've sewn that seam you're going to run your iron along the seam in the direction that you've sewn it so what i mean by that is rather than across the seam which can distort the fabric so never do that Rining in the same direction what it does just the heat over the stitches um, beds the stitches into the fabric um, it's not true to say it shrinks them because it doesn't shrink the thread but it just beds it into the fabric it also warms the fabric and when the fabric is warm and the stitches are nicely nestled down into the fabric they are going to press neater flatter straighter so once you've set your seam then you're going to turn the fabric back whichever way you're turning it and then you're going to iron the seam into place it does make a difference i think it makes a huge difference and and i'm all for if you if you're doing craft fairs and you've got two people that make bunting that make cushions sitting next to each other mm -hmm. at their stalls and one person has taken that step it will show. It does show. And people are going to buy yours. It's crisper and cleaner, isn't I it, think the finished so. result? Personally, I think so. So to so. answer the, the second part of your question, Donna, so once you've sewn down the two sides of your bunting, if you're doing triangular bunting, iron that, then turn them through. So it doesn't matter whether, I mean, they can still be warm or not, it doesn't matter, but you could set the seams on 20 of them, put them in a pile, and then turn them all through to the right side and then press them again. It's just going to help stitch the stitch. And trim the point, in. trim the point off so that when you turn it through, you're going to have a really sharp point. Nice and, and, nice. and I like to do and some, so I trim the point off and some a little bit either side. Yep. And that way, then you're going to get a really crisp point. Just like you would on something like a collar. 
if you were making a collar and you were just trimming that seam allowance down either side as well just to slim it down you and get it a nice makes point. a huge huge difference and yeah. you know we, we we're all able to, to buy machines and get materials so the there's the opportunity there for us all to do it yeah but someone that's gone that extra step yeah I agree. They, they are going to be able to charge more and buy more fabric with what they sell. It's, it's, fin <laughs> it's finessing as well. I think, I think so. of it as finessing. So once you've got all the basics of sewing, sewing your seam allowance nice and neatly and straight, you're good cutting. Mm -hmm. Finessing just adds that extra professional finish. Well, I always go by the pop sack, which is your preparation of your project. So if you cut everything exactly the same, and then the sack, which is your seam allowance consistency. If you do both of those and do them well, you're going to have the most incredible project at the end of it. Great. And I'm all for that. Because we can all do it. Stay humble quilt. Absolutely stunning. I love it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so beautiful. I just get excited about any fabric. You know what I'm like, but this yeah. is. Um, so I'm going to do the opposite now because I now want to cut two and seven seven eighths now that sounds a bit scary yeah. not at all because no. on my rulers these rulers are amazing yeah. each one of the little marks is one eighth okay. so this time i'm going to offer it up to a three yeah. um, and then go backwards yes. so then i'm just going to move it one little notch one little line yeah. and then that is now two and seven eighths so don't be alarmed if you see anything that's got a really strange denomination, mm. you absolutely will be able to cut it. The other little tip for you, it, and I'll be honest with you, it's not something I do regularly, but I do occasionally. Um, if I've got a sort of weird mark, I don't consider seven eighths to be a particularly weird it marking, but sometimes yeah. you might have, you know, three and three sixteenths of an <laughs> inch for something. Um, what I do is I use a little bit of washi tape or a little bit of quilter's quarter inch tape and I will actually mark on the ruler where I need to measure up to and then I can lay that on top and cut and that just helps if I, especially if I'm doing a lot of the same kind of weird measurement mm. you can do that little marking perhaps if you're cutting out the whole quilt it's worth doing that for this it, it definitely is and and that preparation you're then once you've done that prep you're then just going to be get on and sew which is what we all like to do isn't it i mean we, we all think well i actually like the preparation part of it i yeah, don't find that boring i think so yeah. i like to see something flat and then it's i don't amazing. really need the finished quilt if i'm being absolutely <laughs> honest I'll say it. You know, I like making them. That's the point. <laughs> Donna's message back to say, thanks for the great explanation. Brilliant. I do trim points and some. Brilliant. We'll try with my next batch of bunting. That's brilliant. fantastic. Thanks, Donna. That is brilliant. So, oh, we've that's got what we like to hear. a large square. So, we've got a large square and some small squares. Small. And now we're going to make our geese. Okay. We're going to make our little flying geese. So, we take the larger one and two of the smaller ones. And we're going to turn the smaller ones on the wrong side facing up okay. and then I'm going to I wanted a little one have I got a little one well, that will do oh I use the big one I've got him out so we're now going to draw a diagonal line from corner to corner now this is where you do need to take the thickness of your nib into consider into consideration if you've got a fat one then come away from those corners because um, you want to be drawing from corner to corner absolutely there we go. And on that side, I'm a huge lover of a friction pen, but I just wanted to give this little man an airing because yeah. he's a he's a washable. So you would just um, he comes off when he gets um, water on him. Yeah. Now we place it on the larger square, but we're going to place it in the corners. So we're going to place those corners together and then we're going to place these in the other corner but we need that line to be going down the centre, so it will overlap in yep, the middle side. Don't slightly. be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. That is, that's why you've got that. See, that's why the seven eighths is very important, isn't yeah. it? And I would, here, I would pin in place, because by the time I've got down to the bottom one, it's probably going to move out of place, and pin. Now, I'd just like to remind those people who have the Stay Humble quilt kit in your baskets, do remember to check out because this kit is really flying out the door. Uh, so many of you have already checked out. 
so many of you have checked out. Um, I don't want those of you, and there are quite a few of you who have got this quilt kit in your shopping baskets. Do check out so that you know that it's definitely coming your way. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous kit. Remember, it's 80 inches square, could easily be made into a 100 inch square quilt just by adding 10 inch border either side that would totally um, suit the scale of this quilt to add a 10 inch border on the side or a, maybe a three and a seven something like that would work um, make a beautiful beautiful quilt but 80 inches square is such a good size mm -hmm. you're getting seven different fabrics they're all 100 percent cotton and i love that mix of kind of country but modern as well it would really fit a, a neutral interior it's a lovely, I think as well, it also looks like a really lovely kind of winter quilt. I'm not going to say Christmas because I don't want to sort of limit it to a week or two. Um, this would work all throughout. This would work all year round, frankly. Um, but I think it would also look really gorgeous if you wanted to get a sort of quilt out of Christmas or through the winter. Um, it's got almost a bit of a snowflake look to it mm -hmm. with those star blocks in the centre. I definitely have it as an uh, like an autumn winter quilt For sure. and then in the summer maybe bring out the the whites and the bright colours. Yeah. Um, it looks great folded up on the back of a conservatory it chair would. and it's good enough it's big enough to get two of you snuggle under it. For sure I might even back it in flannel like brushed cotton oh, so it's extra gosh, snuggly. Mm. Oh that would be fantastic. Really nice. Um, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew um, a quarter of an inch from the line on one side and a quarter of an inch on the line from the other side. And again, I've got my quarter of an inch foot on, so I'm just using the side of my foot to, as a guide and sewing down. Just be a little bit careful when you get to that centre that it hasn't gone out of place. And this is a perfect opportunity to chain piece. Absolutely, yeah. Do you like a bit of chain piece? I love So you change directions when you go back the other side. That's okay to do that. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Because this time now, the fabric is on top of the other fabric so it's not quite so crucial because it's already in place anyway so there we go brilliant thank you very much lovely and this is this is really good this the no waste because we all worry about what this we're going to do somebody though who've never who's never done it before. that's why it's so good to see you make it looks very odd doesn't it it does look a bit it, odd to be honest it does now you can either use your rotary cutter and your ruler or you can just cut with your scissors but i always like i'm much neater with a rotary cutter than i am with scissors yeah, same here oh yes and we slice it down the middle so we cut it and separate the two pieces. I've got to tell you folks, it, technically this is sold out because mm -hmm. there's more of you with it in your baskets than we've got the stock. So um, there is still time for you to get this kit. If it's in your basket, you must check out. Otherwise, someone's going to come along and steal it. Oh. It's not really stealing oh. though, is it? No, not if, you haven't, out, not if you haven't not paid yours. for it. So I'm setting those stitches again just to nestle them into the back into the fabric. Donna and I approve. Oh, that's so good. Now, I probably would, if I did this again, I would best press the squares, the little squares. Okay. Because now we're going to put a bit of pressure ironing them back. Yep. Not crucial because they're only small pieces, aren't they? So it's not going to be too crucial. But anything that can stabilise that fabric, I'm a fan of. Can I just show you a tip with the other one? Can I just have it for one second? I'll just show you. What I would always do... I love I'm, your tips. It's, it's, I'm loving it today. We're both, we're both quilters. I'm loving it. Um, what I would do, once I've set that seam... OK, once I've set that seam, what I would do is flip each one back and then from the centre, I would just, with my thumbnail just push against that seam. Not trying to take out using an iron here, but I'm just pushing it back the way I want it to. That, I think, helps me press. Would you use a roller or just your I fingers? I don't tend to use... So I, you'd use your fingers? I have a roller. Yes. And I'll use that for things like leather, PU, yeah. something yeah. I can't iron. But then I'll go to the ironing board and press that and that will just go really flat. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them to the test, see if yours is flatter than mine. I don't think it will necessarily be, but it just helps to it's send just them the in the right direction. It's just these little tips, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, they yeah. To, to, yeah, to, to nice. my way of thinking, it's, it's about telling the fabric where it's got to go. 
because it, it's unnatural for it because it's falling that way it doesn't want to go that way so no. you're just giving it a little nudge in the right direction aren't you exactly. well, I must yes I'm very impressed it looks yeah you've passed okay cool you've passed yes I always you think this stay. looks like a fox head I always yes. say to people you're making fox it does heads. doesn't it they do, yeah. they look quite cool. They do. They do. And what we do next is we get another one of the squares, and this time we're going to place it in this corner. Yeah. So we still need to do the same and draw our line. And it's it's never worth guessing. It's never worth guessing no, here. No, don't eyeball this. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. Do you know, I do, I'm very naughty. I do eyeball when I'm joining my bias binding sometimes, and even that's a bit, ooh. No, I do as well, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I'll eyeball that. And I'll eyeball quilting, uh, you know, diagonally from corner to corner. Well, no, see, because I'm a newbie compared to you. I'm just a mere, like, baby compared to you in the quilting world. So I wouldn't have the confidence to eyeball it. I mean, it depends on the size <laughs> of the square, of course. I wouldn't do it bigger than a two-inch square. Uh, oh, I, I thought you were talking about a big one. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. If it was a ten-inch square, I'd put a piece of masking tape across the middle and oh. sew along the side of that. Wow. Okay, so this time we're now going to sew. This looks really odd when you do it, it this does. way, doesn't it? It looks really. I'm just checking. I have got it right now. You have then. got it right. Yeah, I know I have. But you know, like when you think, <laughs> oh my god, that was. You know, yeah. like when you think you haven't, it looks really odd. It does. Um, it seems very counterintuitive. It does, doesn't it? So we're now going to do exactly the same. We're going to sew half, um, a quarter of an inch away from that line and a quarter of an inch. What we f I failed to say as well is that we make two in one. I forgot to yeah. say that, didn't I? Well, out so of your whole recipe, time. you're going to make four flying geese, <laughs> aren't you? My little recipe. Your recipe. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, I sometimes <laughs> think about who was the person that sat down mm -hmm. with fabric and thought, hang on, hang on, I'm not cutting triangles and sewing them onto corners and to make these. I could make cut these squares and... Who thinks like that? Well, Some it's the pokey tool, pokey th throwy tool. Yeah. Who sat there and thought, yeah. if you did it that way, that's going to make life so much I know, easier? I know, it's amazing really, isn't it? I'm so glad there are people out there who sit and work these things out. It makes our lives much easier, doesn't it? It does. And more importantly, it makes our quilting more successful, and that's what it's all about. It is. It's that end result that we're all looking for, mm. and it really, it doesn't matter how we get there, as long as we all get there in the end. And then we cut, we, so I'll do that on both of them. And then you cut again, you trim the two and separate them. So it's, so it's just so much re more rewarding hearing that sound when you cut yeah. them, isn't it? And then I get my pressing mat. And this is when it kind of makes sense. If you've never seen this method before, this is when it starts so to look So would you like finger press this one? Yeah, oh, so okay. I would just right. finger so, press So you go back. in the middle yeah. and you go either side. Yeah, okay. and just I use my fingernail to kind of crease it back. Okay, lovely. <laughs> And then you suddenly you see, oh, okay, now I see the flying geese. And, but, where's the waste? Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. There is none. There's no waste. So obviously you need to trim your, your little dog ears off, but you've now created those flying geese. Mm. And then all you do with these ones is you sew. You can tell I've, um, you can tell I've arrived, can't you? Because it's You're gone flat. yourself out. Yeah, I, do, I always do that. <laughs> always. So I'm looking for the other two. <laughs> I haven't got there. Yeah, where have they gone? Oh. They must be there. They must be there, mustn't they? They must be. Are I should there? find them. They will be there somewhere. They, they're probably flown away. Oh, did, did, okay. <laughs> you did. You weren't like listening. Like it. I was <laughs> listening. Um, yeah. So what, then, what you do? I'll find them as we go along. Yeah. You then just put the panels, the, the little blocks together to create this block here. So this block here is made up of nine individual units. They're not all exactly the same because no, I no, and I think that's the thing that could throw some people. Yes. They're not the same width or size. They're not. These these ones here, these little flying geese, are a different width to these. So just just remember that. And then all we're going to do is we've got the block, the geese, and the block, and then the middle one is the geese, a square and to the geese. And this is really good here because you don't have to worry about any joins or any intersections because you've got a solid piece of fabric here. So you're mm. not having to worry about, I, I kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yes, I, I like do. That. It's a really clever block, isn't it's it? It's very clever, very, very clever. 
It's a block I'd use again and again too. It's a pattern Me I'd too. use again and again. Just absolutely loving the way very subtle, neutral colours mm -hmm. put together like that just look stunning. Absolutely beautiful. It's just think, gorgeous. Because the thing is, I'll be honest with you, a lot of the time I'm motivated to quilt by colour. It's about vibrant colour. Mm -hmm. It's about, you know, contrasting or just oranges and blues and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and actually, the what I love about this, and this is why, as a quilt designer, I'm not... I'm not a regular buyer of quilt kits from other people, mm -hmm. but this appeals to me so much because the way neutrals have been used to create a quilt really appeals to me. It's very, very clever. Um, it's the Moda Stay Humble. It is Moda, isn't it? Are you saying Moda? It is Moda. Yeah, Moda. Thank you. I was worrying then. I was worrying, but it is Moda Stay Humble. So when we're talking about, you know, the quality of the fabrics, mm -hmm. um, you know, we know Moda. We know what beautiful fabrics they produce. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, and this has been designed by Kathy Schmitz. It is a beautiful, beautiful, neutral, lovely gold and sort of almost honey tones, isn't it? Mm. Mixed with that soft black. It's not a harsh, really solid black in there. Um, it's a really nice, subtle, multi-tonal black difficult to say black mm. is multi-tonal but it is but it is the steps to it There's and that's depth. what i love about it that it draws you in and, yeah. and when you first look at it it looks one color but then when you go into it yeah. it is lovely and then of course you've got that overprinting as well the 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 cree or mm. that sort of goldeny tea dye almost with the black um, that just softens the whole thing it's lovely i just just think it draws you in it's yeah. just amazing yeah. um so with the center one because you have got that solid square in the middle what I do, and you might say, you might do a sharp intake of breath with me here, but when I put these two together, I would sew with the solid on the top Go so on. that the feet doesn't catch. Okay. Is that, or have you not thought about that? Uh, because if I'm sewing down here, yeah. I don't want my feet to go over there. Whereas if I've done it that way, it just glides over the top of that fabric. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. I, I mean, do try and look for... Things like if I'm sewing borders on, I tend to sew with the border on top. Because again, for that reason, oh, so you've yes, got a plain that's what piece I do. of fabric on top. <sighs> Although... You taught me well. <laughs> Although there's an argument to <laughs> oh. say, a lot of quilters will say have the flying goose on top because That's then you can see you. where the threads intersect oh. and so you just so so you know that you're not sort of clipping the point of your Ooh. flying geese that's why I wanted to ask the master, because I do that because logically, for me, I've got my foot going over one piece of fabric, but I didn't know if it was the right or the wrong way. Well, uh, there, there isn't a right or a wrong, is there? You know, I would always say, do what works for you. Mm. If you find it successful doing it this way, if you don't find it successful, that's the time to think, okay, is there a different way of doing this? Um, now, I'm gonna give you some numbers here now. We've got six of these kits left, but they are currently in 17 baskets. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm not a maths genius. I'm going to put it out there. Out there. <laughs> but I do know my way around a rhombus. And, and six into 17 won't go because we're not giving anybody a part kit. You're getting the whole thing or nothing at all. So please don't be one of the people that gets nothing at all. Um, seven of you need to check out really quickly and then you'll be getting the Moda Stay Humble quilt kit. Remember, it's 80 inches square, gorgeous size for, oh, I don't know, folding and draping over the back of a big sofa. Mm. Imagine cuddling That's under that all over Christmas. Mm. Or in your lodge if you've got a little, you know those lovely log cabin oh. houses that people have now in the woods or by the... See, or at the end of your garden where you go off and escape <gasps> the madness and go down there and enjoy or just have some quiet time. Lovely quilt to snuggle under. Mm. Maybe it's about, you know, revamping a bedroom ready for Christmas guests. Or maybe you just want a lovely, lovely quilt, a neutral 
cool that you could put in any room or that you can gift. I think this would be very giftable as a finished quilt. Oh, absolutely. I know lots of us want to make birthday quilts, wedding quilts, but we're always a little bit antsy about what colours, what would look good. I'd feel quite confident giving this to almost anybody, including my mum. And my mum will not mind me telling you that she has very specific taste, very specific style, and I know that my mum will be looking at that quilt saying, lovely, that's really, that's gorgeous. Did your mum sew? No, well, yeah, my mum did sew when we were younger, but it was kind of, you know, necessity, it oh. was curtains yep. and repairs and mm -hmm. clothing. Mum did make me once. My brother was in the town, um, like carnival, he was on a float because he was in school by then and they were doing a float and he was a pirate. And <clears throat> I was so upset <laughs> that I didn't get to go on the float because I wasn't at school with him. So my mum made me a Bay City Rollers costume, okay? No way. Complete with big tartan bow and a tartan baker boy hat she just without a pattern i think <laughs> she just made these things you know in that way mums just can it's incredible you're super women um made me this outfit and then she took me to a photographic studio and i had like a series of portraits taken oh, my goodness. have you still got them my mum's got them somewhere <laughs> i think as a Bay City roller and my, she made me feel a million bucks and I was like, school, you can keep it. I'm a Bay City roller. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> there what, you go. But, but that's because she could sew. Hmm? You could buy the kit for your mum yeah. to make for you. See, that's my kind of... Oh, my mum wouldn't know. My mum oh. doesn't sew now. I'm going to say it before my mum screams at the television. My mum wouldn't make me a quilt. It, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> No. Um, in answer to Hannah, producer <laughs> Hannah's question, my mum is not going to make me an adult basic roller costume, oh. but very possibly I might. Do it. You've got to do it. I used to love the Bay City Rollers, but ageing myself again. <laughs> well, my sister was very into Bay City Rollers and also um, the Osmonds. But anyone who follows me on, on Instagram or Facebook, um, Street Hill Love Makes, knows that I love a bit of dress up. I was at a Halloween party on Saturday. Meow, I'm just going to say. God, I haven't been to a party oh, yeah. for ages. Mm -hmm. I haven't been to a party for oh, ages. it's really fun. Ages. It's really fun. Yes. We had a great time. Oh. But you see, I can't do scary Halloween. I don't do scary Halloween. I do, <laughs> cute, I do scary every other day of the year. <laughs> but uh, Halloween, I do, I've got to do cute. Oh, <laughs> bless. Um, so once you've put the, all the blocks together, it, it's... It's very self-explanatory in the instructions. So you sew them in rows, mm -hmm. and then you sew the rows together mm -hmm. in rows. And again, a, a top tip here is to have one of the rows with the seams going one way, yep. and one of the rows with the seams being pressed back the other way, so that you can then nest those two seams together. And Nesting, then once yeah. nest, and then once you've sewn all of them together, yes, you get that. That's demystified it completely. Absolutely beautiful, start to finish. Thanks, Wendy. Lovely welcome. message from Margaret. Margaret, loving the programme today, have ordered oh, both yes. quilt kits as Christmas presents to myself. Margaret, Merry Christmas. As I'm totally with you on that. I am totally with you on that. You know, I always say the best Absolutely. presents are the ones you want and you buy yourself. Because you've chosen them. You know you're getting exactly <laughs> what you want. Just lovely, Margaret. You'll enjoy doing those. Beautiful. Bit of self-love. Bit of self-love. Mm. I'm all for that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Now those last few of you need to check out, don't forget. <laughs> Even more of you have added it in your baskets oh, now. Won't be check disappointed with this. <laughs> yeah, brand new. Now if you're thinking, oh, I could do with a backing, I could do with some batting from a quilt, Margaret, if you were thinking maybe. Mm. Uh, we've got backings and battings in our next show and our backing fabrics most of them are extra wide so no joins we love that uh wendy you've been an absolutely oh, no, divine guest this morning <laughs> it's, it's been, been a pleasure so much fun to meet you it's not work is it <laughs> oh.
<laughs> well, we won't pay you then. Uh, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that. It's been a lovely, lovely morning. It thanks. Has, thank you. Thanks for your company. Um, and thank you for your company. Don't go away. We're just going for a short break, but I'll see you after it. Town Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet. Then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere. Browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PP all day. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there. Hello, I'm John Taylor from John's Taylor Made. You may remember me from the Great British Make Off competition. Um, I sewed my tablet rest last year with the lovely John Scott. Uh, Sewing Street have invited me back again to do a few more demonstrations for you, but they've also asked me to answer some questions. So the first thing I sewed was a ladybird pincushion and I made it at primary school. And my late nanny Jo, she taught me how to knit and I think I got my love of sewing from her. She used to sew on that sewing machine over there. Um, something you don't know about me is I sew standing up. Um, my husband built me this sewing table. It's very similar to the one that you see on Sewing Street. My tip is more haste, less speed. My nan was always telling me to slow down um, and to enjoy what I was sewing and I would make less mistakes. And we also have a YouTube channel and a few Facebook pages. I cannot wait to start my journey with Sewing Street and I will see you there very soon. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app, onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out.
Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. In need of a crafting fix. There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Watto, welcome back to Sewing Street. Just mixing it up there. How are you? Welcome to Wednesday Sewing Street. I'm Stuart Hillard. It's wonderful to have your company. Watto, old chap. Great to be here today. I've really missed it. I was away last week and, well, I wasn't away. I was at home, you know, doing other things, working, but um, I missed being on Sewing Street. It's wonderful to be back uh, today and I'm also back next week. I uh, hope you'll join me. I'm guesting next week one day and also presenting and I've got a wonderful William Morris kit that I'm bringing. That's on Tuesday the 9th. No, it's not. I'm presenting on Tuesday. It's on Wednesday, yeah? Yeah, I'm guesting on Wednesday, which is the 11th. Mm. Wednesday the 11th. No, it's the 10th. Oh. <coughs> Watto, how are you? Welcome to Sewing Street. What is it? <laughs> I'm presenting on the 9th and guesting on the 10th. Wednesday the 10th, yes. And I've got a William Morris quilt kit. I say that, I wish I hadn't, but I say that because we've got some William Morris extra wide backing fabric, which I'm gonna show you first. And I'm also gonna mention the size that you would need for the quilt kit that's coming up. I know it would be good to see the quilt kit as well, wouldn't it? But I don't know if we can do that. But anyway, we'll see. So, 
William Morris. This hour is all about the extras that we need for quilting. So our backing fabrics and our battings. Super, super important. Um, as absolutely as important and fundamental as the fabric that's gone into the quilt top. You've spent that time, that money, that investment, all that love and care and work in making your quilt top. It deserves a beautiful backing and it deserves something really good inside it as well. That batting is all important. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this hour. It's also a perfect segue to our 12 o'clock show, which is with Liz from Pinhole Quilting, who's bringing us the amazing handy quilter Moxie long arm quilting machine. I know you're going to love that. So it's all about finishing our quilts now. So important. We don't just make the top, we make quilts. So let's start with the William Morris quilt backing. We've got three different options. Now we're going to start with the Strawberry Thief. Yeah, there it is. Ooh. Now one of the things I, I find usually with quilt backings, it's really worth getting neutral quilt backings. It's a good idea to have some good neutral quilt backings in your stash because these are going to work with so many. I just want that for cushions, thanks. Or a blind. Now the quilt kit that I'm bringing to you is essentially 96 inches square. It's just a fraction under 96 inches square. Now this at 274 centimetres wide is 108 inches. So width wise, ace. In terms of how many metres of this do we need for that 86 inch square quilt, we're looking at two and a half. Yeah, two and a half metres. And you'd still have a bit extra, which you could perhaps piece together to make some cushions. It's lovely, isn't it? It's a lovely, soft, what I would call a dove grey. Really soft. It's the classic William Morris. I think everybody recognises uh, the strawberry thief motif. It's one of, one of William Morris's absolute classics. I'm just going to move it down here so you can see. There it is, you strawberry thief, you. My mum, I've mentioned my mum quite a few times today, my mum absolutely loves strawberries and I remember once when we were children she would bought strawberries um, for the following day's tea and then got up in the middle of the night about three in the morning and ate them all because she couldn't sleep. Uh, now then, I just wanted to show you the width of this fabric. It only really works if you're on screen as well, Hannah. Come on! Come on! Just going to tip... Where is she? How long is this fabric? There you go. That's enough. Back up, back up, back up. There we are. <laughs> Isn't it? That is fantastic. So it's uh, 108 inches wide. Now that is pretty much going to cover most bases. Very, very occasionally I'll make a quilt bigger than 108 inches wide or 100 inches wide, but it's really rare. Um, the majority of the things we do here are less than that. Amazing stuff. This is what half a metre looks like. So if you wanted to make some cushions using this fabric, just because they would go beautifully in your house, then half a metre would, would get you four cushion fronts easily, if not a bit more. A window seat, that's a great, yeah, like a bench seat. I love that idea. I'm just, sorry, I'm so visual. Look, it's that. You can't sit on that. Hannah, come on, work with me. Um, it's, Beautiful. And $14.99, that's amazing. You get a lot of fabric. It'd also be really good for um, Roman blinds. Yeah. They would look lovely in a conservatory in that fabric, wouldn't it? Sorry, I'm just going to have to pleat it now so it looks like a Roman blind. <laughs> Visual, you see. And drop. There we go. Good. Excellent. Thank you, Hannah. Marvellous holding there. So that's one of the William Morris options. That's the Strawberry Thief Silver Extra Wide Quilt Backing Fabric. Now we call it quilt backing fabric, but of course, this is beautiful quality fabric. If you wanted to use this for borders on quilt, oh, it's sold out. Sorry. We've got two more beautiful options. Darker or lighter? 
We'll try and get that strawberry thief back in. Yeah, this is lovely. Now this one is, again has got that silvery grey look to it, but it's also mixed with some nice kind of ecru, eggshell, little bit of tan there as well. It's called Pimpernel. Uh, and it's again extra wide, 274 centimetres, which is 108 inches. I'm just going to open this out. Again, really, really beautiful, sort of quintessential William Morris design there with the lovely, graceful arts and crafts look to it, those lovely, graceful leaves, but that symmetry. It's all about that sort of symmetry, isn't it, in William Morris's designs, or a lot of them you have that sort of center line, uh, really super. Big uh, flowers there, very, very lovely. Remember to back a um, really large, like a queen size quilt, you're looking at two and a half to three meters. If you want it to be absolutely, you know, extra, uh, then go three meters, which means that um, six units, You'd need six units to back your quilt with. No joins. No joins. Now, um, Hannah, producer Hannah's just asked a very good question. Why is why is extra wide backing fabric so good? What is it? What problem does it solve? I mean, one of them is, and I think the best one for me is joining fabrics together for a backing. Um, I. <sighs> I suppose I don't particularly like curtain making because I don't like joining large pieces of fabric together. Um, so for me, it's, it's not having to do the work. It's much easier if you've got a whole piece of fabric. Um, the joins uh, on a quilt backing, I've never really found a problem with them sort of being able to feel them or them showing or anything like that. So it's not really an issue. I think it's more having to do the work. The other thing as well is, you know, that you can have a whole design. So, for example, if you want to have a reversible quilt and you want something lovely on the back, but something where you haven't had to match patterns because um, you've joined multiple widths, uh, this could be the quilt top. You could put a solid on the back or another of the prints on the back, actually. We've got another one coming up, this one, which would work beautifully on another side. So this could be the front of your quilt, this could be the back of your quilt, and then you've got a fully reversible whole cloth quilt. Um, yeah, and also as well, I think the best reason is it adds a, a fundamental extra to your quilt design. It's got a beautiful backing. Quilters always look at the back of quilts always. It's like the law. And of course you want 100% cotton on the back, so it's going to wash and wear in the same way as the quilt front. Uh, it's going to feel the same, it's got that lovely cotton feel. Also, actually, if you're someone that likes to make your own bedding, so you want to be able to make your own duvet covers, and you want to be able to make your own things like um, this would look gorgeous actually as a dust ruffle around the base of a bed. So again, um, they can be really expensive. They can be really expensive, um, especially in a William Morris 100% cotton. Uh, this actually, uh, half a metre of this, I think would probably do a dust ruffle for a single bed, certainly. If you were doing a double or queen or bigger than that, then you'd want multiple strips sewn together. But um, that would be about the depth for most beds. And then you're going to turn up a double hem on the bottom. And then along the top, now some, some dust ruffles are gathered, so they require a bit more fabric. I've made them before where I've done an inverted box pleat. Um, along the sides and also at the corners. So an inverted box pleat, you, you mark the width of your pleat, you also mark your centre point. So if I just pop a little crease in there just to show you. And then what you do is you bring the outside edges in, whoops, in to meet the centre mark. And that's your, that's your inverted, inverted box pleat there. OK, so you would have that maybe at the centre point along the sides. You'd also have that at the corners and that just creates that little extra fullness for going around a corner. But it also just looks lovely. Um, so there's another idea for using your extra wides.
Now, Sheila's asked a question, how much would you need for a king-sized quilt? Yeah, so king size is up to 124 inches, but obviously this goes up to 108 inches. So let's talk about 108 inches square. So um, that would be, so you've got 40, so that'd be three, yeah, three meters. Three meters, so six units would do up to a king size. Of course, if you are going even bigger than 108, then you might have to join. But um, as I say, the vast majority of quilts, I've only ever made one quilt, which I think was about 118 inches square. And to be honest with you, it's the only quilt that, I, quilt that I've ever made, which I thought, that's just too big. It's too big. We have a super king bed. It's too big even for that. So, um, yeah, 108 is probably as big as I'd go. Everybody that's checking out is going for multiple units. Remember to add up the number of units. They're half meter increments. Um, it's a oh, one more reason why you would buy extra wide fabric is this at cost. If you buy printed like quilt weight cottons. Um, standard width 44 inches wide and you piece them together in order to get 108 inches wide you would need three of those units together now remember that the vast majority of court weight cottons are around 14.99 a meter uh, so this is 14.99 for half a meter but this is three times or nearly three times the width of that fabric standard width fabric so you would need so the cost to back a quilt using a, an extra wide backing fabric is around about a third or less cheaper this is the same design as we just looked at pimpernel but this is charcoal this i think might be my favorite now half the stock of this went on pre-order it is glorious any of these will suit my William Morris kit that I'm bringing next week. If I was to choose out of the three of them, I'd probably go for this one, personally. This one really appeals. I love that charcoal background. It really makes the design pop. And you can see there very clearly that line of symmetry down the center with the design opening up either side. I love the way it's described by one quilt designer, and I forget her name now, she refers to this as the belly of the butterfly, which I think is just the most beautifully descriptive way. You imagine the belly of the butterfly and the wings either side. Gorgeous. So much more poetic than the line of symmetry, but essentially the same thing. So this is 108 inches wide, 274 centimetres. Uh, half a metre is just 14.99. If you're going to do something like um, a wall quilt using this, of course you won't use the full width, but even one metre of this is going to be perfect for up to about a 40 inch square wall hanging again with no join um you might think oh well i just use a regular uh, quilt weight cotton for that but um you could do two side by side also if you're long arming if you're a long armor or you're interested in getting a long arm stick around won't you um but you need extra fabric on the sides as well so these extra wide backings are an absolute boon or if you send your quilts to a long arm quilter Long arm quilters love extra wide backing. Much easier to get a nice square backing. This one's going to sell out. So if you've got your eyes on the charcoal Pimpernel, I'd be quick about it. Very nice, that one. Now let's go to the other end of the spectrum. Still extra wide backings, but these are really colourful. These are called elements and this one is called tahiti no it isn't i thought that was striped is it this one is it that one let's do that one first this is called tahiti dream uh, again this is 274 inches wide a uh, centimeters wide sorry so this is 108 inches want to show you this is 12.99 oh this is gorgeous look at that sorry about the creases 
But look at all the different colours. I mean, it's like a landscape. This would work really well with Tim Holtz fabrics. It would work really well with K-Facet fabrics as well. We're going to hold it up so you can see. This would also work incredibly well if you like sort of landscape quilting or, um, you know, art quilting, modern quilting. I mean, it's stunning, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, almost looks, has a hand-painted look. A little bit sort of distressed look as well. So if you like your moda, uh, marbles or grunge that would work really well too with this batiks would work really well and of course you could also use this for borders on a quilt and again it's one of those times I don't like piecing fabrics together for borders I don't like the join I don't like having to do it this would work perfectly well and think about mitering the corners on your bind on your um, borders that would look stunning so this is Tahiti Dreams in blue, extra wide, 108 for only 12 99 That's even better value. And I've got to say, the feel of that is gorgeous. It feels just the same as quilt weight cotton that we would use on the front of a quilt. That is stunning. What well, maybe you want to improve your free motion quilting and you want a cost-effective way of buying fabric that you can use then, of course, as well. Hannah's getting very arty, thinking landscape quilting, seeing water, mountains, landscape in there as well. It's a really inspiring bit of fabric, that, isn't it? $12.99 for a half metre. I think that would be great. It's just a stash builder anyway, just a half metre, just because... Sharon's got a question. Hi Stuart, could you use the backing fabric for dressmaking at all? Sharon, absolutely. Yes, you could. Um, as with all fabrics for dressmaking, if they're washable, and these are of course, I would wash them first because if there is any shrinkage movement, whatever in the fabric, you want to get rid of that before you dressmake. You can get rid of it before you quilt too as well, of course, if you want to. Um, and then, but I think when you're, especially when you're fitting something to your body, um, you always want to pre, pre-wash fabrics if you can. Um, but then, yeah, absolutely, use it for dressmaking. I think that would be gorgeous. Whew. This is a doozy. Look at that. Oh my goodness, colour, colour, colour. Amazing. Forget the back of your quilt. Why isn't this going on the front? Bindings, borders. That is amazing. This is 78. I think the pictures on the website don't really do these fabrics justice. But hopefully on screen, that is absolutely leaping out at you. Amazing. New York art scene. I'm thinking, you know those, those uh, like sort of palazzo pants? Yeah, loungewear. I'm definitely thinking clothing now, I'm thinking clothing. But also quilt backing, children's quilts, completely appropriate for children's quilts if you've gone primary, if you've gone bright and beautiful uh, for the backings for the borders. If you wanted to make a play mat for kids, front and back. Completely beautiful. This would also make the most amazing kind of 50s style dress with a big kind of full skirt. And at $12.99 per half metre, you know, you can afford to go for those larger um, fabric requirement patterns. Do you know what I mean? Because you've got that extra fabric. I think that's stunning. This is the Blue Haze extra wide backing fabric. Half a metre is $12.99. Remember, you buy in increments of half a metre, yours will all come joined together, not cut. Um, so for up to a king size, go for three metres. That's six units. If you're making smaller than that, obviously adjust, but beautiful. And if you want to do things like matching pillow shams as well, of course, uh, really easy to make with that nice folded tuck. If you've got my first book, So Fabulous, I spent 
days <laughs> working out how to do the proper tuck, pillow tuck. Um, for a pillowcase with no seam showing. Um, took ages for my non-mathematical brain to work it out. I don't know why, but it did. Anyway, you've got the pattern in that book. So that's the blue haze. And then we've got one more from the elements. Oh, this is lovely. This is sort of saying more autumn -y to me. I don't know why. Mm. But it is absolutely gorgeous. This is stunning. I've never seen backing fabrics like this before. Never. I think this is really gorgeous. Vibrant, beautiful. So much depth of colour. So much colour in there, you know. Absolutely lovely that. Yeah, absolutely suitable for dressmaking. I always pre-wash fabric for dressmaking if I can wash them. Bolster cushions. Roman blinds and again I mean this is a quilt weight cotton so I would interline um, the Roman blind or curtains I'd interline them or you could put interfacing on the back just to kind of beef it up a little bit obviously for your quilt backing or borders or anything else or even your piecing just use it as it is I mean it is absolutely stunning isn't it great for bag making too a weekender yeah, the Weekender bag from my book Bags for Life would look amazing done in this. A trolley bag, an attache. I'd like a pump bag in that. A plimpsoul bag. <laughs> amazing. I think it's really exciting because, because often, you know, and they are good to have, backing fabrics tend to be quite neutral, quite low-key. Uh, they, they, you know, absolutely do look and feel like a fabric for the back of a quilt. But that is a work of art. Absolutely stunning. It's 10 metres left of that colourway, that's all. And if you need three metres for your stash, that's only three customers with a metre left over. So, hashtag just saying. Now then, what should we look at next? We've got loads of more. Ruby Star Society. Great options, these. I don't think, it's really difficult to, well, you can't see in a photograph the quality, but this is absolutely gorgeous. This is so soft, sh um, silky. It's got a real silky feel to it. It is really high thread count this I can feel it it's beautiful and um, and I hope you can see at home the blend because you've got a black background but then you've got um almost like sort of uh, spray almost like flicked paint you know we do that with a paintbrush and flick it uh, like a deep chocolate like an espresso brown and then you've got a lovely kind of bronzy and then you've got a charcoal or pewter and then like a silver grey. So absolutely beautiful. I think that would be amazing for dressmaking. Uh, really smart. Absolutely fabulous. You can see it close up there. Uh, but also, of course, perfect for what it's designed for, which is quilt backing. Cushions, lightweight curtains, home decor, patchwork quilting, anything like that. And also, let's not forget, this could be used on the front of your quilt as a blender. Yeah, It could be the background for appliques. It could be your neutral that you're using with sort of, you know, kind of jazzier fabrics for your piecing. Jazz hands. Uh, absolutely. It's, this, it's beautiful quality. It's 100% cotton. Ruby Star Society. You know them well. Uh, this is the black speckled fabric. It's 108 inches wide and half a metre will only cost you £12.99. Smashing. That's been very, very popular on pre-order before the show. And backing fabrics are brilliant and essential stash builders. When you finish that quilt top, you're already thinking of the next one. I know you are. You're just like me. And um, so it's important to have your backing fabric and your batting in your stash ready 
so that when your quilt top's finished, you can go straight to the next step, get it layered, get it quilted and bound, and start enjoying it. Now, Navy, this is making producer Hannah and me think Christmas. I should also give a shout out to Emma, our wonderful director, who has been very much just diligently creating a beautiful looking show, and I haven't given her a mention. <laughs> that is lovely. Why is that making me think Christmas? That is making me think Christmas with golds and some lighter blues, some stars with this as the neutral background and the backing for a table runner. A telescope cover, thank you, Hannah. Good suggestion. Slightly off centre, but you know. It's lovely. And again, you've got that mixture of different shades, a lovely inky navy in the background, and then this lovely sort of sky blue, some gold. It's not shiny gold, but I'm saying it's not shiny gold. It actually is shiny gold, isn't it? Some proper gold sparkle there. Look at that. Uh, for $12.99 for half a metre. That's brilliant. And then you've got a lovely sort of warm uh, grey, like a warm dove charcoal grey. Lovely. That's great. And again, don't think, oh, I've, this is only good for backing a fabric. You could make a blouse. You could make a dress. You could make a shirt out of that. Light upholstery. Again, if you want to back it with something like a medium weight fusible interfacing or interline your curtain or blind just to beef it up and create a bit more of a, you know, um, a better drape, you absolutely can. And also, of course, great for a dust ruffle around the bed as well. I love the dust ruffle. I love a dust ruffle, don't you? I like a dust ruffle. Do you know what a dust ruffle's for, Hannah, producer Hannah? Keeps the dust from under your bed. <laughs> Hannah's just said she's hoping that the hair that's trapped under her bed will eventually turn into a pet. Right, yes. <laughs> this is t the turquoise. I think this is my favourite colourway in this. I can't get over how silky and smooth this is. It is absolutely beautiful. It almost feels like um, somewhere between a poplin and a silk. It is lovely, but it is 100% cotton. This is the turquoise and it's got a deep bronze, a gold and a deeper turquoise and a lighter turquoise spatter all over it. That would work well with Tula Pink, I think. It would also work really well with Beth Studley's new range, uh, which we've got some stunning quilt kits actually on the show. Can we just, are we allowed to just have a quick look at those? Because I don't know, I don't, I want to spend a bit of time loving these. We've had a lot of gorgeous quilt kits, but hello. Hello. I think the turquoise or the navy would look amazing um, with that. Look at those. There's two different quilt kits that we've got coming up. It's still in this hour. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful. They're brand new from Beth Studley. So that's the turquoise backing, again, from Ruby Star Society. And then, very, very useful, we've got the uh, is it silver. Speckled dove. How lovely. Again, just very, very useful. Again, I'm thinking Christmas. Oh, oh. Now imagine this is a background for a plique. You know those lovely almost watercolour painted designs that you get like sort of like a wreath of eucalyptus leaves? little berries, things like that appliqued on would be amazing. Or as a background for machine embroidery that wasn't just plain and solid. That uh, would look absolutely lovely. These would be, this would be great for adding into piecing um, for the front of quilts, runners. Just a half a metre in your stash for $12.99. Because remember, this, this is actually doing the work of almost a metre and a half of regular quilt weight cotton. 
because you've got 108 inches uh, of fabric here, half a metre for 12.99. absolutely gorgeous think about your local fabric shop or you know it's it's very difficult most quilt shops do not carry quilt backings at all and if they do it tends to be quite a small selection because you know it's i don't know it's difficult to have you don't know what to have that's going to appear we've got a really good selection here at sewing street i think it's fab i think it's fab Nice message from Alex, from Alexandra. Thank you, Stuart, for all the tips today, Alex, in Cambridgeshire. Oh, you're really welcome, Alex. It's a pleasure. Um, we all, all of all of the uh, presenters and guests here at Sewing Street, love to pass on our tips, our tricks, any experiences that we've had. Sometimes our goofs and our mishaps, you know, um, you know, we all mess up sometimes and I always think you learn more by goofing than being successful because all the time you're being successful, you just think, oh, this is working and then one day something goes wrong. You learn more then, I think. So thanks, Alex. Let's move over and let's look at those Beth Studley kits because I've been loving these all morning. And th there I am. Hello. Oh, stop. Hiya. Um, these are amazing, aren't they? Absolutely incredible. We've got two Beth Studley kits. I feel like I'm totally in the way here, standing in the way of Beth's amazing designs. Should we do broken circles first? Mmm, broken circles. Now then, uh, this is from Beth's brand new fabric range, the name of which escapes me for a moment. Um, now this kit is for uh, broken circles. Now the kit itself, uh, the quilt itself rather, is 60 inches square. Uh, beautiful size that for um, layering on a bed. Uh, also great for on the back of a sofa or something like that. Amazing on the wall as a piece of art. I mean, it's an incredible kit, kit isn't it? Uh, beautiful, beautiful design that. 60 inches square. It's £109.99. It's exclusive to us here at Sewing Street right now. You won't find this kit anywhere else. Uh, it, it, stunning fabrics. I love the palette. Those lovely inky blues with magenta gold you've also got those lovely turquoises in there as well and a sort of almost purplish blue absolutely love it you're getting your full pattern in there as well okay so you're not just going to be left to your own devices there's even this lovely um it's almost like a linen texture navy that's going to work with those fabrics stunning absolutely stunning that uh, you might not want to make that quilt although i totally want to make that quilt but you might just want all those fabrics for your stash at 109 pounds 99 for all of that and you can get it into uh, split payments of 54.99 if you prefer to spread the cost absolutely gorgeous that absolutely gorgeous do you know what i feel like i need to just open and I, I need to find out what the name of this fabric range is oh look i've picked the bit that it's not on anyway it's amazing it's absolutely beautiful i'm just going to leave it there and say it's an amazing fabric range it's new from beth studley beth is an amazing amazing designer isn't she Love her work. Being so tidy today, aren't I? There we go. A uh, gorgeous quilt. Can't stop looking at it. Really lovely. <sighs> so many quilts. So little time. But it really is stunning. And these are pieced. These are pieces. So you're piecing these arcs together and then the centre circle is appliqued. 
So it's, the edges are turned under. I would suggest starch and press to do the applique and then um, stitch down. Really gorgeous that. Beth, we love it. And it's beautifully quilted as well. Quilted, I'm sure, with a walking foot. Very achievable. Oh, love that. But the other one, I think possibly I might love even more, which is called the Sunbeam Quilt. Now, this is a little smaller. This is 39 inches square. I'm going to sort of open it out so that you can see. How amazing is that? Absolutely beautiful. Um, made as a series of quarter units. Foundation paper piece. So really easy and achievable. Don't be put off thinking, wow, I couldn't begin to start cutting templates for that. You don't have to. It's all foundation pieced. And then an appliqued circle over the middle. So if you've ever fancied making something that's a little bit more out there, um, I think this is stunning. Now, of what, sorry? Henna. Henna. Yes, henna. Of course it is. It's called henna. <laughs> this is 39 inches square. The kit's 109.99. You get 17 fat quarters of fabric in there. That's a brilliant price. 109.99. Again, two split pays. 54.99 is all you need to pay to get 17 fat quarters from Beth's New Range and the Sunbeams quilt pattern. It's stunning. Absolutely stunning quilt. Really beautiful, that. Be a great project to work on over the winter. Couldn't resist coming over and showing those to you. They really are beautiful. Uh, lots of you now putting those into your baskets. Well done, you. Doesn't that look stunning as maybe like a table cover? Now then, let's talk about what goes inside a quilt. Now, I always call it batting. Lots of people call it wadding. I think I remember once being, being told off. <laughs> I was teaching on a quilting cruise and I was told off by somebody for calling it wadding. Um, she said to me, wadding is you, if you wad something, you screw it up and throw it away. So I've never called it wadding since. I always call it quilt batting. But um, it's the stuff that goes inside a quilt that makes it snugly and warm. I'll open it up. Because what's inside this bag is what you would pay 6 99 for. OK, uh, details are on the screen. You're getting half a metre of 244 centimetre. So we know that's 108 inches wide. Um, quilt batting. This is... A big piece of batting. So even if you want to make things like cushions, half a metre, brilliant. Uh, if you want to do a wall hanging, so if you were doing the, um, is it Starburst? Sunbeams. If you were doing the Sunbeams quilt, which is 39 inches square, you'd want a metre of this uh, would, would do that. Maximum distance for quilting is 20 centimetres. In inches, that is six. You should always find out the inches first, I think, because I always work in inches, and a lot of quilters do. 7.8 inches. So in other words, if you'd got, um, you know, like a 20-inch block, say, for example, you need to make sure that you've got lines of quilting every seven inches or so. So, for example, in a 20 inch square, you might have a line here, a line here, one there and one there. And that is physically enough stitching to hold everything together so that your quilt batting won't migrate or sort of sag inside. Of course, you can quilt it much more closely than that if you want to. Um, and usually uh, on, on uh, quilt battings, they usually say the maximum distance and also the kind of maximum, you know, the closeness that you can go maybe up to a quarter of an inch together as well. 
Anyway, so this is 80-20. It's my favourite blend for quilting. 80% uh, cotton, 20% polyester. It's our most popular quilt bat. Uh, it's one you can buy by the half metre. So again, multiple units will get one piece. If you're going for king size, so up to that would work with your extra wide batting, then um, three metres is going to give you enough for up to about 108, 110 inches uh, in depth. It's absolutely lovely. It's a really nice drapeable batting. This is what I like about 8020. It's quite thin. So if you're a hand quilter, great. If you're machine quilting on your sewing machine, um, this doesn't create loads of extra bulk to try and get through your sewing machine. So it's quite easy to then sort of roll up for when you need to get to the center of your quilt, okay, for, for machine quilting. Uh, if you're a long arm quilter, this is gonna work perfectly well with a long arm quilting machine as well. Um, if you're in the mood for some long arm action, of course, don't forget at 12 o'clock, 10 minutes, it's not long to wait. We're gonna have the guys from Pinhole Quilting here and the handy quilter Moxie. The Moxie's brand new this year and it's a long arm quilting machine that really will fit into the modern home um, and bring long arming into the reach of quilters all over uh, the UK. Love it. Uh, so this is our 80-20 mix. It's our most popular batting here. It's only 6 99 for a half metre. It's a beautiful, drapey, nice and thin, but still really suitable for things like wall hangings. <coughs> I use this in bags as well, placemats, table runners, anything like that at all, really. And of course, if you want to create extra depth in your quilting, then do as many, many long armors do. Double up your batting. So it's thin enough that you could do a double layer and what I would do if I was going to double layer this is I would 505 it together before I load it on the um, long arm. Uh, but I would still uh, 505 it together and then layer it as one extra bat. And because you've got two layers then, any quilting that you do is going to create much more relief, make it really, really stand out. So you get much more depth in your quilting. And it's I suppose what we would call like a winter weight quilt as well. So if you do this on a whole quilt, you'll get a much heavier quilt and one that's really good for sort of really severe cold as well. Now we also do pre-packaged 80-20 bat. You want to go for this one first. This is a Hobbs. Uh, although I don't know, that's not 8020, is it? That's cotton. Oh no, it is 8020. Yep. So this is the king size. Yeah, <laughs> this is the king size Hobbs heirloom uh, premium cotton batting. So this is again is an 8020, 37.99. This is 120 inches square. So this actually is wider than buying it by the half meter so if you do want to make something that's bigger than 108 inches or rather like a hundred inch wide quilt top you still want a bit extra about two or three inches extra either side with your batting for for cutting off later so if you want wider than that then go for this this is a king size heirloom 80 20 mix 37.99 pre-packaged again these are great stash builders yeah, I have these in my studio so that if I, uh, you know, have a quilt top and I need a batting for it, I haven't got to start ordering it um, or buying one in. Also, if you have your quilts long armed, um, many long armors, you can supply your own quilt batting. Um, I think we all prefer to get a pre-packed one um, so that we know it's the right size. We know what we're doing with it. Uh, if you want to use something like 505, quilt basting spray to hold your layers together with this, you absolutely can. Um, and it's also completely suitable for hand quilting as well. So when you get, uh, where it says needles wonderfully, that's what that means. It means for hand sewing, that's needling, uh, absolutely perfect. It, what it's talking about is there's no lumps of fibre in there, there's no uh, like cotton seeds or anything like that or debris. And also you're not gonna find lumps of 
kind of the, the, the resin, the glue that holds the fibres together. Really lovely quality, beautiful. We've got another pre-packed here. Uh, this is the So Simple uh, 8020 again. This is a queen size. So this is 228 by 274 centimetres, which is 90 by 108. That is the standard size for a queen size quilt. Very, very close to selling out this one, 44.99. We're always reordering this in. It's such a popular batting. I've used this many, many times. So simple bat, it's lovely. Now, I'm just gonna have a little move around on my table because here I've got a couple of wool bats. Uh, these are from Hobbs again. Two different sizes. We've got the king size, which is 120 inches square. We've also got the queen size, which is 90 by 108 inches. So um, we'll have a look first of all at the um, king size. Now, um, this is a pure washable wool, 100% washable wool. So in terms of being able to launder your quilts, absolutely no problem at all. Um, now, here's, a, here's a, the big question. Why would we use wool? And why isn't wool batting used more? Why is it always cotton batting? And I think one of the biggest reasons why we tend to use cotton batting is because most of our bats come from America. This one comes from America too. But um, America got in there and started producing quilt battings and America produced a lot of cotton and cotton batting is a beautiful bat for quilts, for clothing, for wall hangings. It's absolutely gorgeous. But actually, um, for our uh, climate, damp, uh, <laughs> damp climate uh, in the UK, a wool bat is in many ways superior to cotton. Wool is naturally flame resistant and fire resistant. It is naturally hypoallergenic. It's naturally um, antimicrobial, antibacterial. It's, it naturally repels uh, moisture. So, you know, all of these things make it a very, very superior batting for British weather, actually. Um, it does very well on sheeps. Sheeps. <laughs> it does very well on sheep, doesn't it? And it's actually taking those qualities of why it's so good on a sheep. And it's just applying them. You know, it repels moisture. Um, it is warm in winter and it is cool in summer. Uh, beautiful. Um, what I would recommend when you're using a wool bat is I would 505 it, but I would also pin through it as well for extra security because those fibres do have more capacity to slide over each other within the bat itself. Okay, so where cotton uh, battings are needle punched and they use this, what's called scrim to hold those layers together. You don't get that in a wool bat. So the fibres can slide more. So uh, 505 at T fabric, so it holds really nicely to the fabrics, but then also pin through just in strategic places throughout your quilt before you start quilting it. it has a wonderful loft as well. Gosh, it's been a fun hour finding out about the insides and the backsides of quilts. <laughs> it's important stuff. It's important stuff. It ain't glamorous, but it's important stuff. It's been all about the quilt sandwich and what could be more appropriate on National Sandwich Day. Um, it's almost 12 o'clock. I'm ready for my sandwich. I'm just going to put it out there. Um, one won't come. But coming up after the break, we've got two hours with pinhole quilting and long arm quilting with Moxie. I cannot wait. See you then. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. 
Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet. Then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere. Browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Hi, I'm Claire from Native Lighting. I set up Native Lighting 18 months ago when I realised there was a real lack of craft lights in the market that were high quality, affordable and modern. Not only do Native Lighting lamps give you the perfect lighting for your craft, but they also look amazing in your home as well. I started to train as a florist when I was much younger and it made me realise how you need the light on all the different colours when you're trying to match the colours with the flowers and that's what's really important with your crafting as well. I've been in the lighting industry for 10 years and worked in many different sectors but my heart always lies with crafting. I think that also comes from my time of training as a florist when I just used to love working with all the flowers and the colours and how different they could look in different colours of light. My top advice would be when you're thinking about buying a light, you need to think about where you're actually going to be doing your work. We've got lots of different types of lamps. We've got floor lamps, we've got magnifiers, we've got portable lamps, and we've got desk lamps. If you're sitting in a sofa or a chair, I'd suggest that you use one of our floor lamps. If you're working with intricate details, then have a look at one of our magnifiers. We've got three different types here. We've got our seven inch one, we've got our four and a half inch one, and then we've got a desk version here as well. All of those magnifiers have all three different color settings, including the really important daylight for your color matching. And they've all got brightness settings on them as well. If you work with a sewing machine, our Lumina lamps are absolutely amazing because you can bend and wrap them around the sewing machine, which is brilliant for when you're working on a sewing machine and you can get that light exactly where you need it. If you do Facebook Lives or you like to um, do video tutorials for people or you're doing teaching online, then our ring light is amazing for that because you can obviously use that, put your mobile phone in there and also that we've got a remote control which will operate that for you. You may have a cutting table or a wide area that you need to light up then I'd suggest you go with our, our task lamp here, which gives you a really wide spread of light. If you're on the move when you're working, then we've got a selection here of portable lamps. We've got our reverse lamp, our zigzag lamp, and our LED desk lamp. These are rechargeable, so it means that you can charge them up and then you can take them with you and you've still got light when you're on the move. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our website, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! 
know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Hello, I'm Jane Greenoff and I'm stood in the barn here at Pink's Barn in Gloucestershire, England, which is where I live with my husband and I stitch. I, st I think I stitch in my sleep um, I've certainly been stitching for over 30 years now and by stitching I'm talking about counted cross stitch or counted embroidery in general terms. I also collect old samplers and I've got one to show you here. Now if this smashing, it was actually stitched in 1796 by a little girl of eight or nine and it's absolutely charming. So I collect antiques, I love to draw and create antiques for the future and look forward to seeing you all on Sewing Street sometime in the future. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street fans and Yarn Lane TV fans on Facebook and click join group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Hi, I'm Rebecca Harrison. I live in Bromyard in Herefordshire with my three children and my dog. Um, I've been sewing for uh, over 30 years. Um, I first started um, at school. Um, we always did lots of sewing and my mum used to sew at home as well. So that's where my love of sewing has come from. 
My background is in costume, as I'm sure you can see. Um, and I, I make for film and theatre and TV. I've worked on films such as Titanic, Shakespeare in Love, Evita, James Bond, um, and theatre work. I've done things like Mary Poppins, Guys and Dolls, Prince of Egypt. Um, I've also worked for the Royal Opera House and the Royal Ballet. Um, when I worked at Angels, I was lucky enough to meet lots of film stars. They're all uh, walking around the building and in fittings. Um, and some of the people that I bumped into and met were Sir Richard Attenborough, um, Hugh Grant, Imelda Staunton, Juliette Binoche, um, and I even got in the lift with Christopher Lee. Um, and that's where I met the lovely John Scott, which obviously you all know. Um, I'm really pleased to be joining Sewing Street. I can't wait to see you all. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com alternatively you can message us on our official facebook page welcome to sewing street i have been excited for this show for weeks, absolutely for weeks, ever since we booked it in. This hour, and in fact for the next two hours, if you can join us on tablet, on Facebook, on Sky, we're going right up till two o'clock, is all about the handy quilter Moxie. This is all about bringing long arm quilting into our homes, into the reach of any quilter just think about how your quilting journey could soar. We're on the runway, we are ready to take off. Now the bundle that we've got for you today is incredible. It's the Moxie, which is brand new this year from Handy Quilter in the UK, um, our package. Now I'm gonna go through the details with you straight away. The price on this package is £5,495. Now I know this is a considered purchase but when you start to look at what you're getting and how achievable this is, how realistic this is for our domestic homes, I know you're going to want to stay tuned in for this. So let's have a look and see what you're getting in the bundle. You're getting your Moxie long arm quilting machine which has 15 inch throat space you're getting the frame that it goes on eight foot wide frame but you're also getting this incredible bundle that goes with it that includes so many of the extras that you might ever want the ruler base for doing ruler work and straight line quilting absolutely essential you're getting the sure foot mine stays on my long arm all the time I almost never take it off is incredible you're getting the micro foot is it micro foot yes yeah micro foot echo foot you're getting different kinds of rulers a, ru a wave a wiggle a ditch ruler a matchstick ruler you're getting the handy grip you're getting glide thread you're getting a filled bobbin box you're getting some incredible full line stencils no more bridges in stencils what are they even they're not a thing anymore we have full <laughs> line stencils you're not having to imagine where the line went you can just follow it you're getting a quilt pounce my goodness me if i could have a fiver for every time i've said oh where can i buy a quilt pounce from when i've been at workshop showing them my goodness me, uh, you're getting that included in the bundle. You're getting a one day foundation training course. You're supported here by Pinhole Quilting. You're getting gift box with 
mini scissors, a zinger, I love my zinger, a bag, you're getting surge protector, pen and torch, worth £244 that bundle, thrown in, mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say, yeah. thrown in with that incredibly affordable £5,495, we've got five split pays of £1,099, this is all about taking your creativity, your quilting journey, your sewing journey to the stratosphere. This is absolutely, it's every quilter's dream, I think. Every time I post a picture on my social yes. media where I'm long arm quilting, uh, I get messages about this is the dream, this is what I want, yeah. how could I can't fit a long arm into my home. Uh, trust me, now you can. This is going to be such an exciting show, so stay tuned. There are already bundles in baskets. Um, this is the moment you've been waiting for, and the price you've been waiting for, the bundle and the machine that you've been waiting for. And this is from Handy Quilter. Let's start by meeting Liz. Okay. Liz from Hoping from Pinhole Quilting. Liz, yes. we're all Hi, friends. Stuart. Yes. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm really well, Stuart. How are you? <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm so I excited was, to do this yeah, hour. Absolutely. No, yeah. We are too. Yeah, Pete and, and I. To bring the joy of long arm quilting mm. into the reach yes. of domestic quilters. Yes. We were, we were absolutely thrilled when the Moxie came out. So it only came out this year. It's a 2021 machine. Um, it's the second time it's been on Sewing Street. So, you know, this is a great opportunity because you know, it was really well received the first time it came on, on, on the show. Yeah. Um, so and we know lots great. of you... Uh, been taking some time to think about whether a long arm is right for yeah. you and whether the moxie is right for you this is a great opportunity yeah. to get into the game of long arm quilting yes. uh, I mean the price is incredible yes uh, it's absolutely directed at the first time long arm quilter this is an introductory machine in so many ways but actually it'll take you a long way on your long arm journey yeah I mean the kind it's of work really... that you can produce oh it's amazing um, in fact, one of our quilters who had her moxie just in April, the, her, her, her second quilt is just behind you. We've got her first quilt her first here quilt on, on the, the desk. Table. And, and it just shows how far you can go with, yeah. with a moxie in a very short space of time. And we'll have a look at some of her work later. Absolutely incredible. Um, but it's really, it's really beautiful because I think, you know, out of the box, and Handy Quilter really thought about those first time long arms. You know, it's quite intimidating to kind of think, long arm quilting i think most people when they think of long arm quilting they might have a preconceived notion of what that means agreed and it might be that it's unaffordable it's not something for me right you know i'm i'm a domestic quilter yes and actually that's not really the case um if no. you've been quilting for a long time i think we have maybe some met some of those customers who think that that is not for them absolutely but this machine is yeah it and so, so is let's think about that again let's you know let's look at the moxie yeah. and see if that can fit in your home if it's the machine for you and we'll break down what long arm quilting is what you can achieve but i think mm. it's really worth having a look and seeing actually i mean what are we talking about yes. here and this is really about free motion machine quilting um just incredible have a look this is a customer's first quilt that she quilted using her moxie it's her first quilt and she really treated this quilt as a sampler of different techniques different kinds of quilting over here we've got some lovely pebbles and some little echoed shells this is just beautiful here love all of this and so if you've ever tried doing free motion quilting on your domestic sewing machine, I think most people I've ever spoken to have talked about the pain of it, of wrestling their quilt and moving their quilt around under their sewing machine and trying to cram everything through the fairly narrow space and how to achieve these wonderful patterns. And what long arming does is it... Well, I think the best analogy is how we write, isn't mm. it? Yes. Liz, tell us, tell us the analogy. Yes, so the analogy is that when we're writing, we're actually moving a pen over a piece of paper. And that makes a lot of sense to most people. Yep. This is easy. You know, we're writing a pen and we're moving it over a fixed piece of paper. Yep. But if you try and hold a pen yep. fixed and move the paper, 
it's actually really, really difficult to write, even your signature. Even write your own name. Yes, even write your own name. Exactly. Um, on one of the videos I've got on our YouTube channel, I actually show that, how hard it is. And most people get that analogy. You try and do a domestic machine where you're moving your quilt under your fixed fixed um, needle and it's really really difficult yeah so, absolutely yeah. and that and and that's you know a piece of paper that isn't going to shift move wrinkle yeah. tuck um, exactly. seams move or any yeah. of that business so of course there are a lot and also the sheer weight of a quilt whereas with long arming what you do is you're loading your quilt top you're backing your batting onto rollers you're not having to 505 Here or pin go. based or anything else you've got your layers I mean setup is so fast I quilted two quilts two days ago yes. one in the morning then went home for a cooked lunch Liz <laughs> had a cooked lunch and then made up a cushion. Yes. <laughs> okay. Then I went back to my studio and I quilted another quilt in the afternoon. Yeah. Literally from set up, quilting. I was home at half past four. Mm -hmm. I'd actually said to Charlie, could you cook dinner because I'll be busy quilting. Yeah. And in the end, we cooked it together because I was home and Fantastic. I was done. Amazing. Um, and that's what this that's is about, isn't it? Exactly. And it's the enjoyment of doing it as well because... You know, so many times when people are trying with a, a, a relatively small machine, obviously, you know, my, my the first time I realised how hard it was to use a domestic machine, six and seven eighths, I measured my free arm on my existing machine, was when I tried to do a big double bed quilt, wool wadding, flannel back, you know, like a, a yeah, brush cotton so back. all the layers. All the layers. <laughs> the centre, I'd done a beautiful feathered wreath and this was a log cabin, and I'd spent ages, I spent a year, piecing this one inch strip log cabin wow. with a Jacob's coat border. Mm -hmm. I was very happy with it. And uh, 12 inch blocks, it's a bit big. It's on our bed now, but it went away for 15 years. 15 years it went away because I did that feathered wreath in the center. Yep. And I mean, I, it needed to come with a free massage session, quite frankly, yeah. because it was, it was like wrestling something. Yeah. And I just didn't want to wreck the, the quilt. And no. I know that that's where a lot of our customers have ended up coming for a demonstration after that because they've been in a similar situation. It's really mm. hard work and you feel like you're going to, to you know, spoil your piecing. Absolutely. It's fear, isn't it? it of, is. of ruining all that hard work, yeah. all that time and love and energy and money that you've spent making your beautiful quilt top. Exactly, exactly. But the, the joy of long arming is that you're... All of your layers, your quilt, is held together yeah. almost kind of rigid, if you like, like mm. the piece of paper on the table that isn't shifting and moving around. And you're, you know, writing your signature, you're moving the pen over the surface that isn't fighting yes. with you, isn't fighting against gravity, is held still. Um, which suddenly, I mean, I see this time and time again at shows, Liz, and I'm sure you do too. People that would normally like sort of shy away, just come up, grab the handlebars, yep. and away they go. Yes. It's instant, it's isn't it? It's instant. Not only quilters, I think the youngest was two and a half years old, held a you know, babe in arms mm -hmm. at, at, at Alexandra Palace, moving the quilting frame you know brilliant absolutely fantastic it's so good to see yeah. supervised obviously obviously <laughs> obviously health and safety yeah now one thing i one message i want to get out there now we talked at the start i talked at the start about this being achievable and and possible for domestic quilter in their own home so i think it's a really good idea to talk about space right yes. now because yes. the number one thing i get from, from people who dearly love a long arm quilting machine is, yeah. I have not got the room for it. Mm -hmm. This is the most achievable, yes. isn't it, that you could it, possibly have? It Let's really talk is. sizes. Yes, it really is. And in fact, you know, when Pete and I were discussing the, the, the package that we've put together for the Sewing Street customers um, here, we, we thought about you know, what, what package we should put together. We focused really on free motion quilting but also incorporating stencils that can be used from the front. Yes. So that we don't have the quilting from the back. Mm -hmm. We don't need to utilize the back of the machine. So that means that we, our space requirements just need to have access from the front. 
Um, so these are our minimum space because yeah. of course it is possible isn't it to yeah. buy the table so you can quilt from the back using a paper pantograph Correct. you can get the laser yes. light to add on yeah. but this is but all about this... getting it in your home get your quilting yeah. right from the get-go in the smallest possible That's space right. so yeah yes absolutely so the the minimum working space working from the front the depth you need is five foot two my height well if five I'm foot standing, two. Yeah, just about. I don't want to be rude here, Liz, but that's small. That's <laughs> yeah. quite. That's not a lot of space. Listen, good things come in small packages, Stuart. You know <laughs> they that. They do. Yeah. Um, and the, you told me that often. Yeah, enough. I know. I just—it's a mantra. I just keep saying it to myself. Um, and it, with this eight-foot loft frame, uh, this is—we brought in. Um, as you know, it's, this is a, a six-foot one, but the eight-foot one was, is the one that we, you would get. Uh, you need eight foot eight to be able to walk around. Um, a minimum working space. I mean, the recommended working space that we suggest is seven foot six, yep. so that you can actually, you know, go to the side here, etc. Um, and these are all dimensions that you'll find on the Sewing Street website. Yeah. So. But this is really, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking in terms of furniture. There we go. This is a little bit more than a double bed. Yes, exactly. Just a little bit more yeah. than a double bed, which, um, you know, guest bedroom, double. I, I, you know, I always say to people when, they, when we're talking about, do I have space? You know, do you have a, do you have a guest bedroom that you use yeah. twice a year? Yes. Put them in a hotel, <laughs> frankly. Put them in a hotel. You could be quilting 365 days a year on your moxie yes. and on your frame. Um, yes. I mean, Who we, needs a double bed? We, and we do have those conversations with, with people about the... I mean, we have this as well. The child that comes back yes. many times. You know, but how often do they, do they come back? And, yeah. You know, Yes. We do have a hammock that fits underneath. I mean, <laughs> no, no, actually, it's just for wadding. I should say it's just for yeah, wadding. It's, yeah. not, it's not to be used it's for It's not to be used to actually child. sleep in. No, no, it's not. no. You won't be sleeping with no. your moxie, long no, arm. No, You'll be exactly. long arming. Um, so, so, actually, the space requirements it's, it's five foot two. Five foot two from depth. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. length, we want eight foot. Yeah, eight foot eight eight. Foot eight. eight foot eight. Eight foot eight. Mm. So we're getting an eight foot frame. So we mm. need those eight inches just yeah. so we can get down one side. Well, it's just so that you can get access here. Yeah, so just can, a little bit, yeah. ac a bit of access right. to the to the right yeah. hand side. But that wouldn't enable you to, to go around it. The, no. The recommended working space yep. is the next column, uh, two columns over on that table, okay. which. Uh, yeah, is, it says nine so foot eight. So if we can go back to that table, just to have another little look there. There you go. So, so those are our minimum sizes to actually fit um, your moxie and your eight foot frame. Remember that Liz is working on a six foot frame here in the studio just because of space restrictions, but you're gonna have an eight foot frame. You also have the option of adding a two, two inch, a two, two foot. foot extra to that frame for a 10 foot. That would give you a maximum size to work on of a hundred inches. There's an extra cost obviously for that. With your eight foot frame, your widest quilt that you can work on would be 76 inches wide. Mm. The length is kind of not, you know, immaterial because it's however long you want your quilt to be, pretty Correct. much. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've never quilted a quilt that was too long to go on my frame. Uh, and then you've got your um, minimum working space. So you would want eight foot eight on your length, six foot four on your width. So we're really talking about a small bedroom here, aren't we? It's, absolutely. I, the moxie is really going to fit in in many of our UK homes, which was another requirement that we were really pleased it ticked the box. Can I also say actually about the length thing is that la the week before last we had a quilt-a-thon at Pinhole mm -hmm. Quilting. Mm -hmm. It was the quilts for care leavers. I saw that. So, it looked yeah. amazing. Oh, it was incredible. We did 69 quilts in two days. <laughs> there you go. This is what you can yeah. achieve on a I long know. arm, isn't it? It's unbelievable. Yeah. And one of, our, one of our quilters was working on the moxie and we had half a bolt. So it was a 10 meter bolt. We had half a bolt. That's five meters mm -hmm. of fabric. And she quilted that amount. She just kept going, she adding kept going. another top. The end of this, so this is the take up rail, this, this one here. So if I do it from here, you can actually see, I think, from here. Um, that was absolute chock a block. Mm -hmm. It was resting on what we call the idler bar. This mm -hmm. is the, this bolt bar here. It was resting on it. I've got, actually got a picture on our blog post. 
it is that thick with Amazing. all the wadding. Mm -hmm. So we could just keep going. Yeah. And in the end, in the end, she was having to, when she rolled it on, it was squeezing. <laughs> so you could just shows you could just make it even, not even a bed size, just keep going. Yeah. And then, so she rolled on quilt after quilt after quilt. Keeping and the certainly same backing. something I do, yeah. If so, I've got something like, if I'm making yeah. two quilts, like for right. twin beds, something like that, I'll yes. do double, double, double yes. and backing, quilt the first one and then roll it straight on, do the second Brilliant. one, because you actually save wadding and That's backing it. fabric by doing that. You do. And you're just kind of in the zone as well. You are in the zone. Yeah, in just zone, amazing the I mean zone. what you can achieve with a long arm yeah. and and you know I think up to the, the last couple of years long arm quilting is very much hasn't it it's been something that people yeah. are either you know they're professionals or you send your quilt to a long armor yeah. the idea of having a long arm quilting machine in mm. our home mm -hmm. where we can actually quilt our quilts has yeah. been out of reach for a long time hasn't yeah, it it has but it's changed so what changed I think the changing the change has been partly education. Availability of YouTube with the education has helped a lot. We, I suppose, in many ways, what we've done in terms of us as pinhole quilting. I mean, we started uh, in 2017, and what we've got with our 1500 square foot showroom is done a lot more education and training. Yeah. And education is a big part of this. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't just sell boxes. You know, what what we do is when you get this, you get your foundation training as well. Uh, when you get a moxie it is self-assembly but it comes with the as an app shows you how to build it as all the youtube videos that come with handy quilters mm. but then you can come to our showroom we show you how basically it's a, it's a very very full day mm. i mean we should we bring sandwiches i'm no. sorry folks I lunch is included lunch is included but you know it's national sandwich day oh is it yeah so we've I been talking about sandwiches slash quilt sandwiches all morning oh. I, I beg to diff uh, I beg to, to, to just uh, sidestep for a second. Okay. Sorry, lunch well, provided. I'm there. Yeah, absolutely. Lunch provided. We had lovely um, lunch actually, um, Stuart, because Pete did pulled pork yesterday. Oh, slow roasted stop in it. the oven. Yum. Beautiful. He's a very good cook. But you get that education yeah, day. Yeah, we get the education day, and there is then the option of in more training and education. So last week mm. we had. Linda Jackson, who is our Handy Quilter Ambassador, now she's an award-winning mm -hmm. um, educator and trainer. Yeah. She won Best in World at the World Quilt Show. at um, which Best is in the world? Best in the world. And she quilts on a Handy Quilter. She does. She has. Yeah. She actually has three. Yeah, there she you qu go. She quilted the Best in World Silver Linings quilt, which we had at our showroom. It was, I was very sad to see it go. Mm. It was like a Linda Jackson retrospective with Silver Linings, the one she won at Harrogate in 2019. Which one? It was like a small hall for, a, you know, some country house hotel, mm -hmm. sort of silverware that had been sort of taken because she won so many awards with that quilt as well. Silver Amazing. Linings, though, won Best in World, and she taught for four days whole cloth quilt yeah. design. Yeah, and so that's a really high level course, but it was available to all of our handy quilter mm. owners. Amazing. So the handy quilter owners got taught to learn from a really high level. But you, we start right at the beginning yeah. for our foundation training. And I, I think machines. this is the magic of free motion quilting. Because yes. um, I think for a lot of people, when we think of long arm quilting, we think of pantograph all over, yes. edge to edge design all over a quilt. Yeah. And actually at its heart, what a, a long arm quilting machine is actually doing is it is free motion quilting yeah so that's what it's designed to do free motion quilting yes either mm -hmm. hand guided or following a paper pantograph what we call a pantograph mm -hmm. isn't it which is a, a sort of a strip of paper with a design on or it's um computerized now this is all hand guided but we can do that edge to edge yes we can do blocks we can do individual motifs, mm. make it up as we go along. We yep. can also do ruler work. Correct. So all of these all things of are possible. So exactly the same things that Linda is creating on her handy quilter, mm. everything from outline quilting, in the ditch, cross hatching, yeah. vermicelli, feathers, you name exactly. it, is all achievable. Absolutely. And the lady who did this, Carol Watson, her yeah. first quilt, her second quilt, mm -hmm. she came on Linda's class last week 
and achieve fabulous feathers. So in six months, she's gone from this to this. You should have seen the work she did last week. Because actually, as, as, so as with anything, with, with free motion quilting on your sewing machine, the key is practice. Precisely. But whatever you practice, with free motion quilting on a domestic sewing machine, you will never conquer the um, fight against gravity. You will never conquer True. the fact that you're trying to get your 100 inch square quilt through a six or seven inch throat space. Yeah. Um, you'll never conquer the fact that you're having to move the paper under the pen. Long arming takes all of those weird things, those mm -hmm. struggles out of the equation. And now the only bit that you've got to concentrate on is the motor skills to draw right. those designs, which are more like drawing with a pen on a piece of paper. Now you yes. might think, I can't draw. What do we say to those people, Liz? That's why we've got this package. Shall we go through Let's do that. what you get with the Moxie? Shall yeah. we go through the package yeah. and what you get? Let's and do then that. we can do some demonstrations to show you how it all helps. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, Absolutely. great. Let's start with the Moxie, shall we? Because that box under there that says, You've got this. Mm -hmm. That this one? one yes. Let's start with that. Okay. If you turn that round and open it. Yep. Open the box. Oh, I say, I'm doing it, it, out it. Of the out of the box experience. You are. There we go. If you look at that first thing there, what yep. does that say? That tells you what's in the box. Okay, so we've got everything in here. So we've got our quick start guide, how to quilt kit. Mm -hmm. De decals. I love a decal. Yeah, I know. I, I'm a real sicker person. So the second, the in those sort of big bits of paper there. Mm -hmm. The last one there. Look. Oh, I say. <gasps> so we can add some fun stitch like a boss. I love that free motion. I fabulous. Do. And these can go on your Moxie Fabulous. or on your notebook books. So then in here, what sort of things have we got in here? So in there is your thread pack. There's some sample threads. Mm -hmm. The bobbin case is pre-loaded with yep. thread. Right. So you can literally pop it in here. Yep. In fact, I'm going to take that because okay. guess what? Go on. I'm just going to pop it in. I'm just going to pop it in. I'm going to pop it we in are here. all sanitised, by the way. We were... I've got it right here. We were covering Actually, ourselves can you pass earlier me the blue on. One, please? I can. Just that one. Yep. Thank so you've you. got your bobbin case yep. there. You're getting different kinds of feet as well, aren't you? You do. The standard foot and also an open toe foot. Yep. That comes with the machine. Which I've got right here. Yeah. Now the open toe foot obviously gives you nice visibility when you want to do more detailed work. Mm -hmm. And we also are giving you another foot as well. Well, we'll go into that in a second. Mm -hmm. This is the standard stuff. So we've yep. got an oiler, we've got 20 needles. Yep. So, that, I mean, it's a new needle for a new project. Yep. Standard needles. Is it? No, I'm joking. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> you take that, don't you? Uh, you've got uh, the, the tools there to change the needle and to adjust the bobbin tension. Yep. To change the feet. And also you've got um, some other bits and pieces cleaning it, obviously keeping your, your moxie nice and tidy. So yeah. you've got a brush in there. But and it's the same as looking after a sewing machine, isn't it? Yeah. You know, for those of you at home thinking, oh gosh, now that looks like a really, really complex piece of kit, um, uh, you know, uh, and that kind of makes you nervous. The truth of the matter is that the sewing machine part of it is, is actually a lot simpler than a domestic sewing machine, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because it just sews straight stitch. It does. In fact, I didn't really sort of, we hadn't really got onto that aspect of it. But if, if you look at this part of the machine, mm. this has got no feed dogs. No. It's completely flat. Yeah. It does, it has, when people are doing a demonstration, they quite often want to put the presser foot mechanism down. Yeah, of course. There's no presser foot mechanism. The tension on this is permanently engaged. Mm -hmm. So actually, when you pull down on the thread, it's actually quite strong, that tension. Yes, yes. Because there is nothing there to engage the tension disc. They are always on. Mm -hmm. So it is, and you're absolutely right. I mean, Pete and I and our other service engineers who are spread around the country, when you take these machines apart to service them, they are relatively straightforward. Yeah. There's no complex elements inside, like a, what we call a swing needle machine. Right. They're so, more akin to 
an old fashioned sewing old machine fashioned in some ways, you. aren't they? And even they the way that you thread it and the little the little thing on mm. the side that you put the thread through three times, that's like an old sewing machine, it isn't is. it? On many in many ways. People who are familiar with old singers yeah. quite often remark, Oh, it's like my mother's yes, old exactly, singer. Yes, exactly, exactly. It has that kind of um, build as well you know where you think oh this is really yes. solid this is all metal this is designed to last this is designed exactly. to use day in day yes. out year yeah. after year that's what you're getting that's right and the, you know the other thing to remark on I've just taken that it's one bigger out. than the one that goes in my sewing machine at home oh, when I go back to my domestic I kind of think oh is that, the, is is that, that all that bobbins all that I get I know exactly it runs out so quickly these um, on the the moxie uses exactly the same bobbins as uh, used on my I've got a handy quilter as well of course um, I'm not unbiased by the way when it comes to handy <laughs> quilter I am very I'm going to be open and honest about that I've been using my uh, handy uh, quilter yeah. for about seven years it's now I think years, yes. and I you know it's an every week I absolutely love it and they use what are called M class bobbins um, which is what this is right here my long arm uses it your moxie will use it too um, you get a lot more thread you do. <laughs> don't you, do. you? And yes. also, I always use um, like a um, bobbin fill weight yes. of thread, like a finer a fine thread. One. So you get a massive amount of thread mm. on there. Yeah. I mean, I quilted a 60 inch square quilt yeah. the other day um, and used one bobbin. Yeah. Well, in fact, I didn't finish the bobbin yeah, it's on that. Brilliant, isn't it? That was lush, quilting a whole quilt in about less than two hours yes. with no bobbin change. Yes. Hurrah. I know. I, I must admit, I did leave the same needle in all day. Yeah, you can. I mean, we we do the same with our showroom machines. So you yeah. can actually hear it. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, if you're only using that one machine and you know that it's a sixty by yeah. sixty, it, you would use two on a you know a, a big king size probably. Exactly. So it's, exactly. it's it's a relative thing. I think of it more almost like a day's quilting. Yes. I change I my so. needle or yeah. six to eight hours, like I would with a domestic yeah, needle, yeah, really. I, I think so too. But yeah, yeah, you know, uh, the bobbin case looks very familiar. Um, if we've got a front loading bobbin. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the bobbin itself looks very familiar, although it's much larger. So these things are the same. Mm. You know, in terms of like threading up your machine and getting it ready to sew, can I put that away? Is that, have yeah, you done with that? Right. Yeah. Um, it, it, really, it's like, I think of it like this. When I got my very first sewing machine, mm -hmm. threading it and putting the bobbin in seemed like half a day's work. Right. It wasn't, <laughs> yeah, no. but it was completely new, completely alien, now you could blindfold me and I could thread my sewing machine right. up. Yes. So if you're thinking, oh, that seems so out of my comfort zone, it must be really different. Yes, it is different. The, mm. the first few times you do it, it will feel like the first yeah. time you got your sewing machine. But think about what it's like now when you could do it blindfolded or looking the other way. Yeah. It's, it's easy. It becomes very, it, it's, it's a driving the car type yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Those, uh, that clutch gear change manoeuvre was yeah. very alien and then those elements that become repetitive yeah. become second nature. Yeah. It's the same with this, definitely. So, so straightforward, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And, the, and the setup is the same. And so if you've admired long arm machines, we had a lovely message earlier on watching and drooling one day. Well, <laughs> I think, you know, right now, £5,495. is amazing, is. amazing price. Mm. Um, this is an eight foot frame. But remember, you only need the space basically that would be taken up by a double bed plus being able to get round it. There are the sizes that you need for the eight foot frame. Uh, working space to work from the front, you need eight foot eight by five foot two. That's the working space you need to be able to quilt quilts. 76 up to 76 inches wide and whatever length you like now if you wanted to go bigger than that and wanted to be able to quilt up to a hundred inch wide quilts by whatever length then you'd need the add-on so you'd go for the 10 foot frame and um, so that's an extra cost to, to that um, and then you would need a working space of 10 foot 8 by again still only 5 foot 2 uh, it's incredible it brings mm. the moxie into the reach, long arm quilting into the reach of, of most of us. Yes. 
Let's see it in action. Yes, let's do that. Let's see it in action. And then action. what I'll do is I'll we'll do it, see it in action, and then we'll go through some of these little extras and things Ace. that we've got here. Yeah. So I'm just going to bring up the bobbin, okay? Um, which I can do by needle up, needle down, needle up. Um, also, I'm just going to put the side tension on here. two fingers to oh, move the machine. It's really effortless this this machine. And Liz really. won't mind me saying, you know, you're not a you're not a big built no, woman, I'm you know. Not, no strength not, required here. I'm not a, a, you can also a quilt seated, can't you? Oh yes, did we bring the um Yeah, it's right behind oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> it's behind Where's your you? saddle? Where's my we're horse? Yeah, we're nearly in pantomime season, Stuart. Oh, it's behind you. You don't need to tell me that. <laughs> What will you be dressing as? You'll be one of the pantomime dames, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> do you know, it's on my to-do list. Is I've it? always oh, wanted to do a panto. Oh, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. Where, yeah. where Pete comes from in uh, Gloucestershire, apparently they had, at the village hall every year, they would have the pantomime. Yeah, wouldn't yeah. Wouldn't that be great, being a village where they have Yeah, that? well, obviously I'm from Gloucestershire as well. Oh, yeah. It wasn't the same village hall. Yeah. I did a pantomime in the Roses Theatre in Tewkesbury when really? I was 11. Yeah. But... No, Hannah, producer Hannah, I did not do it on my own and my mum booked out the whole theatre. <laughs> it ran for a full How week rude. and we did matinee and How evening rude. performance every day. It was fab. I loved yeah. it. We did Cinderella. I was in the Cinderella. chorus. Cinders. Oh. You were in the chorus? I was oh, the chorus. You were the chorus. I was the chorus. <laughs> I was so, all the king's men. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, here we go. If you want to sit then. down when you quilt so, yes. and look at this. Yeah, actually, I'm just going to lock the... Um, we have this on wheels, but actually um, the standard is to have feet, and I have a foot with me mm -hmm. to show if anybody would like to see that. I'll get that in a minute. Um, so I'm just going to lock those because it was about to move yeah, away from me. This would be the incredible moving machine. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to show some of the things you can do. So I am sitting down now, and one-handed, just getting very, very confident with it. And swirls. Oh, yeah. That's what we like. Yes, the saddle stools are really good for um, where well, people have got a, a problem, obviously, standing for any length of time, or they think that if you get a frame, it has to be... Stand, stand up, um, but I'll just. Uh, and you I will stand up. And if you wanted to do very detailed quilting on one block or in a border, or maybe you're going round a plique, again, I would sit down for that so that you can really focus on one area. Yeah, there's another thing. Um, one of the accessories we got here, which is called the micro foot, uh, which is a, a lovely little foot. It actually, when it first came out, I thought, whether well, you want to have a look at that mm, one. Mm. Um, the microfoot, I thought it looks like someone's just broken the foot. <laughs> now, it does. You'll see. It's actually brilliant for doing really intensive scribble. Yeah, because it's almost the kind of unguarded needle, isn't it? Is. it? Almost. Almost. Yeah, which Fantastic. I don't know how they're getting on, but I know if, a couple of years ago Schmetz brought out a free motion quilting needle mm, which had did. a spring on it that's which right. literally you don't have the foot yes. so that you get full visibility yes, and you'd do right. the same with that wouldn't yes, you yes. yeah really cool that yeah. so you're getting that included yes fabulous and uh, I've got a sample over there which uh, I can show you uh, well I'll just do a little bit more demo and then um, we'll show... don't forget that extra package that Liz is talking about with those feet with the threads with the rulers the full line stencils more than 200 pounds worth of value has been included for free so if I just get the samples and then we can Liz, go can through. I just, ask, yeah. I, I just want to break this down because I know, I, I mean, I did, I had all of my notes on the package and everything else, but I still had to question that you're getting the frame and the machine. Yes. Because yes. that's amazing and it seems too good to be true. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, well, let's just, let's just run through it because it is. It's the machine, yeah. it's the frame, it's yeah. the bobbin winder. Yeah. Okay. Which I've got on the table you in front get, of me here. You get the five, no, six stencils. 
Yeah. And the quilt pounce. Yeah. You get the ruler base. Okay. Couldn't be without my ruler base. This no, is what this you is use fantastic. We're going to use stabilize the space under your quilt when you're using a ruler. Mm -hmm. Amazing. We're going to use that in the second hour. Well, you get the sure foot to use with it, which is essential because it really protects yep. your needle and also your machine. Because That's like your ruler foot, isn't your it? Ruler you foot. might be familiar with that if you've used maybe like yeah. pars or something like that, rulers. Uh, you get the echo foot, which actually extends the use of the rulers. Yeah. Now, it can transform things like wave rulers. I'm going to show you how we use mm -hmm. that in the second hour. Yep. The echo feet really do change the use of, of, of waves. And you get handy grip, which is here, mm -hmm. which you put on the underside of rulers. Here's your oh, rulers. okay, to make them more grippy. Correct. Got you. Perfect. Now, the ruler's fantastic. Ha uh, the ditch ruler, absolutely brilliant, obviously for quilting in the ditch. And yeah. I've got an example of, of that just here. In a, so if, and, or just even if you wanted to do like sort of short straight lines, so it short, might be echoing lines. around um, yes. a pieced I'll block that you, you want straight lines going around or quilting in the ditch as well. Correct. I mean, this, remember, with your long arm, this isn't... On our domestic sewing machine, this is not slavishly trying to follow that line and then having to turn a king size quilt no. every time you need to change direction around a two inch square. This is being able to put the ruler down, pulling that long arm along the ruler, okay, moving the ruler, pulling it across, moving the ruler up, moving the ruler across. And then we're on to the next one. It's uh, yeah. just mind blowing, actually, exactly. when you do it. It's a, it's a completely different way of doing things. Totally. The freedom that you get with a long arm when you're standing up and using ruler works, ruler uh, work is just totally different. Yeah. Here's some really lovely rulers. We've got the wiggle wave. We've got the F, and matchstick quilting for those people who love the intense look of a modern quilt. Yeah. I've got an example here. Yeah. So here, oh, I'll go through. So those stencils that you've got underneath. Yeah, so you're getting those included. Yeah, all of those included. Now, when we get in the second, it'll be the second hour now, I think, mm. these stencils, you won't believe how good these are. Amazing. The, the technology is brilliant, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's fantastic. Because what you'll see here, this is the, a grid, remember, of course, on the diagonal is cross hatching, mm -hmm. or it could be about marking your quilt to then quilt something yeah. regular um yeah. amazing but no bridges no. so there's no gaps in your stencil when you pounce over the top of this when you apply your chalk pounce you're getting the full line absolutely it's incredible absolutely amazing you're getting so many different stencils as well yes these are really really clever yep. really clever and you get a lovely collection of thread yep. colors may vary Bobbin thread, you were talking yep. about that fine bobbin thread that you use where you didn't have to change your bobbin for your 60 by 60 quilt. This is that kind of bobbin thread. Mm -hmm. and Brilliant. And they're so full. These yes. are like the bobbins that go on forever. They are. Yeah. The endless bobbin. Yeah. Everyone wants an endless bobbin. That's my Christmas wish every year. Yeah. My bobbin always be full. Could we, could we have a different type of bobbin that meant that you never had to replace oh. it? Wouldn't that be nice? You get Surely. zinger and scissors. Zinger and scissors. The zinger is what you kind of wear this on your lapel and there's like a yeah, pulley just... elastic thing here so that you've always got your scissors handy. Brilliant stuff. You get a little handy quilter, little light. Oh, I say. Yeah, if that's handy for looking into the bobbin area. Yeah, or if you need to... Or in the dark. Point this to somebody and yeah. say, tell me everything you know. Ooh, I'll, I'll tell you everything anyway. Halloween. <laughs> And of course, a handy pen. pen. Gorgeous, love it. Okay, and you get well, not the reason why I would buy the handy quilter, but you know, it's still nice to have it. And you get a fabric pack yep. to get you going. So, so this is some tops and backing, some wadding, so you can get yep. straight on the machine exactly. and start quilting. Exactly. Amazing. So we will obviously get stitching with some of these things, but I, what I did was I just ran up the sample of some of these yep. things. How do you want to do that? Do you want to bring that, yeah. I bring that over there? Yeah, you can, can do. We can see it from where you are as well. Oh, can? What do you prefer? With me, yep. Yeah. So let's just talk through those then. I'll lay this down. Yeah. So starting from that end, yeah. Stuart. Um, oh, one of my favourites, ribbon candy quilting. Yeah. And so figure of eight. If I 
I can, I've got the, these open, so it's Look probably easier. Look at these easier. amazing designs. So that's, well, that's just oh. using that for ref. So that's for reference, that yep. top one. And then just make up the ribbon candy. So just literally for reference and placement. Yep. Bit just of ribbon candy. It gives you a little bit of a frame, doesn't it? Exactly. So that you can evenly space your designs out. Very, very useful, this. This one here, just to be able to put registration points on a block to say that now I'm going to bring out or feathers. Yes. Or whatever design I might make. Feathers great, that. Great. So that's the first one. This is the... Um, this one she call, they call the uh, Wild Swirls. Wild Swirls. This is amazing. So this really gives you the look of the pantograph. Mm -hmm. Of course, not having to follow a paper pattern or use a laser light or anything like that, you're going to actually pounce that design. And what we mean by a pounce, it's a, it's a chalk-filled box. So it's special, though. I've got one right here. Okay, and this has got like a special chalk powder in it. And literally all you do, Liz will show us in the next hour of course, but you swipe that, wipe it over the surface of the stencil. And when you take it away, you've got perfect clear lines, unbroken lines on your quilt. And then you're just going to follow those lines. And of course, because long arming is like you know, drawing with a pen or tracing. We can all trace a line, can't we? If we've got a pen in our hand and a line, we could trace that. This is achievable, okay? And your your Moxie is stitch regulated, right? Yeah, stitch so regulated. don't be looking at this thinking, oh no, when I do free motion quilting, I've got some stitches which are that long and some stitches which are that long and most of them are somewhere ghastly in between. Don't panic. Your long arm, your moxie, regulates so it speeds up or slows down the motors mm -hmm. depending on how fast you're moving the machine to keep your stitches the same length. So you set the yeah. stitch length, don't That's you? That's right. In your machine, you say, I want 12 stitches per, per inch. inch or 14 stitches exactly. per inch. Depending on the thread. And then away you go. Yeah. And that's what you produce. So if you've always wanted to achieve perfectly even stitch length on your quilting, no matter whether you're vermicelli, ribbon candy, doing this amazing all over design or quilting feathers, you can do it from day one. Yes, that's this right. Is the, this, this is bit it. That's amazing. It's from day one. Now this I love. I love, I love this one. Let me show Pike's you the quilting. Right. Okay, this ramp down here in the centre, that is tiger unbelievable. Tiger stripes. Tiger stripes. I, love, I love the way it kind of shimmers on screen. Mm. <laughs> That's more about technology. Yeah. This is the stencil. This is the stencil. Yeah, so you've got two stroking. sizes. Amazing. So you've got two different sizes yeah. there, depending on the scale, or you could mix and match, I'm sure. You've even got like little registration marks uh, so that you can line it up for your next row. And literally marking this, you're not tracing with a pen through slots no. in a stencil. You're wiping a pounce across it once, and then the lines are there, and they are full lines. And those quilt pounce markings, yeah. they come off with an iron. Yeah, they come off with an iron, or, or you, you can, can use the um, clothes brush thing. You just brush them off. Just brush them off, yeah. so we can, but we'll demo that. If you've ever used like chalk pencil, on a quilt. I mean, I'll tell you a quick yeah, story. Sure. Um, the very first quilt I did a big free motion quilt. It was a double Irish chain, oh, wow. and I had marked all of the individual blocks yeah. with this quite elaborate stencil, and I'd had to, you know, draw through everything. Did the whole yeah. thing in 24 hour. I say this loudly: 24 hour marking pen that would disappear after 24, 24 hours. hours because I was going to quilt this whole thing. You know, the blocks in it. By the time I had finished marking <laughs> all of the designs, and there were about 15 or something, the first one was gone. Yeah. And then literally as I looked in <laughs> horror, I watched all the others disappear yeah. before I stitched the first one. 
If you've ever used chalk, you'll know that by the time you have free motion and gone round, you've yeah. knocked all the markings off yeah, everything yeah. else and probably the block you're working on. Your quilt isn't moving. You're not wrestling with it. You're not hands all over it. You're That's not right. even touching it. You're gliding with two fingers, gliding the machine. <laughs> you don't have to only use two fingers. You can use both hands, and I do. <laughs> over the surface, yes. the marks are there. That's right. You can use um, a little bit of hairspray, just holds it, just grabs the chalk. Ooh, yes. Like the that. cheaper the better. <laughs> I go. apply that to most things, most things. if I'm <laughs> being perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah. Now we have only got two minutes left on this hour and then Sewing Street on Channel 72 will end. Okay, But if you can go over onto Sky and the channel is 670, or watch on your tablet or on Facebook or on your computer. You can carry on watching us for another hour and we're going to have loads more demos, Lots aren't we? It's going to be very demo-rich demo yeah, demo the second rich. hour. Yes. Um, well done to those of you who've already gone for this. Uh, well done, you. Brilliant. This is the ultimate, ultimate package. Um, uh, we are already down to single figures on the oh. Moxie, Liz, Fantastic. amazing. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Well done you if you've already got yours. Uh, super, super package. I'm gonna be going through the menu in just a second, but don't forget we are carrying on for an extra hour on Sky and on Facebook uh, and online. So do stay with us for an hour of demos. Now let's go through the menu for tomorrow. So to start off, kicking off at 8 a.m., we've got Native Lighting. At 9 a.m., it's Home Sweet Gnome Table Runner with Dawn Taylor. At 10 a.m., it's Cross Stitch Guild at Christmas with Jane Greenoff, one of my favourite guests. At 11 a.m., it's Sid the Scarecrow with Dawn Taylor. And then at 12 p.m., Jane Greenoff is back with the Cross Stitch Guild. What a wonderful morning. Now, I'm going to stay right here. And everyone that's staying, we've got time for a cuppa. Uh, we've got so many amazing demos to watch and also we'll really go through what you're getting in the package. We've also got loads of questions that are all lined up. Email them in at uh, sewingstreet.com, studio at sewingstreet.com in fact, and we will answer as many questions as we possibly can. Liz, our expert, will answer as many questions and if you want questions from a long armour uh, or answers from a long armour then I will answer your questions too from somebody who's you know just a long arm user um, and absolutely has loved it for the last seven years uh, absolutely wonderful so don't go anywhere apart from over onto Sky or over onto your tablet or computer and we'll see you after the break. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Claire from Native Lighting. I set up Native Lighting 18 months ago when I realised there was a real lack of craft lights in the market that were high quality, affordable and modern. Not only do native lighting lamps give you the perfect lighting for your craft, but they also look amazing in your home as well. I started to train as a florist when I was much younger and it re made me realise how you need the light on all the different colours when you're trying to match the colours with the flowers and that's what's really important with your crafting as well. I've been in the lighting industry for 10 years and worked in many different sectors but my heart always lies with crafting. I think that also comes from my time of training as a florist when I just used to love working with all the flowers and the colours and how different they could look in different colours of light. My top advice would be when you're thinking about buying a light, you need to think about where you're actually going to be doing your work. 
We've got lots of different types of lamps. We've got floor lamps, we've got magnifiers, we've got portable lamps, and we've got desk lamps. If you're sitting in a sofa or a chair, I'd suggest that you use one of our floor lamps. If you're working with intricate details, then have a look at one of our magnifiers. We've got three different types here. We've got our seven inch one, we've got our four and a half inch one, and then we've got a desk version here as well. All of those magnifiers have all three different color settings, including the really important daylight for your color matching, and they've all got brightness settings on them as well. If you work with a sewing machine, our Lumina lamps are absolutely amazing because you can bend and wrap them around the sewing machine, which is brilliant for when you're working on a sewing machine and you can get that light exactly where you need it. If you do Facebook Lives or you like to um, do video tutorials for people or you're doing teaching online, then our ring light is amazing for that because you can obviously use that, put your mobile phone in there and also that we've got a remote control which will operate that for you. You may have a cutting table or a wide area that you need to light up. Then I'd suggest you go with our, our task lamp here which gives you a really wide spread of light. If you're on the move when you're working, then we've got a selection here of portable lamps. We've got our reverse lamp, our zigzag lamp, and our LED desk lamp. These are rechargeable, so it means that you can charge them up and then you can take them with you and you've still got light when you're on the move. Welcome to this bonus hour of Sewing Street. We've got so much to share with you that finishing at one o'clock was not an option. We're going through till two. This hour is all about the Handy Quilter Moxie. We've got owner and expert Liz Holpin here from Pinhole Quilting. And I'm a handy quilter ambassador and a long arm quilter of seven years experience. So if you've got, now really important, if you've got any questions at all that you want to ask about long arm quilting in general, the moxie in particular, sizes, how you're going to fit this in, questions about setup, anything at all, this is the hour to ask because you've got Liz who's the expert from Pinhole Quilting, uh, super, so I can't tell you the amount of experience Liz has got and the understanding, and is also a quilter, fundamentally a quilter of many, many years. I'm also a long armour of seven years experience, so we'll answer your questions. Just studio at sewingstreet.com, uh, email us and we will answer those questions. We've got your questions lined up already. Now what we're looking at in this hour is the Moxie bundle, the Handy Quilter Moxie 15 inch long arm quilter exclusive bundle. You're already saving £244 and that's based on all of those extras that you're getting. Ruler base, different kinds of feet, rulers, thread, stencils, quilt pounds, the whole package there. But what's fundamental to this deal is you're getting the Moxie long arm quilting machine that has a 15 inch throat space. You're also getting the frame. Now the frame itself is eight foot long. It's five foot wide. Yes. There about you. Uh, yeah, it's a, actually it's about 40, 41 inches wide. 41 yeah. inches wide, cool. Yeah. You need five foot yeah. two space to fit that frame, but you're getting that metal frame, okay, that your Moxie sits on, okay? Yeah. So you don't need a table. This is not table mounted. It's not on top of something. It's on the frame, which comes included in your price. I know, I questioned it. I thought £5,495, that's the price of this, the long arm quilting machine. Because I tell you, I was at Festival of Quilts mm -hmm. in the summer and I was looking at different like tabletop frames because I like to stay ahead of, mm. you know, the curve and what's available for quilters, little kind of that you moved the quilt around and snapped it on. But actually in order to get use out of it, you needed to buy a five in a 15 inch throat space machine. And the ones I was looking at were eight or nine thousand pounds yes, right. for a 15 inch throat space machine um, right and, and and i 
And I just accepted that as, okay, yeah. well, I know what my long arm cost. Mm. And so, yeah, okay, that sounds about right. So when I came in and we're doing a package that's £5,495, I thought, okay, so that's the machine. And then we need to start adding a frame and that's a separate. But it's not. It's the frame, eight foot frame. Liz is working on a six foot frame because that fits in our studio. Yours is two foot longer. An eight foot frame. The machine itself, the Moxie machine, Liz doesn't come, but you do get a day's training and access to so community, uh, weekly Facebook lives, yeah, we do that training every courses that you can sign up for, yeah. I mean, wonderful support. Then you're also you're getting your frame, you're getting your uh, machine, you're getting your bobbin winder. We never talk about this, but the bobbin winder comes, it's a separate machine. Um, it's a, it's a very robust, heavy-duty machine, and that comes with the Moxie all the way through up to our biggest machine. Exactly. My, it's the same. Yeah. My long arm yeah. came with this, and mine's now eight years old, I'm yeah. still using it, winding thousands yeah, yeah. of boppers. Yes. Um, you know, I, I often wonder what people going past my studio must think when I'm standing there, just kind of looking down. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just like bobbin. to watch the bobbin <laughs> fill. Yeah. Um, you get, and then you're getting this package of rulers and threads and quilt pounds and sure. stencils and all sorts of other feet and extras. Those £224, I think, mm -hmm. thrown in for free. Mm -hmm. uh, amazing, amazing deal this. I've never, ever seen a long arm quilt, complete long arm quilting bundle, frame, machine, everything for less than five and a half thousand no. pounds no we, now we yeah we it, didn't we this is this year 2021 is the first year we've offered such an incredible deal amazing it amazing is. this is why it's never been so achievable so affordable to to get into the long arm game it's just incredible um, we didn't do split pays at all before yeah We've done them, but not five. So five split pays, a thousand and ninety-nine pounds is all you need to pay to get your moxie, your frame, everything else home. Yeah. You'll have it set up. There's a wonderful app called the Built App, mm -hmm. um, which I've got on my little tablet here. We'll have a look at this as well, which goes through how to build the frame. But if you're unsure about things like that, have a quick nip on to YouTube. You can yeah. find loads of videos of people setting up their frames. They're not mechanics, they're quilters. That's right. Yeah, it's not a complicated yeah. business, it's really is not. it? And with it's the built app, it's, it's, you can actually rotate it and have a look at the underneath. And if you're you know, unsure about how to do anything, that built app is excellent. Yeah, really cool. Just Good. you can download it onto a phone, yeah. you can download it onto it's a tablet. Android, it's Apple, whatever. Perfect, great. So you're getting so much support here. Uh, it's an incredible opportunity to get into long arm quilting. And even though there are bigger frames and more mm. complex machine. Actually, the quilts that win awards are free motion long arm quilted. Mm. Yeah. And that's what the Moxie does. That's right. Free arm, uh, f uh, free motion uh, quilting. Yeah. Except that instead of wrestling with a quilt sandwich held together with safety pins under your domestic sewing machine and wondering why you bothered, you've got your whole quilt set up and it takes minutes doesn't mm -hmm. it to set up a quilt from ready to yes. quilt so should we talk about that? let's do it let's do it because yeah. i can talk about how we load it and i've got the feet here and i can demonstrate the four line stencils and how we get this, that all on here as well i think that'll be fun to do next agree so great okay so <laughs> here we go we're watching you les oh, okay <laughs> all eyes on me well, I hate walking on camera because it always, I thought, ooh, ooh. You hate walking? Really what I look from, like, from oh, the yeah. side. Oh, yeah, Pete keeps saying, my, yeah, your shirt is riding up. So, yeah. Is no, it? it's the least of my worries. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just talk about the frame, first of all, because it's very important. One of the big things that people really don't like doing is kneeling on the floor, basting their quilt, right? Ugh, so ugh. that's that is not a, that is not the highlight of the quilting experience, is it? And actually, Liz, so, those, those frames that you can get where you have to move the quilt around or a lot of yeah. the ones, you, ha you still have to baste your quilt together. You haven't right. cut that step. With your moxie, with your frame, 
Here we that go. you're getting. Yeah. You put your quilt onto rollers. You're not you basting it together yeah. at all. Exactly. So it comes with these cloth leaders. Okay, these are these these uh, twill that we've got here is called a cloth leader, and it's a four rail system. Again, very important. Not all quilt frames are the same. No. Four rails. Go for four rails. Always have four rails. Otherwise, you're having to adjust the sides, and it's it's complex. The the fourth rail is called the idler bar, the lazy bar. Don't do nothing. No, but it don't does. do nothing. Don't do nothing. But it does, exactly. There is a reason. Like a good Italian recipe, there's always a reason for things, okay? <laughs> it's not a, a Yota Mosolenghi. This okay. is a reason. Okay, that was, sorry, that was my little dig it. It was a little bit more intelligent than I could keep <laughs> up with, I'm afraid. <laughs> <but>. Okay, <laughs> there is a reason for everything. It keeps it all level. No yeah. matter how big the quilt sandwich grows onto your take-up rail, which is this oh, one sure. here. Oh, sure, I get that. Yeah, yeah, now. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense, right? So this gets very, very large here, but it doesn't affect the free arm because even when we get it massive up here, this always stays the same So we keep regardless. a flat surface for flat, quilting. always flat. And that front, that belly bar... Yeah. ..with that cloth leader, what's that for? Yeah, so this is for the quilt top. Now, ordinarily, we would have this actually attached but on, in this case, for this particular demonstration, I've actually got it what's called floating. floating. Mm -hmm. Now, floating is an option. Uh, we do do it quite a lot, but when you're, be when you're beginning and when you're starting out on your long arm journey, quite often we actually do recommend you pin it. Yeah, and, and loading it is as simple, if you're wondering at home, as pinning the one edge of your quilt top to that leader cloth, mm -hmm. just with big pins, you just pin straight across, takes you about three minutes <laughs> yeah. to, pin, to pin the top. That's to right. Front. And then you roll the bar, so it ends up like, you know, like a roll of carpet. That's your quilt top loaded. And the benefit of doing that over having a floating quilt top is that you've kept the sides level and as you're quilting, nothing's drifting off to the side. You can have a bit of drift, can't you, if it floats? You can. Um, so why well, you need a little bit more experience. But you load it, you literally roll it. That's me rolling. <laughs> roll it onto the front bar. Um, so that's the top loaded. Yes. Next bar behind yeah, that. Next bar behind it. Oh, and by the way, if you go, if you, you know those stickers that we had yes. earlier? Yes. Did you, this box. Oh, yeah. The stickers, one of the two of the stickers have on them. Backing. Backing. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Backing. backing. And quilt top. And quilt top. You can label these rails. But frankly, after the first go, you'll know what they're for. Know. You might not quilt again for another few months. And you might forget. So they're permanently. Never forget. <laughs> People do. People <laughs> do. Yeah. They do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it will be on here. You put it on the rail. Yeah, okay. fair enough. Good. And there are two different ways that you can have this when you set it up, actually. Yeah, because on my long arm, the belly bar is for the backing. Correct. Rather than the top. That's right. So, um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Old school. Your old school. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a new option for you, by the way. Yes, then. we'll do so that. So, we will. And the this method is the preferred method now. It means that you actually, when you're doing rulers, you've got a nice flat surface here. Um, it's, it's, it's much easier, which is a recommended method. So this is why we have the backing, and you can put the little sticker. Mm -hmm. This has the backing, which is our grey fabric. And there you can see it there. So yeah. again, exactly the same principle. You pin it to the leader cloth, mm -hmm. just pin the edge, and then roll the, the, the pole to roll the fabric on. All you have to do as you're rolling it up is make sure that the sides stay straight. And if they start drifting off, you just smooth it out with your hands and keep them level. And once the whole thing's rolled up, that's the backing loaded. That's it. So pinned, rolled on, pinned to the top. We have a method of doing that. YouTube shows you beautifully how to do it. Yeah. Since we launched this and we've had all these customers who've got the Moxie, do you know how many calls we've had on loading? Go on. Zero. None. <laughs> because it's so easy. Yeah. Well, because the YouTube videos show you how to do it. Yeah. Now, we've run foundation workshops that reiterate it, but again, none of those customers have actually said in that uh, foundation workshop, we've not had to rerun 
how to do it. We, you know, we ask, are you happy with it? Yeah, and yeah we're happy with it. Yeah. Can we go on and do the other stuff that we want Absolutely. to learn about? Absolutely. So it's brilliant in that respect. We can focus on the things that they don't know about that we but can help on. But the thing is, on. layering a quilt is such a, hear me out quilters, I'm sure you'll agree, loading a, or, or layering a quilt and pinning it together is such a pain point yeah, of making a quilt. Is there anybody that enjoys doing that? I mean, Charlie and I used to make a bit of a game out of putting, you know, the 500 safety pins into yeah. the top. And we, you know, we try and make it fun. But you can always tell when it's not a job you really want to do. When you but have to do that. Whereas, seriously, anybody can load a quilt backing yeah. and top and be ready to quilt. In 20 minutes, in half an hour. I mean, it depends on the size of the quilt, of course. A bigger quilt it does. takes slightly longer to pin. There's more. But, I mean, it just takes minutes. It does. And then you're ready to quilt. And one, one of the things I like to do is do it the night before. I do the same. Right. It's a process. Whereas when I'm doing my quilting, I'm in more of a creative frame. Yeah. And I like to choose the thread. I like to get the selection of threads out. Yeah. I like to have that sort of more, crea yeah, that more creative. I do process. the same. I'll be working in the studio, and then yeah. before I go home, I think, okay, I've got twenty minutes left. Nice. I load my quilt, yeah. and then I can go in the following morning, hit and the ground running. I possibly even I've chosen the design, like you say, That's chosen it. the threads, Lovely. wound a few bobbins up, yeah. and literally in the morning, let's Away get go. going. Exactly. It's it's a lovely way place to yeah. be, isn't it? So I thought we'd just look at the tiger stripe because, you know, I loved doing this. Mm. Absolutely loved it. Is that okay? We do this oh, one first. Oh, do it. Yeah, Because I really love the pounce chalk. And I've got an iron down here, actually. I didn't tell anybody I'd put this on. I haven't put it on yet, but I'm just going to put it's this right. on because... Wouldn't be Sewing Street if we didn't have an iron on, Liz. Yeah. Health and safety <laughs> have covered this, of course. And it's in Handy Quilter Purple as well. So I'm just going to lay this on top of the fabric. I've just tightened my backing fabric. So again, this is totally different to how we'd normally apply markings or a stencil. We'd do that to the quilt top and mm -hmm. then we'd start layering it up and pinning and all that sort of thing. Here yeah. we've got our quilt top ready to quilt. You might have already quilted certain areas and have that alternate space, yeah, that block mm. that you want to add a design to and you're going to pounce it on. Yeah. So let me just explain about quilt pounce then. It comes in uh, you've got the original packet there yeah. haven't you so you've seen it comes in like a little box it actually comes separate and it's not loaded it comes in um, a little with white powder in a packet which you put into the reservoir here do not be stingy about how much you put into the reservoir no you really mustn't be easy to get that powder yeah we've got refills and white blue yellow pink yeah we recommend mainly the white white yeah um even on relatively pale fabric you can see the white yeah we have now got blue mm -hmm. and you can mix it with the white to make what we call barely blue mm -hmm. which is good on very very pale yes but you can't then iron it off got you. and you must pretest. yeah because the blues brush off it is yeah okay and We've be very question. cautious We've got oh, a yeah? question is our first question We've oh, lots good. of questions yeah Ah, there were other questions, but we've answered as we went along. That's good. Okay, yeah, Pete's out there, so. So Marjorie's asked the question, can you mark the quilt once it's on the frame? Absolutely. Absolutely. And whatever your preferred Lots method. Liz is showing you how to pounce using a full line stencil. You could still get out your friction pen and, and draw something on freehand or through a stencil. That. You could use Do that. You I've can got, use a chalk wheel. I've got lots. Chalk pencil. Chalk pencil. That was a thick chalk pencil. We got a fine chalk pencil. It's like so. You you choose your tool. Yeah, absolutely. Choose your and, and and it's much much better to do that when the quilt's loaded. So absolutely, yes, you can. Yes. So you can change your mind as you go, and you could think, well, I was going to free motion that bit, but I think actually, you know, a nice feathered wreath would look nice there. So you can you can do that. It's nice to be improv, I think. I think definitely, this is you know the best thing. Speaking as an educator, the best thing about Lama is the way it frees people up from the mundane and horrific struggle of it all, where you totally lose any thoughts of creativity mm. and lose the pleasure where you just think, oh, let's just get this thing done the quickest way I can and move on with my life. <laughs> and now all those things are taken out. So now all we can concentrate on is pure pleasure, pure creativity. So then you start thinking, what would I do in an ideal world? If I yes. wasn't having to fight, if I wasn't struggling, if I wasn't doing something totally alien, 
what would I do? And mm. that's what long arm quilting is all about. Yeah. Now we have another question about okay. noise. Oh, noise. Now the okay. question is, what's the sort of noise level like? Who is this from, by the way? Do we have a... Maria asked. Maria. You know, how does the noise of a Moxie compare with a sewing machine? If this is in a uh, you know, spare bedroom and I want to stay up doing some long arm quilting, mm -hmm. the rest of the family have gone to bed, uh, how does it compare? Yeah, um, it's not that much different from a normal sewing machine, no. I would say. Um, in fact, C Carol, who is the lady who did these two quilts, she uh, is in a semi and she was concerned about her neighbour because Carol yeah. is in exactly that situation insofar as she was worried about her neighbour who has an adjoining bedroom. Yeah. And she said she checked with her because Carol does stay up late and quilts and everything. Mm. And she said her neighbour doesn't hear it at all. No. She said, but she does have a wardrobe on the adjoining thing and she said she doesn't hear it. So yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's an, in, an issue at all. Yeah. Um, if people have got uh, perhaps a floor and it's you know, and there's somebody in the room below. You might hear it, I guess. Yeah. So you do have to think. But you'd about hear a sewing machine. You would hear a sewing that. machine. But I mean, yeah. I, it might sound a little louder than it does realistically in here because we're right next to them with microphones, and of course it's mm. picking that up. But yes. I would say the, the 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 noise level. I would say is about the same as when I'm sewing on yeah. a domestic sewing machine. Yes. Um, I mean, obviously, some of the bigger machines might be. Um, noisier but the mm. Moxie is a 15 inch sewing machine and so you know there are other domestic machines which are probably not much different motors yeah. so I don't think there's we've never had any issues no so pounce Liz pounce pounce I'm gonna pounce, pounce. so wipe it over that's it you don't pounce it you wipe it okay and I'm gonna take this away and voila look at that Amazing. Look at it. That it's scent great. is whiter because it's kind of been gone over twice. But look at those marks. They're absolutely and then so perfect. You and can easy line it see. up with the reference line. So there's this little target, and you line that up. Put it like that, and line that up with the other one target. I would I would put some reference lines. For yeah. Some, and I'm doing it on black. Well, you'd be doing say, it on, on your a, quilt. You've actually got your piecing lines yeah, exactly, generally, haven't you? Exactly. So I'm just going to do this like this. What's that? Beautiful. Amazing. Yeah, and that's perfectly and lined that up. Would be, and then I would do my next one like here or something. Like that. Yeah. There you go. Superb. So that is pounce. And just to demo while I've got the iron on, because I'm going to turn it off, but I'm just going to get rid yep. of some of this just to show you how it goes away. Like that. I and want then to I'm going to stitch. Quilting. I know, I'm going to do the quilting, but I just want to show while. Then I can turn this iron off. No, I, can I want to do some quilting. Ladies. Oh, you want to do some quilting? You can come and do some quilting now. Some How about that? Oh, not in the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anybody, Stuart. <laughs> <Shh>. <laughs> This is how you get started, by the way. Right. It's very similar to Are you ready? a sewing machine, isn't it? Shall I get you started? Yeah. Don't tell anybody about the carpet. What, so I have to follow your beautiful work? <laughs> I've got it set on what's called cruise or continuous, okay, which basically means it's going to stitch 11 stitches per inch and then there we go, coming over. Okay, I'm just going to hand know, start, sanitize. Stop. Oh yeah, I should have done that too. For some reason our hand sanitizer smells like gravy. Gravy? I don't know if that's a thing. You get them, don't you? They're like pine fresh or Christmas scented citrus, but ours smells of gravy. Right, there's your So let's stop. start yep. her and, then move and it. away we go. And you can see from where I started. Oh, I'm freestyling slightly. Is that okay? That's okay. It's just, it's just a guide, Stuart. It's just a guide. You hear a beeping. It's because I'm going too fast. Yeah, you're used to a faster machine. I am a little bit. Nice. I've kind Isn't of gone over. Oh, it's design. so easy to use. It's so easy to use. Loving it. It's so effective, this design as well. Oh, it's lovely. Sorry, I've gone completely off of the pattern, but 
I'm not really sorry. No, sorry, not sorry. Just going to stop it there. Yeah, fantastic. Just so you can see. I mean, really, really, Brilliant. it's so easy. Now, obviously, I've, I've long arm quilted before. I've done some long arm before, but it, literally, it's just like drawing back and forth. Keep your elbows tucked in. That's it. <laughs> Show how carefully I've gone over the line. <laughs> I can't do that because I'm a creative person. But, oh. you know, if you want to follow lines, thank you, Liz. This nobody, is just removing the, the lines. Nobody will see the original. Well, that's the point, isn't it? I've said it enough times there you to... Go. That white thread there. Get bobbin. rid of it. It's a bobbin thread. Just move the machine to one side as well, please. Yeah, I'm just going to take that up that, so yeah. that you can see oh, yes, the right. overhead show will show exactly go. how brilliant your stitching is, Stuart. Well, it's not really, but, you know, it's it's you, my stitches are regulated. How about there that? we go. How about it's that? Bad. It's good enough, isn't it? Fantastic. Lovely. Lovely I've got job. Got a question from Kelly. Question: Are you able to download designs and the Moxie quilt them by itself? That Thanks, is a Kelly. great question. This is a great you question. You know what happened this week? Do you know what happened this week? Tell me what happened this week, Liz. There's a new announcement that's just come out this week mm -hmm. that in the future, and we will have our own copy of it this um, coming up in, a, in the next month, Pro Stitcher Lite will be available as of February, which is the computerised version for the Moxie. Great. That's amazing. Yes. So Pro Stitcher, so if you've ever watched any of my videos on my um uh, social media, you'll see me using what's called a pro stitcher on my long arm, which looks like a tablet. It looks very much like this on the front of my machine, and I set the dimensions of my quilt and the design, and they're downloaded, and then the machine will quilt itself. Now, your Moxie at the moment is purely hand guided. Okay, so it's all about your creativity, free motion quilting, using stencils, um, drawing designs on, and following. But in this year, it, we can demo it this year. Right, but we're, it'll be actually coming out um, in the UK. In f we have the date as February. February of next year. February of next year, and that can be retrofit. Correct to your Moxie. So your Moxie that you're getting now for five thousand four hundred ninety-five pounds. Come February, there will be a computerised add-on to your machine, which means yeah. that you can stand back and watch your machine quilt. So if you want to do, and I think. The best application of that is when you use both. Yes, some free I totally motion agree. and some computerized yes. together. Fantastic. Um, and so, price, if I buy this today, yes, that can be added on. That doesn't mean That's if right. I buy it now, I'm not going to be able to have it in the future. And how it will look. So, if you go like at Houston last week, two days ago, on the Handy Quilter YouTube. Don't tease me with Houston. I know. I wanted oh, to no, be there. Oh no, I wanted to be there yeah. too. Um, oh, it's so sad, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, it has a tablet, so it's a 10 inch tablet, right. and it will sit up here. You get 250 designs, you add on to this carriage, and price wise, it's, it'll be between 5250 and 55. Five. We, we're yep. just uh, getting the fi price finalised, yep. but that, in that sort of ballpark. Yeah. So the adding the computerised element or mm -hmm. self, self uh, uh, guiding element. Basically doubles the price, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yes, it's exactly. Same again. You see that, so yeah. I think this is a good thing, actually, that you're getting an opportunity now to make that first investment. Yes. Very likely to be your only investment because you've got your frame, you've got your moxie, you've got rulers, feet, everything else that goes with it, a ruler base, you name it. But then if you want to, come February or next year or the year after, mm -hmm. if you want to use that computerised function, it allows you then, you'll have, you'll have made all your paints yeah. on your moxie and your frame. You'll then be able to invest further in your mm -hmm. long arm quilting and, in, and add that in. So it's, yeah. it's very near, it's, it's just a great, around the corner. That's right. It's, just a, it's a great investment in the future. So. Yeah. And the Pro Stitcher light, if, you, if you're interested in that, I mean, if you can actually see, Pro Stitcher already is the most fantastic program. I teach people how to use Pro Stitcher now, and it really has some incredible functionality. The lovely thing is that they've taken that same functionality. The only restriction really is actually the number of designs that you get. Mm. 
the actual use of it is very, very similar. Can you download more? Yeah, Does it and take you can, a stick and oh, a yeah, yeah, stick? Oh, yeah, exactly the same. So the real difference is, is that you just, if you want to buy more designs online, then there's Quiltable, there's Wasatch Quilting, there's the ones that you know Intelligent about. Quilter. Intelligent Quilter. All of those people. Who, or you can design your own. Yeah. If oh, you can. In, you can design your own yeah. and you can edit and take, or you could take embroidery designs and edit them in um, a digitizing program Fantastic. like uh, Pro Stitcher Designer. So, so this is getting in... I mean, I don't want to say at the ground level because this is absolutely the not step. at the ground level. It's this, the first step. Well, I would say this is a first step in professional in, long arm yeah, quilting. Yeah, exactly. Because, because there are... Because is a professional yeah, outfit in terms of long arm quilting. There have been options for years, haven't there, to like mount your sewing machine on yes. something and then you've got about, you know, three inches of throat space to pull back and forth. And, you know, it's never been something that I've actively promoted because I just haven't seen... The, the possibilities, whereas the Moxie mm. is about bringing those same professional long arm quilting possibilities and results into the hands of any quilter. Yes. Okay, shall I show you Ruda work? Yes, please. Okay, let me show you also how we move on. So say we've quilted that section and we want to move the quilt on. Let me show you how we do that as well. Um, just thinking about cameras and stuff. Uh, okay, we're here. You're fine. We'll work around. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really aware of my... <laughs> <laughs> now you've pointed out uh, how... Yeah, it's behind you. So you've got like, little clamps on the side, haven't you? That, yeah. that Almost on cogs that hold everything kind of nice and tight and yeah. firm and stable. Yeah, that's really important as well. So... You just release those and very importantly release the clamps at either end. I've tried winding my quilt on with the clamp still attached. I'll admit it. Oh, I've done it all, Stuart, don't worry. We've all done it all. We learn from those mistakes. Don't be afraid of anything. You know, you just, you just got to learn from your mistakes. We always say that the most important thing is time on the machine. And yeah. that's how you learn, you know. It's You're going to want to, though, aren't you? Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's such a friendly machine. It's such a, such a really basic, very basic setup. You know, your quilt is held out there on a frame like, you know, when you see pictures of like the Amish all gathered around a, a frame hand quilting or if you've ever done hand quilting mm. on a rectangular floor frame. It's kind of like that. Your quilt is held out there yeah, it's still. Just held. What moves is the needle. So if you're hand quilting, what well, all that moves is the needle mm -hmm. and it can go in all directions. You are moving, moving the needle it. and it That's can it. go in all directions. So all I did was I just released these stoppers on these front two rails, moved on this uh, take up rail and there we are. I'm now looking at the next section. I'm going to put on the ruler base and I'm going to put on the sure foot. The sure foot is our ruler foot on the moxie. Now, the, the ruler base itself is really important here because ordinarily, imagine your domestic sewing machine when you've taken off the accessory box and the extension table and all you've got is your free arm exposed. Um, if you try, imagine trying to quilt a quilt on that. There's nothing under the quilt apart from this really narrow free arm. And at the moment, that's where we're at with the moxie. You've just got that free arm sticking out. If you try to hold a ruler, you'd be pressing down on quilt and nothing under it. There's kind of no table. So we're putting a temporary table around the free arm on the machine. It's really, really easy to fit on. You'll see how Liz does mm -hmm. it. So I've put on the deeper ruler foot and now I just put on That's the, it. That's it. It's just very that's straightforward. Done. That is it. The and other thing I that you didn't quite see Liz doing was just, just change the foot mm -hmm. from the regular quilting foot to the ruler foot. Now we mentioned that earlier on. You're getting that included in your package. And it's just um it's like your normal there's one here, isn't there, I think. There is. That's yep. the micro foot. Oh, it's over. Is it over here? Short foot, foot. echo That's feet. It. It's a short foot. Short foot. Of course it is. Yeah. Am I allowed to open this? Uh, do you want it's to have one it? open? Why, why don't you just? Sorry, I'll take this I'll one. I'll just show it you quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I say, if you've ever done anything like used rulers on your domestic sewing machine. Um, Compare those two. Thank you. That's the regular. Oh, right. Yeah. In profile, you'll okay, see that. Okay. So let me show you. So this is the regular foot, which looks very much like a free motion darning foot that you would use on your sewing machine. Okay. 
And then this is your ruler foot. So you can see the biggest difference, the only difference really, is that this part is much, much deeper. And that allows it then to run along the side of a ruler without effectively the foot hopping over, actually catching the ruler. Um, the difference between trying to use a ruler on, well, trying to use a ruler on a domestic sewing machine, I've never got, I've never got it, Liz. I've never got it, how to use a ruler on a oh, domestic yes, sewing machine so because you're hard. still having to try and move the quilt around, which is just as hard, it's except just now just you're trying to hold a ruler in place as well. Whereas on your long arm, because your quilt isn't moving, you lay your ruler down and that's not moving either. The only thing that's moving is the needle along the edge of the ruler. Mm -hmm. It's genius. This is what we get so excited about. Yeah, it's um, the the technique on on the ruler work is something again we teach it on the foundation workshop. So, if people you know get the moxie um, from Sewing Street and they they sort of want to have more instruction, it's something we do teach on yeah. the foundation workshop. And you get the day foundation course included. It don't is included. You? Yes. It's just amazing. Where would yeah. you? Where is that course? So it's at our, our showroom at Pershaw, gotcha. Worcestershire. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Right, so I think... Is it also possible to do things online? It's interesting you ask that. That is our next development. I'm actually just in the process of working on that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So in the future, you won't even need to travel. You can do you it have from an option. your yeah. bedroom where you've got your moxie all set up. Yes. Who needs a spare bed? Because, I mean, during obviously during lockdown and everything, yeah. I did do that. Yeah. Um, so it's a question of me actually being able to put that all um, in a more formal situation yeah we did for all of the people who bought during the whole you know situation where we couldn't do mm. foundation workshop we offered uh, I think it was 60 or 70 customers um, had the virtual workshop so right. Abigail who's one of our educators and myself we did virtual classroom mm. so that was all done through Facebook we did zoom we I think covered. I might have handed an, a rather lovely award to Abigail in the summer oh, at you Festival did. of Quilts didn't I? So she won the modern quilt category mm -hmm. at Festival of Quilts. Yeah. Very see, talented lady. Is that, isn't it? Very talented yeah. lady Abigail. World championship winners. Yes. Festival of Quilt winners. Yes. Handy quilter. She, she also got another award as well last year. You know, this year. You oh, know? yes. She got the British Empire Medal. She did, didn't she? She did for um, the work she did on the uh, masks yeah, and amazing, scrubs. Amazing, yeah. amazing, yeah. But what's so, so wonderful is, you know, you're getting that support, you're getting that education, you're getting that experience. So remember, there are no silly questions. No. Uh, any question is valid. So whatever you want to ask. We had somebody earlier on asking, you know, do I need a really big table to put the moxie on to stand it on? You know, and that was obviously, we'd, we hadn't, we'd missed that. You're getting that frame. You're getting that whole frame. The legs, the top, the rollers, everything. What you see there is a six foot frame, but you're getting a, an eight foot frame. And you do have the option of buying an extra two foot extension to that from pinhole to make yes. it a 10 foot frame. Uh, to allow you to quilt up to a 100 inch wide quilt if you're somebody that loves doing big quilts. Yes. Let's see rulers in action. I'm going to show you rulers, but also um, there was something that we, we looked at earlier. If we look at this on the overheads just for a minute, just following on from the pounce and your beautiful tiger stripes, Stuart, <laughs> is this stencil here, which is one of the ones we also include because stencils don't have to be just be very specific like the tiger stripe and mm -hmm. like the swirl. They can be more generic, like the one that you showed that we can use as the basis for yeah. feathers or we can use it as the basis for the structure of a block um, and the one that we had for, for ribbon candy. This grid here is m massively multi-purpose and this is what I've done here. So this checkerboard here, um, this was done using the uh, checkerboard and then the ditch ruler. So a combination of using structure of the one inch grid and then scribble with the microfoot nice. and ditch ruler. So multi-purposing these It's amazing tools. how you bring, bring colour to a quilt with yeah, thread. Absolutely. Mm. Um, and colour to a quilt with thread is also something that we do with the whole cloth quilting. Yeah. So I think one of the things that I'd like to just get across today really um, to the, the Sewing Street audience is when you get introduced to long arm quilting it's almost you don't know what you don't know. 
until you get a long arm, mm -hmm. your, your world opens up yeah. and thread becomes your palette. Yeah. Oh. The tools, Because the you've techniques. taken out all of the pain points yeah. of quilting a quilt and yeah. what you're then left with is the creativity, the fun, the excitement, which is absolutely there in every single sewer. Yes. You do not need to be able to draw, you do not need to be an artist, uh, you can use stencils, you can use pantographs, you right. can draw designs on, you can trace them uh, on. But actually, it's doodling, yeah, it is. isn't it? it you know, is. I, I often, I, I love to get quilters looking at those award-winning quilts mm. and say, look, I know that the whole is overwhelming and you think, okay, I can't do that. I get you. Where would I even start? But when you start to look at individual elements, mm -hmm. it's stitching forwards and back possibly with a bit of a curve into it or it's side to side or it's loop the loops yeah. or it's figure of eight i mean yeah. really when you break it down exactly it's doodling it's doodling and instead of asking yourself to have a, a pencil that doesn't move and you're somehow trying to wiggle the paper underneath it to draw something you're doing what you do with a pad and a pen of paper you're moving the pen you're moving the needle is your pen that's right so that is literally, I've got a bit of an edge there. Let me just move that down beyond my ruler base. Mm -hmm. So literally just do that. And you've got your grid. Amazing. And that's the start of it. Then you're going to get your ruler, your ditch ruler. So here's the start. And the settings for this would be the, the, set, um, the continuous, what I've got already, which is 11 stitches per inch. Mm -hmm. Just Basically, I've just brought up my, my thread. I've, I've sorted it by just anchoring it two or three stitches in place. I'm going to use this ditch ruler. Let's just move these just onto here for a mm -hmm. second. And uh, just, just tap it just to kind of get rid of the loose thing. I've got my handy grip, which is also part of the package. Yeah. Uh, my handy grip is on the base of this. Now, you don't always put the handy grip on. Some rulers, you don't want it. No. You need to move them. Right. And there's a right and wrong side. Always use the etch line should always be on the bottom, distortion or whatever the technical term is mm -hmm. for distortion on um, rulers. It's really important. This ruler is brilliant because you've got these little ears and you line them up with that little line that you've just uh, pounced. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to use that so that we can actually, because it's always a quarter of an inch away. Yeah. Do that, press stop. Move your ruler. Line it up with the ruler. Press stop. So just for safety, I'm just going to press stop each time. And then I'm going to come down, down, oh, I've got just, I just, I'm going to come back a bit just so I can just go down this line. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to come down here and go back along this line. I'll just adjust this tension. It's just, I can just see the bobbin thread. Because, of course, I've got black fabric and you really do want white bobbin thread don't you <laughs> but actually it makes it easy to adjust the tension that's something yeah. again we cover uh, you can get you can cover it on your YouTube videos but yeah. we cover it on foundation you know it's interesting it was it, thread tension was one of the things which kind of bothered me worried me really? more than anything when I started Threading my machine up. Mm. Look at look at that perfectly on the line. This is the ruler. This is the ruler base in action with those stencils. Of course, you don't have to stitch every line. You could do a bigger you could grid. Do a bigger one. You could put this diagonally and do cross hatching. Yes. You could be putting a cross hatched background behind a plique. Oh, you're getting all creative. Yeah. So you use your ruler up to the plique and then take your ruler away, okay. free motion around the edge of your applique until you get to the next line, ruler back on, and then a straight line out away from your applique. Oh, absolutely. I'm just going to um, go back up there. But, you know, the thread tension was something that bothered me. And actually, yeah. again, you say you don't know what you know until you, you don't. When yep. I started quilting, I was like, well, actually, I ne I'd never touched the tension, Liz, from one month to the next. 
I it's tend to use the same threads. Yes. I have my favourite threads. I use Glide. You're getting Glide in with your package. Glide is just package. so wonderful. It, it does everything it's I so need it good. to do. Um, and I never have to touch the bobbin tension. I rarely touch the top tension. I do find, hear me out on this, Liz, mm -hmm. and I hope you. this is true, and I'm not just making this up. I have to change the top tension based on the colour of the thread. That, yes. Oh, yeah. You know. Darker colours seem to need different tension to lighter absolutely. colours. Is that crazy? No, no, because the amount of dye might be more for darker colour, and yellows tend to break more. Did mm. you know that? No, I didn't. It can weaken the thread. Gotcha. Yeah, particularly on a natural um, thread like a, a cotton. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's my experience of buying threads as well, mm. because I get a lot of, you know, I used to, obviously I've bought thread for years yeah. as, a, as a retailer. Yes. And um, so I got a lot of feedback from customers, you know, since I've been in retail for 90, since 94, so, you know, I got a lot of experience. You certainly do. And you've been a quilter for... Since 94. 94. Since 94. So there you go. If you're wondering how experienced is Liz as a quilter, because, you know, we've, we've all got different amounts, but you've yeah. got plenty. I do. And in fact, it was lovely at Malvern. The first time I went on a quilting course was in 1994. Wow. And the, the, one of the people I was on that first course with in September 1994 came to the Malvern Quilt Show. And Amazing. she's somebody that I see on a regular Amazing. basis. And yeah. she has a handy quilter. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> I mean, I remember, you know, yeah. I mean, I've done lots of quilting for, for, for a good few years. But, you know, when I've seriously got into quilting, when I moved back to Birmingham, mm. you know, I went and got my fabric from Liz's mum and dad. You did. You know, I remember you coming in the shop. You're part of quilting royalty. Oh, I remember you coming in the shop. It was lovely. I remember bringing, actually, the... the um, the double Irish chain quilt that I talked about um, before, about all the, you know, the, the lines disappearing and yeah. having to do it all again. I remember Br I was desperate to show that quilt and say, look, this is what I did. Yes. And your dad, Jeff, the wonderful Jeff, um, made my world because he grabbed all the staff that were available and to come and look at the that. quilting. Yeah. And, he, and I remember him saying, and it's dark thread. It's dark thread. It's not, it's meant to stand out. He said, he's, you know, he hasn't made it easy by doing thread that blends in. Amazing. It all stands out. And I just thought, oh, I feel like I've made it now. You see, yeah? isn't that great? But he, he would do that. Yeah. If someone brought in a quilt yeah. to show people, he would get everybody down. That's what he would do. And I and yeah. I did, you know, I must admit, the very first time I tried free motion quilting, I fell in love with it. And, you know, and, I, and I've always enjoyed free motion quilting, but I've always recognised the challenges and felt the challenges, even though, you know, certainly in my youth, I felt, mm. you know, fit and able enough to fight and do all that yeah. kind of thing. But, you know, I must admit that since I started long arm quilting, um, I, it's very rare now. Mm. It's very rare that I go back to my sewing machine for quilting yeah. anything. I, tr I tried it on one, a quilt that I did, yeah. which was a, an apple core. Okay. I pieced it with um, 80 weight thread. Okay. Yeah, because I wanted it every yeah, seam. Yeah, yeah. Because it's cha challenging, apple core's yeah. challenging. I, I cut it out with a Sizzix die. And, um, and it, I've managed to piece it pretty well. I quilted it on a domestic machine, and I will never ever piece uh, quilt it on a domestic no. machine ever again. I think I still have the knot in my. You shoulders. get de-skilled as well, you don't do. you? You know, yeah. they, they are some different skills. I mean, of course, if you're an experienced free motion quilter on a domestic sewing machine, you can apply all of that learning, all of that skill and motor skills to long arming. But it is a different sensation to be moving the machine. Yeah. But I, I just wanted to remind myself. Yeah, I <laughs> and, can still do this. And I, and I will never ever do it again. No. So, so that was really work. I, I just want to, Sorry. Liz, reinforce what I said in a show earlier on, which was mm -hmm. about if you want really precise piecing, we were talking about precision piecing yeah. and improving your piecing and your right. points. And I said, use a finer thread, use a finer needle. That's and it's it. exactly what you talked about. I use about. a Microtex needle. Microtex needle. With an 80 weight 80 thread. Weight thread. Yeah. yeah, and bob and fill. And we don't have long left on the show, Liz. I, know. I feel like I, we need more demos. Well, I, I think so too. <laughs> Can I show you the micro yes. um, foot? 
to oh, fill goodness. in just a few of these mm. uh, as I did on that. Plus, I'd love to show you how we might use the wiggle wave, mm -hmm. but not with a ruler. Okay. So, and also I want to show you the echo feed. So can I do some quick demos? Come on, man. Um, because I really think the microfoot will just blow you away. It's really fun. So changing the foot, look, easy yep. as unscrew the there, that's screw, it. Gone. foot comes off, goes, foot it's goes on, on. It's on a spring. It's on a spring. And you just turn this little allen key. You don't key. even take the screw out? Nope. There you go. And it goes right the way through, so it's really well on. I, I struggle more because I've just got rubbish thumbs. I told Stuart yeah. I broke Old my thumb. Yeah, injury. Look, it's just doesn't, it doesn't bend. Oh. But that'll teach me not to go down a dark blue. Oh, I did dry slope skiing once on, was it called Dendex? Dendex? What was the stuff that you oh, skied on? Oh, that horrible white stuff that you... Yeah, like that was Ooh, almost horrible. like squares. Yeah, you want to go to the snow dome. And we got warned nice. about it, and of course I did stick my thumb out and catch it. It's really easy to break your thumb on that Ouch. stuff. Ouch, keep your thumbs in. Right, so now... When you're long arm quilting, keep your elbows in. Oh, and also relax. You, you want to do this, like this, like... Am I allowed to right. see? You don't do that. Tuck your elbows but in. Also, it, you have to relax, relax, okay? I said to one lady, think of it as a whole body experience. <laughs> Yeah. She said it's been a while. It's like a warm-up okay. for an exercise so class. So I'm going to go into cruise and I'm going to select a higher cruise speed. So just define cruise and uh, precision. Yeah, so precision. If we go into precision, that's a really good question, actually. So we didn't actually cover that. So when I go into precision, precision is I stop, it stops. So let me just show you. Precision is, this is precision. I stop, it stops. It's not moving. Yep. Okay. So, so it's motion detecting, isn't it? Yeah, basically, yes. Yep. Think of, now the Americans call it cruise. One of our customers, who Judy, who's a trainer, mm -hmm. um, she said, I prefer continuous. Yeah. And I thought, continuous, that's a better use of the word. It's a C as well. Yeah. Continuous. It will sew continuously even when I pause. Yes. That's a much better word. So that's cruise. Cruise. Yeah. So that's what this looks this, like. So this now, if we go into this, is if I select this one, I'm going to up the continuous mode when I use the micro foot. And this is now going to be a higher number of stitches per inch yep. and it's going to sew continuously. So what's this? So better for small this is, fill. Yeah. So even when Liz stops, 15 stitches per inch. it marks time. Yeah. And if I stop completely, it doesn't. I don't want it to knot and make a mess. No. So it actually shuts itself off after four or five stitches. So if I stop, auto shut stops. off because yeah. it's designed for people who are new to quilting. Gotcha. It has an auto shut off. Better it's quite flow. Nice. Just got a few minutes left on the okay. show, Liz. Okay. So this is micro foot, micro stitching. Or so I'm going to wait. I'm just going to do this. This is knocking. This is knocking back. The alternative is we can go into a manual mode. I'm going to select that. Got it. So okay. we can fill in areas so you can with fill that in areas micro. Like that's that. amazing. I love that. Okay. Such a cool effect. So that's the micro. Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. Two what minutes. can you show us? What can I show you? I can show you the what did I put with the wiggle? The wiggle, wiggle. The wiggle. The wiggle. And here's the wiggle. Very quickly. With this, what I would do is I'd use the wiggle or any shape like this. And I would, if I just come over here. Um, no, bum, bum. Select this. And I would use it to do a free motion design. Oh, let's just go a little bit smaller stitch. I'm going to run out of time, aren't I? Oh, it just happened. We've got 
minute or two. Just as an illustration. Okay. Oh, what? And then so you filled in the space fill between the space. those two exactly. lines. Exactly. And then I'm going to use the iron to get rid of my panda pencil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that makes it just disappear. For the reveal. Okay, there might be a bit of carpet on there. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> And I would do it more densely than that. Yeah, and it yeah, would yeah. just be the shape of that. You can fill in. That's a great yeah. idea. Okay. So many different ways you can use so the rulers, the stencils. And as a final parting inspiration. Yeah, two minutes. Two minutes. Two yeah, now have a look at this, because this is what's absolutely possible using the Moxie. Okay, you could use this. You could. Yeah. Oh my goodness, you could. This is what we were teaching last week to Carol, who's had her Moxie for six months. This yeah. is this is the kind of thing that Carol was doing. Whole cloth Just have design. A look at those. Seriously, this is what and I'm gonna put these on our Facebook. Incredible. Page. Because what you've got in there is ruler work. Yep. And you've got free motion quilting. Yeah. This this is all done on with free motion quilting and ruler work. This is not computerized, okay? This is not computerized. This is just free motion and Work. Now, of course, this require this does is based on lots of experience, lots of skill. I yep. don't want to underestimate no. that. But in terms of how far can I go with my machine, it's all a straight stitch. It is. It's all a straight stitch. It's all ruler work or free motion work, or it's computerized, and that we can do next year. Yeah. There'll be an add-on. Exactly. But in itself. It's all achievable with that straight stitch, that ruler work, that free motion quilting. Liz, it's been an amazing experience yeah. to spend two hours looking at the Moxie. It's a brilliant package. Thank you so much for, for coming here today. Really enjoyed it. Good. Um, it's exclusive package with all of those extra add-ons. Uh, you can have a look on the um, watch page underneath uh, and uh, do do get in touch if you've got any more questions we will see you again tomorrow thank you so much for your company especially if you've stayed with us for this extra hour um, if you've got any more questions about the moxie do get in touch uh, great to have your company today do take care we'll see you soon